Okay, I am here. Yep, we're live. Uh, and one second, okay. let me. Okay, I am here. Hi. Well, we're live. Oh, fine. Uh, sorry. I heard you. I heard an echo, so you uh, said, I am here twice. And I was like, that's weird. Oh. Why did I do that? Oh, fuck. Oh, no. Let me, uh, let me look at my output. My frame rate might be wrong right now. Nope, it's 30 frames per second. Okay, good job, me. Uh, uh, we're waiting for Civ to get here. Is that you? Hey, howdy. I see you. How you doing? All right. Siv, you're mm -hmm. muted. Siv might be doing something. All right. Um, I think I'm just going to start. Uh, this week, we're trying to finish. Like, I'm, I want to go until we finish this first game in the duology so we can take a week or two off. Um, yeah. Last time, yeah. Uh, John Lennon and John Lennon... <laughs> we're liars, and we found that their third brother was Egg Linen. So, someone in chat, this really will be the final session. Ah, oh, Gina, how are you holding up? Dots. Starting to feel quite warmly towards her frequent cold shoulders now. Jenny, are you alright? Why aren't you saying anything, Siv? We're trying to make so we can see your screen. It is... Oh. oh, uh. Yeah. I finally got my uh, Huzuma What's It to work, so now I can hear my friends, which is nice. Turn hey. yourself up, Siv. Oh, I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm doing my ats. Yeah, yeah. You just take over for me for a bit until I get this done. Okay. What's the point, eh? Why well, go to all this trouble and fight so hard? For the likes of me. What? Well, you saw it. The picture. What picture? Ah, oh, you mean this. The photograph taken by Hurley's red-handed recorder. Also, Jello ordered food in advance, and now they're half an hour late, so he'll be eating during the stream like a pig. That's right. okay, I'm ordering food now, and it won't show up for probably that long as well. I already ate my food. Good for you. Wait, I just uh, recorded the italics, the part of the uh, epithet book narration today, where oh. it's very, very heavy for a, a while, actually. Um, <coughs> I didn't think it would have captured a scene like this, that's for sure. It's hopeless. Anyone who sees us going to think I did it, ain't they? Well, I won't pretend it wasn't a bit of a shock when the prosecution first presented it to the court. Uh, Surely you've got to have your doubts about me now. You can't still think I'm innocent. Of course I can. <laughs> oh. Ginny, why don't you talk to us? I'm just a little baby. Tell us what really <laughs> happened that night. You know what missing is? <laughs> Pepper! Runo's cleverly managed to piece together a lot of new information, but still, we'd really like to hear it from you. All right, then. It was after we'd done that dinner together at your place, right, Iris? Then we had a chance to chat it up in your office, didn't we? Yes, I remember. After that, I just couldn't sleep. So I slipped out and went to the street, uh, went down the street to the two to one. Oh, okay. To the two to one, mm -hmm. to Winderplank's place. I had to know if Iris' story was there or not. The Hound of the Baskervilles. I don't know what it's about or nothing, but if you ask me, there's something in it that Sholmes don't like. Something what he don't want people reading, not that I'd know, being illiterate and all. 
So that's why I lied to Iris about sticking it in lug with window banks for safekeeping. At least that's what I thought at the time. So you broke into window banks? I just had to know if it was there or not. I mean, I had no idea all of that was going to kick off, did I? I? Struck the lock and snuck inside. It was dark as you like in there. So I gave the oil lamp on the counter a bit of wick. And that's when... It's window bank. No. Nearly died, I did. The next thing I knew... Snap. I grabbed the gun off the counter and was waving it in the air like... I don't know what. Ah, oh, you're the girl who was in here this afternoon. I didn't think pickpockets went in with armed robbery. The, the mantle script. Have you got it here? Do Sholmes leave a load of papers with you? A story. I beg your pardon? The hound of the... something for another. If it's here, I want to see it. I'm sorry, young lady. But I'd sooner die than relinquish an article belonging to one of my customers. I don't want it. Die then. What would I do with it anyway? I just want to see it's here, that's all. Oh, you want to see it, do you? I want to know if Shome's really pawned it here or not. Please, just let me see it and I'll go. Hmm. Oh, very well then. But for pity's sake, stop waving my gun around, would you? So then the old cove unlocked the storeroom door and we both went inside. And it was there, all right. The mantle script. Shomes weren't lying after all. You did all that just to check on me, Jenny. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that was a bit of a kick up out the main bit of the shop. Skulkin, oh, the Skulkin brothers arriving on the scene, yes. What was that noise? Someone's breaking in. Dear me, is there some burglar's convention in here tonight that I don't know about? I think I forgot to shut the doorbell in me. Sorry. I'd better go take care of it. Could I possibly have my gun back? Oh, well, I'll come with you and... Now don't be foolish, young girl. You must stay right here. Don't leave this room under any circumstances. And with that, he took the gun out of my hands and walked back out into the shop. I hung back in the storeroom, like he said, straining my ears in a dark day what was going on. Never leave Gina Lestrade in the dark trying to listen to something happening. It doesn't go well. <laughs> Sounded She's like... gonna get like a trauma sort of thing with that. Sounded like they got into a bit of a scrap. Started to think I should help, see? So I was just about to go out to the storeroom myself when... Two gunshots. They shot me down. Hmm. I heard a couple of shots go off. Two, I think, almost at the same time. And there he was, right at my feet, lying face down on the floor. I was right next to the storeroom door, so I slammed it shut and locked it quick as you like. Because you thought whoever had shot Mr. Winterbank might come for you. Yeah. I'm back now. S okay. So I went to grab the old curve's gun. I figured I'd put up a fight at least. But when I got a better look at him, I knew. Winderbank was a gunner. Oh, oh, scooching more. I felt funny in me head all of a sudden, kind of dizzy. And after that, I don't remember nothing. That must be when you passed out, Gina. <clears throat> if if I hadn't done what I'd done, the old cove might still be alive. Oof, uh, maybe, maybe re-enter the call and reconfigure your mic. It, it was doing it a little bit when you were talking before, but, like, it's randomly, like, electro-peaking. Wow. Yeah. Did you tell the police everything you just told us? Of course I did. But they didn't believe a word of it, did they? All they said was if I kept telling lies, it'd make things even worse for me. Jenny, don't worry. Just stay strong a little longer. Really? Is it better? I don't know. I, I am saying words now. I am talking at you with my regular voice. Yeah. 
Okay, cool. Ring Pouncer Butt put the real culprit through the mill. Why are you reading her wrong? <laughs> <laughs> that cove what was there in the afternoon. Egg, egg, Bennett, of a fuck. Mm. Oh. Mm. I still remember how he looked at me like I was nothing. Mm. It, he was there that night. Maybe mention that shit to us, Gina. <laughs> Mm -hmm. We don't know his real name yet, but I'm convinced that he's involved somehow. I just told you he was. Anyway, thank you for Yo telling us. Yeah, what... fuck. Thank you for telling us what happened, Gina. Though it would have been way better if you told it to us this morning. I appreciate mm -hmm. your honesty. You what? You can leave it all in Reno's capable hands now, Jenny. Dots. Mr. Naruto. Yes? How can you trust me? I don't get it. I mean, have you forgotten what happened here before? Come on, it was only two months ago. Me and McGill did. We told you a whole pack of lies. And you got the bog trotter off with them, even when he was a killer. No, I could never forget that. Uh. I did what I thought was best at the time, but the pain of that error of judgment doesn't get any easier to bear. Still, don't forget that I also made you a promise. I told you that I'd be on your side to the bitter end, no matter what. But what if I'm lying? You could be working together to get another killer off the hook for all you- God, her accent. For all you know. <laughs> I was once in your position, Gina. I was the accused in a trial. You were? Before I left Japan, I was accused of murder. And as strange as it might sound, the circumstances of the crime were pretty damning. I was sure that no one would believe it wasn't me who'd done it. Oh, Rina. But there was one person who stood up for me, who believed in me, and was prepared to defend me. My best friend. Oh, are they... friends? <laughs> friends. Ryunosuke, no one believes in you more than I do. What the heck? Hold on. <laughs> oh my god. Leave this to me. All you need to do is put your faith in me, and I'll do the rest. I was so happy, I cried. But even then, somewhere inside me, I couldn't help thinking, surely he doesn't really believe in me. Not completely. But I was wrong. As soon as my trial began, it was obvious that he had an absolute, unwavering belief in me. He's so hot, he's so hot, he's so hot. <laughs> don't look, don't look, don't look, don't look! And in turn, I developed an absolute, unwavering belief in him. Since then, I came to realize if you want someone to believe in you, you have to believe in the other person first. What are you saying? I promise you, Gina, that no matter what happens, I'll keep believing in you. So you don't need to worry. I won't let you down. <clears throat> Even though I'm a diver and a no-good liar? You're not like McGill did. I know that. Eh? That's right! You're not Irish! You're our friend, Ginny! <laughs> Iris? We know you better than you think. And we've come to the conclusion that you're someone we can trust. Yes. That's really all we need to know. Exactly. <laughs> Chad, he was so hot, Gina. Like, super hot. Gina, you don't understand how thirsty I was back then. All right, all right, Jesus. <laughs> To actually, I was so thirsty that they glued me to the front of our boat and I just souped up the water so it made oh our God. trip go faster. Shaved <laughs> off a whole week, that's how thirsty I was. Incredible. <laughs> um, Mr. Naruto, I... Defendant Gina Lestrade and her legal representative. Court proceedings are about to resume. Please head into the courtroom immediately. Yes, of course. Thank you. 
Thank you. I go to get my quesadilla now. I, I just figured <laughs> that. Dun, 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 my food dun. people call me and say we have no sandwich, we have no cookies, and I say no. What? What? Where did you order from? I ordered Tim's, and they're out of ham and cheddar sandwiches, so I had to go for turkey instead. Oh, I'm sorry, my dear. Now watch, they're gonna call me back and be like, we have no turkey. We have no bread. We have, we have no nothing. Tim's. I mean, there were the two. I literally had to go through two other Tims to see which one was open. Mm. We yeah. have no food. I I understand that a little bit. I today after work, I was like, "Ooh, that's right." My parents gave me a fifty dollars gift card to Red Robin. I should use it. And I set up my whole order. I typed in the card and whatnot. And it was like, I don't know what that is. I'm like, no. I, and it just didn't accept the pin number or the card, so I might have just Aww. a dead fifty dollar card. And it's like, wow. Well, oh, shit. that's lame. Yeah. So I'm gonna maybe hit up Red Robin tomorrow, see if it works at like. Turkey is so much fucking better than ham. If you're a person who appreciates turkey more than ham, that's true. But I am a ham boy, so. I think I prefer ham a little bit. Like for sandwiches, especially, I prefer ham. Turkey is too easy to have wrong. It's like, it can be dry and flavorless more frequently. Um, I am not a poultry boy. Uh, I'm a poultry boy. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm a hammy kind of boy. <laughs> Just a ham and cheese kind of boy. I've been both a defendant and a defending lawyer in my time. So I know only too well just how hard it was to put all your faith in another. And I also knew this bitch wasn't Irish. Just how hard it was to bear the burden of another putting all their faith in you. This is it at last. The final chapter. The final battle. <laughs> Someone in chat. Ham is just too sweet for me. What? <laughs> Ham is sweet, but it being too sweet means you've probably had ham prepared wrong. Wish me luck, Suzato san. And I hope you're watching over me too, partner. Uh, aggressively gay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think we'll ever. Marissa only directs shows about lesbians, I only stream games about gay men. <laughs> you have a brand now, you gotta you stay got to brand. it. Bonk. I hereby call this court to order as we resume the trial of Miss Gina Lestrade. Lord Van Zeeks, have you successfully subpoenaed the witness? The subpoena was delivered to the communication station where the man works immediately, my lord. However, the heavy rain has delayed the arrival of his carriage, it would seem. Hmm, I see. Then let's turn our attention to Inspector Gregson's Presses, uh, I believe. Presses, yeah, because it's Presses. Yeah. Yes. Presses of the case heard by the court this morning. We're gonna resume trial without the guy we're waiting on. Seems like I a bad guess. idea. Uh... The glaring omission of the third bullet in your report is a serious blunder, Inspector. Uh yes, um, I can only apologize, sir. Although the defense's chemical analysis of the blood at the scene makes for a compelling argument. I cannot permit such untried methods to be used as evidence in my courtroom. Hmm. It's a big mistake to cross Hurley and me. A very big mistake. You have a gun. Uh, do you want me my to take Lord. this guy? Because you're already yeah. three people in this room and eventually sure. Egg is going to show up. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. My Lord, the subpoena... Oh, I, I got to make it British. The subpoena witness has just arrived in the building. Thank you, officer. Show him to the stand without delay. He is making his way to the courtroom, sir. He is placing his hand upon the door, sir. Mr. Eggert Benedict. I didn't expect to be crossing paths with him again so soon. And certainly not like this. I can't wait to find out what awful name he has that's even worse than Eggert Benedict. Actually, that was my real name. Do not be mean to me. <laughs> Thank you for complying. What was this? I said, I'm gonna be mean to you. <laughs> Thank you for complying with the court's subpoena at such short notice, sir. 
But of course, my lord. As an upstanding member of London society, it is my pleasure to oblige. Now, kindly state your name and occupation for the record. Ashley Graydon, communications officer. Oh my god, they're not gonna get me with a boy named Ashley. This isn't gonna happen again! Amy, if you're out there, come hold me! <laughs> Mr. Graydon and I both work at London Central Communications Station. Now, perhaps somebody would kindly explain what all this is about. You were apprised of the situation by the court officer on your way here, I presume. I forgot. Yes, I was. Something to do with the murder that took place at a pawnbroker's on Baker Street. And some nonsense about me having been there on the night in question. Yeah. That is the accusation indeed. This really is beyond a joke, you know. Very well. Without further delay, the court will hear your testimony now, Mr. Craden. You will respond to the accusation made against you under oath. <laughs> Gladly, my lord, gladly. <laughs> Someone is will do in triple time over here. Hang on. Someone in chat, Ashley Graydon looks like Ellen DeGeneres. <laughs> no, oh, stop. Naturally, I have an occasion to make use of pawnbroking pawn uh, services, but as you seriously suggested, I collu- Oh, but- oh, wow. But are you seriously suggesting I colluded with these slugs to break into the place on the night of the murder? Where did your ex go? Did you consume it for power? <laughs> Bear with me. I'm Spinner. sorry. I you have no- <laughs> Yeah, I have no intention of admitting to such an outrageous accusation even if certain parties were present to claim that my blood was found at the scene. Sc some scaramouche, what is that word? It, it, it's a silly word, scaramouche. I don't know what it means exactly. You're Let's fine. find out. It's some you're fine. You're fine. Some scaramouche detective's homebrewed tincture can hardly be taken as serious evidence. Ah, it's a clown. So, you deny the accusation completely, do you? I must say, I am dismayed. For the highest court of the land to be swayed by this self-professed detective's toy? It was the will of the jury, and our great British justice system demands that the jury's will be upheld. Then it would seem we have the misfortune of a most inept assembly of jurors today. By golly! How long am I expected to be detained here? If, following the defense's cross-examination, your involvement is in this matter has not been established, you will be free to leave immediately. Good. Then I shall be away in time for afternoon tea. Some small consolation, at least. Let us not hold up Mr. Graydon any longer than necessary, counsel. Proceed with the cross-examination. So... We meet again, Mr. Eggert Benedict. Or is it Mr. Graydon? My apologies, you are... Ryunosuke Naruhodo, defense lawyer. We have met. If you say so, Ashley Graydon. Enchante. So... <laughs> I trust we can conclude this quickly. Uh, whoa, but I'm not holding your flashy hat while we do. My guy hasn't evolved into sword bird or, sh or shield bird yet. <laughs> this is his baby form. Yeah. Okay, uh, I'm gonna press oh this. I have a feeling it's something about the, I have no intention to admit anything line. Have you yeah. seen these two men before? This pair? Mm. No, I don't associate with criminals. Said by a man who introduced himself as Eggert Benedict. <laughs> I'd like to know who I have to thank for this, who made this outlandish accusation against me. The young lawyer there in the black. This is a farce! Ooh. See? <laughs> Whose idea was it to permit an outsider to work in a British court anyway? <sighs> well, needless to say, 
this one. I've no intention of admitting to an outrageous. Oh. <laughs> Where were you at around one in the morning on the night in question, sir? That is past the hour at which I would normally retire. Certainly. I was not in the company of these rapscallions. You're able to prove that. Objection! Objection! Listen carefully, my learned Nipponese friend, for you appear to be under a gross misapprehension on this point. What do you mean? The witness maintains he was not at the scene of the crime. He has no obligation to prove his absence. If your accusation is that the witness was present at the scene, the obligation lies with you to prove your assertion. Did you get eviler while we were gone? You will fulfill that obligation before putting any more unreasonable questions to the witness. Oh! Stop! A silent victory wiggle. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> oh, he had a good lemonade. He had a good lemonade. Lord Remington! <laughs> <laughs> Blood it's was Lord Lemington. Board was board was blood at the scene of the crim. There's no question of that. This is paper. Mr. Sholmes's chemical analysis has positively identified the substance as such. But I am not the only human to have blood running through my veins, am I? Genuine question. I'm not sure. How can you be sure that the blood is mine? It could equally be the blood of one of these two miscreants. Every individual's blood has a slightly different composition, it seems. Oh, okay. Spare me the science lesson. Who is this Sholmes character, anyway? Oh, I assumed all Londoners would know the name. Uh, he's a, a well, a well-known detective, a well-renowned <laughs> detective. So, even you are unable to bring yourself to say, great detective. A great detective, you say? <laughs> now we're in the realm of fairy tales, are we? Excuse me. Excuse me! Oh! Give me anything! No reason! Okay. Do you have something to say about that, Mr. Skulkin? John Lennon. Eh, what? Me? No, the <laughs> Mr. Skulkin next to you. Right, I've had it up to here with this. How many times have I got to tell you? Yes, I know, you're not Big Brov Skulky. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Nash Skulkin. Oh, uh, cool, blimey, governor, you what? You fucking what, mate? <laughs> Is it not the case that when Mr. Graydon just spoke, a thought went through your mind? Would you oh, maybe to... thinking? No, Gov. I never the thought of my life, Gov. That's right, on my grandma's grave, I've never had a think. <laughs> Would you care my to say? My grandma's grave. <laughs> uh, me thoughts. I don't have none of them. It must have been him. <laughs> you what? <laughs> Mr. Nash Skulkin, answer the question, please. What went through your mind when Mr. Graydon just spoke? Nothing. Honest, Gov, nothing. I, I was just thinking, if he waves his arms around like that much more, it'll open up the wound again, that's all. What wound? Well, he took the bullet, of course. I love this oh, too. Oh, oh, my God. God. This too great. They don't have a single brain cell between them. It was only two days ago. It ain't going to be healed up yet. Still, I was, um, well, you know, what I was worrying for him. Oh, hell's bells. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Graydon, you... did you hear that? Oh, what? My shoulder. Oh. My shoulder. Your comrade is worried about you, it seems, on account of your injured arm. Mm. My lord. May yes, I take a pee pee break? <laughs> yes, Mr. <Brayden. laughs> Leaves. <coughs> I have no idea what these two wretches are talking about. Certainly, I shouldn't be expected to answer anything in relation to their mindless insinuations. Mm. Yes. Take off your shirt! To check so the, wound. the wound? No, I just... <laughs> I'm just curious. <laughs> just wanna know, you curious. Know? <laughs> we know that someone other than the victim was hit by a bullet at the scene of the crime two nights ago. And from the height of the bullet in the wall, a bullet hole in the wall, that person was likely hit in the upper arm or thereabouts. Mm. Perhaps you'd allow a court official to examine your arm, sir? 
the left arm you're currently clasping with your right hand, as if in pain. No, I refuse. I you have shown no evidence whatsoever that links me to these common thieves. Accordingly, I am not obliged to permit any such invasion of my privacy. Show the arm! As I've already said, I'm completely uninvolved in all this. I've never had anything to do with the pawnbrokery where this fellow was killed whatsoever. I take offense at the insinuation that I was in any way involved. Hmm. You claim to have had nothing whatsoever to do with Mr. Winderbank's pawnbrokery. Uh, the defense would like that last statement to be added to Mr. Grayson's formal testimony. Very well, counsel. This guy is just taking a mile a minute. Continue with your testimony, Mr. Graydon. Oh, I believe my food is here. Bialby. Okay. Uh, we definitely have at least something that should connect him to this. Like the, uh... The, the, using one of the photos. Am I crazy? Uh... We had... I don't know if we have it in our inventory, but there was a photo with him in it. Yeah. Is it so, by chance in Someone in chat because you just told me, Fox Boy. <laughs> oh! Hmm. Because you maybe, told me, Egg Boy. Maybe I need to come back later. Hmm. Yeah. I think I need to press something else first. Oh yeah, the disc might work. Let's let's see. Let's see if the disc lists that. Uh, lists that. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't say it's his blood on the thing, which usually means that it won't give me the point for it. I'm gonna press this first. Sure. Hold it. Never had anything to do with it. You forget that I was there, Mr. Graydon, on the very afternoon of the incident. Obviously, I am not a complete stranger to the pawnbrokers. I, I'm currently on the lookout for an armchair to furnish my study. Objection. No, you were there to redeem an article. I have no idea yeah, what you're talking Yeah, I have to get the photo about. from him first. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Do you have something <coughs> to add, Inspector? Aye. Come again, sunshine. You were there too, in fact, weren't you, Inspector? That afternoon. Well, yes, I do remember meeting yourself in the pawnbrokers that afternoon. You, your young Japanese assistant, and the accused were all present. And at that time, this witness, Mr. Graydon, was trying to acquire a certain article. Um, well now... I'm afraid I don't remember too clearly. What? But, but you must! I'm not going to lie and pretend I remember something I don't. What is going on here? Oh, right, Sims Arts. Sandwich! Gregsy showed us a picture before, didn't he? You know, from the cameras that Hurley installed in Winderbanks. Yes, of course. There we go. Okay. Indeed. And the gentleman pictured bears a striking resemblance to the witness, I must say. Exactly! Which proves that Mr. Graydon was in the shop on the afternoon in question. At no point have I denied that fact. <sighs> I merely entered the shop to peruse the articles on sale and have a word with the broker. Nothing more. Hmm. This makes no sense. I understand why Mr. Graydon might be trying to cover his tracks, but why would Gregson be trying to avoid giving testimony about what happened? That's all he's going to say on the matter, is it? What do you think, Bruno? I think he has no intention of telling us anything. He's well aware that the less he says, the less chance he has of giving himself away. The complete opposite of Hurley, then. He, seem, he seems to think the more he says, the better. Well, at least I managed to prize a little more information from these witnesses' lips. All thanks to the Skulkin brothers. Yes, they were the key to it all. So he says he had nothing to do with Winderbanks. Well, we know that's not true. Perhaps now would be a good time to have a proper look through the court record. Good idea. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. I thought I might need to... Like... Scaramouche Detective. Uh, real quick, we don't need to read this. I am going to press this also before I move on. 
truth? Uh, well, oh no, I can't think how to answer that. <laughs> God, this here. guy's such a tool. Yeah. Uh, okay. He has nothing to do with the establishment, and we didn't get that extra picture, so I guess it has to be this. Objection. Objection. Have you ever seen this disc before, <laughs> Mr. Graydon? Why? Is it supposed to mean something? This disc was, until the day of his murder, in pawn in Mr. Winterbank's shop. It was redeemed by the defendant, Miss Gina Lestrade, that afternoon. However, somebody mysteriously appeared to try to take it from her. And that somebody was you, of course, wasn't it, Mr. Graydon? No, it wasn't. Eat my shit. Uh, oh, as I have reiterated numerous times now, you are mistaken. That was not me. I've never seen that disc before in my life. It may have escaped your notice, but there is a small smear of blood on the disc. Ah, oh, yes, resulting from an abrasion of the thumb, perhaps. That's right. The surface of the disc is covered in hundreds of tiny metal bumps. In the skirmish to acquire the disc, the thumb of the person who tried to take it suffered minor lacerations. <clears throat> so, while the disc bears the remnants of that skirmish in the form of this smear of blood, the thumb of that person in question must bear the remnants also in the form of a scratch. Good gracious, indeed it must! Mr. Graydon, you refused to allow a court officer to examine your arm before. Are you now going to refuse to allow us to examine your thumb? Because I have no doubt that it bears a small scratch consistent with the smear of blood on this disc. He like raises one thumb, he's like, nope, nothing on it! Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm expecting. Well, well. It would seem I underestimated you. What? What is the meaning of this? So you admit it now. You admit you have a scratch on your thumb from when you attempted to take the disc from the defendant. Oh. Order! Order! Well, Mr. Graydon? It would appear there has been something of a misunderstanding here. That was my brother, you see. You are I the not brother? All oh, right, it's me, I mean. <laughs> I did not attempt to take the disc as you put it. No, quite the reverse. What are you trying to say? <laughs> it's really quite simple, you see. The disc was mine from the outset. Is there some crime in taking an item that you own out from the pawn? What? It would seem, Mr. Graydon, that in this piece of evidence, my learned friend has established a link between yourself and the incident. Accordingly, you will tell the court everything you know about this disc now. As you wish. Though I'm quite sure it has nothing whatsoever to do with the pawnbroker's murder. There's a note on the disc saying, for me gilded, but the item belongs to me. The redemption ticket was stolen from me by the accused, that filthy gutterling, on the day in question. I proceeded at once to the shop in order to explain my situation and redeem my article. In the end, of course, the disc was taken by the police. In other words, I had absolutely no reason to break into the shop later that same night. Did I hear you correctly, sir? McGill, did you say? The famous London philanthropist? who perished in this very courtroom two months ago after being acquitted of a distinctly messy murder. Yes, my lord, the one and the same. Good lord, Mr. Graydon! Are you saying that Mr. McGilded and yourself were acquainted? Yes, that's correct. Order! Well... I certainly didn't expect to hear that name uttered here in my courtroom again. According to what Gina told us, this disc was placed in pawn on that fateful night two months ago. McGilded himself gave instructions to deposit it at Winterbanks. It's funny that Mr. Graydon here is claiming the disc belongs to him then, isn't it? In all likelihood, he's lying. So he what? appeared that... 
afternoon at Winderbanks in order to get his hands on McGilded's disc for some reason. Council, you will commence your cross-examination, please. No, thank you. Guilty. Oh my goodness, these are chocolate chips, it's not blueberry! <laughs> okay. Let's gonna press all of them again. Sure. Would you care to explain how this belongs to you? No. As you will observe, a communications officer such as myself commands a fine salary. You are certainly exquisitely dressed, sir. So you see, I have little need to make use of the services provided by the pawnbrokery trade. However, I did once find myself in difficulties having misplaced my purse whilst on an errand. Oh, hang on. Spilled some salsa on myself like a two-year-old. I need to clean this up. Oh! oh. Salsa. This, this muffin is like half chocolate like it's it's like a regular muffin and then one half is just like all chocolate i've never fucking seen what is this seriously like a half and half what is going on it was it like a chocolate chip muffin or is yeah it... hold on i'm taking a picture of this thing it's a fucking chimera of a creation <laughs> okay my bad i'm just a little messy boy which is why i pawned my fine black overcoat to the broker in question hmm you claim that it was your overcoat. Obviously, and in my haste, I clean forgot that the music box disc was in the pocket. And yet, there is a note on it that reads, For McGilded. I am a collector of rare and unusual mu music box music. I first met Mr. McGilded at a gentleman's club in the city and was interested to discover that he shared my penchant in that area. I feel like the easy thing to ask is just be like, okay, what's on this music disc? <laughs> Loud fucking sounds. <laughs> it's rare <laughs> and unusual. Uh, I am a deviant. <laughs> um, um. Oh boy. So, the disc in question. It's a pre-production sample. I promise to let Mr. McGill did hear it. Oh, sorry. But then but then forgot that it was in the pocket of the overcoat you were forced to pawn. Yes, exactly. You scroll over Van Zeeks. You abandon him. <laughs> Jail for lawyer. <laughs> Siv? What? Siv? Oh, I'm sorry. I dropped, a, I dropped a chocolate chip and I thought you guys were... <laughs> Gina didn't mention any of that in her testimony two months ago, did she? No, because Mr. McGill did had threatened her to keep her mouth shut. Which means that if we dig too deeply here, it's going to expose Gina's perjury. Better than murder. Oh dear, this is complicated, isn't it? Let's leave it alone for the time being. Okay. Okay. Um... Oi, 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 oi. Hold it! Hold it! So you're saying that Miss Lestrade lifted the ticket from your pocket or bag? That's right. Despite being mindful of danger when walking in the unsalubrious, unsalubrious. wow, in, insalubrious. in the insul yeah. Yeah. in the insalubrious areas, her kind frequent. <gasps> oh, Miss Lestrade did no such thing. Well, of course you would take that stance, but the girl is a regular offender. You came to the pawn brokery that day prepared with all the information you needed to identify the defendant. You were looking for her. That's what brought you to Winderbanks. Objection. To get your hands on this disc. Objection. My learned friend is a veritable font of nonsense. <laughs> nonsense? I concur with the prosecution. Counsel? You will refrain from conjecturing in this way. Is that clear? Yes, my lord. Then I will continue with my testimony for what possible use it could be. Okay, um... This is a lie. This is true. Hold it. Yes, it was taken by Inspector Gregson here, wasn't it? That's right. This was the very man. Right? Apparently the police are collecting anything that has a connection to Mr. McGilded as Excuse evidence. Excuse me. Excuse me. Yeah, is something wrong, Inspector? Oh, no. I told... Uh, well, um, what do you mean? The last remark Mr. Graydon made in his testimony seemed to trouble you in some way. 
Hey? No. No, he didn't. It's nothing. Leave it alone. Let me ask you this, Inspector. Why is Scotland Yard gathering Mr. McGilded's possessions? I can't tell you something like that, Sunshine. What is it, Inspector? Investigative secrets? Yes, exactly. You should know all about that. Magnus McGilded, who died so <laughs> unexpectedly after... I can't imagine who killed him. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, a man renowned throughout the capital for his great contributions to public life, yet he had a dark side too. Where are you going with this, Van Seeks? I suppose the police are dealing with the aftermath of his nefarious activities, are they? Will, your balancing is good for the other characters. Could you lean a bit in a bit when you do Van Zeeks? He's a little quiet. Sure. That's enough. Coppers like me who have duties to carry out that we're not at liberty to talk about. That's all you need to know. Duties conferred by Lord Strongheart, I presume. The Lord Chief Justice appears to have great faith in you, Inspector. The bottom line is, if you want to get more out of me... You've got to squeeze me like a toothpaste. You're going to need Lord Strongheart's paw print first. What's this all about? Looks like there's something going on between Gregson and Lord Van Zeeks here. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> That's what I call sidebar. Well, it would appear the inspector has revealed all he is at liberty to reveal. Which seems weird that we'd let that slide. Mr. Graydon, let's return to your testimony. No. Gladly, my lord. didn't press this one, so I'm gonna go back and do that. Sure. Oh, fuck. I get the uh, feeling that, like, we're gonna have strong heart here at some point. Siv, do you want to be Egg Boy? Sure, I'll be Egg Boy. Hold on. Let me I feel like that. Flesh. Yeah. I, I feel like that makes the most sense. I'm wondering mm. if Strongheart's gonna be, like, a villain in the next game. Oh, have, maybe. I don't know. Have I you ever so been... Too. I would, I would keep Will on this guy until we have indication that we're gonna get another villain. Sure. I don't know. Only once for the purposes of pawning something, but like many, I enjoy browsing in such establishments. So when you noticed that the pickpocket had taken your ticket, you chased after her, is that correct? Yes, that's right. I didn't notice at first, of course, such is the art of the pick purse. But when I did, I headed to the pawnbrokery at once in order to reclaim my coat before it was taken. I was merely recovering, trying to recover what was rightfully mine in the first place. Ah, he can say what he likes because he knows we have no evidence to contradict him on this. I'll kill him! I'll kill him! Mmm, that sounds like a naughty no-no. Uh, yeah, I just got back real quick. Um, I can hop on the judge. Chat suggested that's a good idea, so... Oh, yeah. there's an idea. Yeah. But mm. perhaps you had seen something of value amongst the forfeited items. No, not at all. Oh. Kind of rude. A valuer was brought in by the police to assess everything in the shop. Without exception, every article on the shelves was common or garden brick brac bric -a -brac. Bric -a brac In that case, it's clear that you broke into the shop later that day to, uh, to, in order to recover Mr. McGilded's disc. Have you not been listening, man? Even if I had wanted to recover the disc, you may recall that it had been seized by the police that afternoon. It was no more in the shop that night than I. As I keep saying, I simply had no reason to break in. So there was nothing of McGilded's left in the shop that night. Nothing this man might have been after. I wonder if that's really true. Oh. If you have an idea, kill him! <laughs> Mm. It's the code. Tell my professor, Xavier! Yeah, it's, it's gotta be the code. Okay, I'm trying to... 
Well, yeah, it would be the coat because the coat had the two different pictures of the yeah, cat. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking where I should refute this because mm. he doesn't mention McGilded in his thing, but... Mm -hmm. Let me, uh... I haven't needed to Good. save scum in this game yet, but, like, <laughs> never hurts. Yeah, it's been it's been pretty nice. Dum dum dum. Dum 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 Okay. Dum 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 dum. Oh, Susanna's right. little book. What does this say? Uh okay, this doesn't mention Right, the problem was they didn't uh they didn't mention that it was McGilded's coat. Gina's representation papers. Maybe they'll be nice enough to be like, to let you just say that. Hmm. But then I don't know what to present. Uh, is the cat on the other side of that one? Well, yeah. I mean, to okay. be to be fair, this one is the pawnbroker for the coat itself. Yes. One gentleman's overcoat. All right, so maybe the bloody one. I'm gonna keep looking. No. Whoa, what is this? So much. Today's paper is not useful right now. Mm -hmm. Autopsy report, that's not useful, that's not useful. No, 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 no. Could also be the photograph of Gina who is wearing the coat, but- um... Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I'm gonna, um, <clears throat> he didn't know Gina was in there. I mean, he might have. Um, yeah, that's the one. Okay, I'm gonna try it. Objection. Nope, wrong. Okay. Yeah, I'll take a hint, chat. Let me, uh. We're close. It's the other ticket for the box. Oh. Okay. Weird. Oh, fuck. I had to click back on this window, so. Use You're good. your brain, Runo! Okay. Ticket for the box. Oh, there you go. Ticket for the box. One small box. All right. Objection. 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 This disc was deposited at Winderbanks on Magnus McGilded's instructions. You knew that, and you went there with the intention of obtaining it for yourself. Conjecture again. And in any case, the, court, the disc was taken into custody by the police that afternoon. The witness had no reason to visit the pawnbrokery again that night. Objection. Objection. <laughs> Sorry, my learned friend, but that's, that's not true. Uh, 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 did you, did you just? Yeah. Get his ass! <laughs> Mr. McGilded had another article in pawn at Winterbanks. As this second pawnbroker's ticket proves. Oh! 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 There were two articles belonging to McGilded in Winterbanks' pawnbrokery. And the reason you broke into the shop that night was to recover the second one. Together with your two accomplices, the Skulkin Brothers. Mm, uh. mm, this is the second ticket, is it? What had the man deposited? The article in description reads, one small box. A rather vague description, it seems to me. Are you suggesting that I broke into the brokery with these clowns in order to steal some trinket box? Hey, are you calling a clown? Yeah, brother. I mean, oh shit. You didn't break into it with us. You went in first, remember? I took this photo. Oh, beans! <laughs> oh, at least I didn't mention the part where you shot Winterbank. Oh, shit! <laughs> and the photo I took of you doing it! <laughs> I believe there are adequate grounds to, uh, to suspect that you did. This is absurd! Why on earth would I do such a thing? Once the article had been forfeited, I could simply walk into the shop and purchase it. There would be absolutely no need for me to resort to theft! That's a good point. 
<laughs> That's a true. That's a true. Indeed, the witness. <laughs> Fellow needed the small box that very night, does it? <laughs> Objection! Don't yell at Iris! It's You're time... very scary, please! No. Oh, it's time you put an end to this nonsense. To <laughs> <laughs> My lord. Oh, yes, uh, could you be a little less cryptic, Lord Van Zeeks? Seriously? I do hate to ruin my learned friend's argument, but the truth is quite incontrovertible. What did I, I said that very wrong. No, you got <laughs> it. Oh, no, I'm wondering at a comment in chat that says, my learned white boy. <laughs> <laughs> No small box was taken from Winderbank's pawn brokery. I ate it. And rest assured, the prosecution can prove it. What? Good gracious! Inspector, show the photographic prints to the court, if you please. Oh, uh, yes, sir. What prints? These prints were taken from one of the detective security cameras. It's red-handed recorders again! As previously explained using this plan of the shop layout, the victim's establishment was furnished with automatic cameras in two locations. Two locations? One was set to capture the counter where Mr. Winderbeck received his customers, and the other was set to capture the shelves on which articles were placed for sale once forfeited. According to the information on this ticket, McGilded's small box had been forfeited already two days before the incident at 9 p.m. on 13th April, to be precise, which means it would have been on the shelves of forfeited items in the shop front. Now, what I have here is a print taken by one of the cameras about two hours before the incident. That's at 11 p.m. on the 15th April. Mm, the victim certainly had a very full shop, it would appear. I like yes, that they're that. using Herlock's camera invention while at the same time being like, there's no way this kook could have invented a blood-related invention. Yeah. yeah. And then here we have another print. Mm. This one was taken about two hours after the incident. They took something out of the box, man. Out Guys, of the box. Please. Out, of, out, the out of the box. I see. So we have two pictures to compare. Oh boy, two pictures. Uh, I don't want to get a headache, please. Though I must say that placing them side by side leaves me cold, quite chilly. He starts wrapping up in his beard. Dear me, that's starting to make my head ache. Obviously, at Scotland Yard, we considered theft as one possible motive in this case. We explored the possibility that something had been taken in addition to the victim's life. So your men have already compared these two prints thoroughly, Inspector? Yes, sir. Hmm, good. We counted every single item in each of these uh, two photographic prints. And the Yard's conclusion is, the exact, is that exactly the same number are present in both. Hmm. In other words, nothing was taken from the pawn brokery on the night in question. And my learned friend's assertion is nothing more than a hopeful fantasy. Ah! I don't believe it! If I could have just shown he'd stolen McGilded's pawn box! Mm. Oh! Victory Wiggle! Oh, no. I might have been able to break him down at last. You know what, you know? I think we should just kill them all! I've been thinking. I just need to load the right kind of gas into my gun. I wonder if these two photographs really are exactly the same. One of them says 2 a.m. Guilty! <laughs> what? <laughs> no, look, literally it's the exact same photograph and they're just lying about one being different. So, counsel, in the light of the evidence put forward by the prosecution, what is your position? I hope I don't hear my kitty cat getting up to trouble in the other room. It seems that, in fact, on the night in question, nothing was stolen from the victim's establishment. Do you accept the prosecution's assertion? Okay. 
I think the trick here is to compare them with these photographs. Hmm. Maybe. We'll find out. Oh, he's playing with his jingle ball. Oh, I... <laughs> the judge is just batting a ball. I can't see them. Podium. Oh, what the fuck? I don't know. Oh, okay. Could there be some hidden discrepancy? Oh, God. Well, don't cover Oof. this. Um, you mean beans. I, I feel like there's no discrepancy. However much I look at these two prints, I just can't see anything that went missing. Yes, my lord. I can see nothing wrong with the photographic evidence put forward. Hmm. Hmm. Use the 3D Very object well. finder. The what? Yeah. No, why? Because you guys told me to! <laughs> Cross your eyes. I can't. That doesn't work. It doesn't work on this. No, wait, Rono! There's something out of place oh, with Oh, you can use... What? We have to use the piece of... Just... Come on, man. Ugh. Yeah, yeah. This is nonsense! Big stinky! It can work, lol. Not for me. I'd have to, like, smash my face into it. Alright, I'll, I'll use a piece of evidence to view it, which is dumb. We should just do it. Stupid. Stupid. Oh, you've caught it! Hello! You've caught the cross-eyed compulsion! Juro number three, what a surprise. Oh, come on, Reno. Let's put the pictures in place and see what this wonderful contraption shows us. There we go. Now look through the eyepiece. <laughs> wasn't sure at first, but there's a clear discrepancy. <laughs> You must identify the location in question for the court council. <laughs> a little box, please. Don't miss, Jello. The time is different. <laughs> Don't miss. Take that. You joke, Siv. No, I'm not joking. <laughs> I'm being pedantic. <laughs> Granted, these two prints are almost identical. However, there is one minor discrepancy between them. Gregson! What? When you view the two pictures stereoscopically... You get a headache! Yeah. Bling! Ooh, a can of beans! A single area stands out as being different. The location of this can of beans. Let me... wait... Un unbelievable! Jove, you're right! How extraordinary! <laughs> Screen, Screen yeah. caps out. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good. Okay. Yeah, it's like... I don't know. It just feels like they would obviously immediately use the stereoscope and then they cover the pictures with the options, which is deeply annoying. What this tells us is very simple. Mr. McGilded's small box can of beans was indeed not stolen from Winterbanks on the night in question. However, there can be no doubt that somebody picked up this particular box and returned it to its place on the shelves. Are you suggesting that the small can of beans originally deposited by Mr. McGilded is in fact? Yes, the very same can of beans I just identified Objection. in those photographic prints. Objection. Mindless guesswork. What if it was? Then oh, I'm right. Oh, oh no. So a can of beans was moved on the shelf. Nothing was stolen. Which means quite simply that nothing has changed. That, that may be true, but... All right, the Gilded's box wasn't stolen then. But does the... Yeah, it changes everything. Get, get the box used for put thing in! I believe this changes everything about the case. How can that possibly be? Yeah. Um, I keep having to go back and forth to adjust Will's volume, and it keeps scaring me! I'm sorry, I have to keep... It's okay! 
They showed them in parallel like four times and you click through as fast as possible to be fair. Because I thought I'd get them as evidence to look at them. <laughs> The crucial point is that that uh, is the fact that w that what was moved was a can of beans. In other words, we have to consider what might have been inside the box. What are you suggesting? I'm suggesting that we need to examine those beans as soon as possible. It's a vital piece of evidence. Uh, a vital piece of evidence is sitting on the shelves at Winterbanks as we speak. Objection. That won't be necessary. Some little can of beans belonging to a man who died two months ago can't possibly be relevant to this trial. It's just bringing me so much joy. <laughs> <laughs> the court does not uphold your objection, Lord Beans. Really? <laughs> because this bit is like, I don't dislike it, but it's doing nothing for me, so it's very easy to read as can of beans. <laughs> mm, fucking beans. <laughs> beans. Nobody move so until hungry. we get these beans. Ignore the light, Sora! <laughs> the beans are nothing to fear! <laughs> Not the beans! We should have a report within a month. <laughs> I think perhaps we should recess for a short while until the evidence is brought forth. To be hoodwinked by such a farce. <laughs> Disappointing. I beg your pardon, Lord Von Beans! <laughs> This is um this is nothing but a smoke screen. An Ebony's specialty would seem. What are you trying to say? My learned friend has persisted with the same line of reasoning from the very beginning. That this witness's intent was to steal an article belonging to Mr. McGilded from the pawnbrokery. Yet common sense tells us that none of the articles have value enough to be worth stealing in the first place. We don't know what's in the box. <laughs> we know it is beans. Exactly. It would be beyond absurd to break into a place for, a, for the purpose of stealing such commonplace property. Unless they're Fabergé beans. Mmm, mm, Fabergé, Fabergé beans. Fabergé beans. Let me pour some more bean juice. Oh, yeah, yeah. Bean juice is coffee. Just think of it differently. If your lordship recalls, Mr. McGill did perish two months ago, immediately after the conclusion of his trial. I'm sorry, I'm just, I, I just got snuck up on in the dark and stabbed in the spine by the memory of Lister Bean. <laughs> A trial in which he has found not guilty. A trial in which it was established he was the upstanding member of society. His reputation implied, in fact. So I propose a toast to my learned friend in his most insightful defense. This is not an objection, Your Honor. The articles this upstanding member of society pawned were entirely ordinary. A black overcoat that just happened to have a music box disc in one of its pockets. And a small <laughs> box. A small what? I assure you. Oh, my apologies. I don't want to get any information wrong. And a small can of beans. I assure you. I wouldn't accept even if the man tried to make a gift of such things to me. Rude. Bastard. You know, that does make rather a lot of sense. Notice if it was Gilda Jules, is it? Oh, goodness knows, Mr. McGilded was rich enough. But you can't deposit cash. Oh, okay, that's fine. The prosecution's argument is undeniably compelling. <coughs> it is in incumbent on the defense now to bolster its argument. I am. I'm saying get this box. <laughs> to explain what possible significance these commonplace articles pawned by this fine citizen could have. Well, 
Royal Council is your argument in fact demonstrable? Are you able to show proof that the disc or the box, the beans, are in any tangible way related to this case? Well, uh... What's the matter, Runo? We know that they're related, don't we? Both vital pieces of evidence! Yes, of course. You and I both know that. We know Mr. McGillard's true character. And we know that dis the disc is significant, even if we don't know why. But if we explain all that to the court at this point, we'll have to acknowledge that McGilded's acquittal two months ago was a mistake, that the defense's argument was flawed based on false information. Oh no! And that would mean admitting Gina committed perjury. Well, that's... But Ginny... That's better than murder! I think you just gotta do it at this point! Not up, buddy! Could it be that Van Zeke's knows? Is that why he's doing this now? Because he anticipated everything. But maybe... This could be a great opportunity for us. Sorry, what do you mean, Iris? Well, uh, what is it that you always say, Renel? Sooner or later, the truth comes out every time. I don't think I've ever said that. All right, the exact significance of the things that, Ms., uh, that McGill did deposited with Mr. Winterbank is something that only Gina can explain to the court. But if I put her on the stand to testify about that, it could critically damage our chances of winning this case. <sighs> What's the right thing to do here? The truth always comes out. Get her. My lord, the defense would like to make a proposal. Oh, no more beans, please. Oh, what proposal? Chat, bean illustrated. <laughs> <laughs> While the court awaits the arrival of Mr. McGilded's small bean can, I would like to call the defendant, Miss Beena Lestrade, to the witness stand. The defendant? Shorthand! It's to do with the various articles deposited at Winterbanks by Mr. McGilded, my lord. Miss Lestrade has information relating to them. I believe it would be beneficial for the court to hear what she has to say. It will prove the significance of the articles in question once and for all. Well, well, things are becoming interesting. I presume you've considered the implications of the testimony you're proposing. In particular, the impact it will have on the accused's standing, and indeed your own. I have. Uh, Van Zeex, would you care to explain that last remark? No. The prosecution accepts the defense's proposal. I move to interrupt the cross-examination of the current witness and hear from the accused herself. Oh, okay. Very well, if you have no objection. Bonk. So the court will now hear the testimony of the defendant, Miss Bina Lestrade. You witnesses currently in the stand may fuck off. You don't have a hat, my guy. Then I shall bid you a good day. Do you think him Wait. having thrown us his hat is gonna matter? Maybe. Oh, I bet. You, sir, shall remain in the stand while Miss the Straw testifies. As you wish. All right then, Bina. It's time. I actually knew a girl named Bina. <laughs> it was. I uh, call Al Bina. <laughs> She was from she was from China and it was her American name I believe but um oh yeah hang on I know this will be hard but please put your faith in me here Good luck right now Oh you make me sit next to this stinky man I'm not stinky The articles that Mr. McGilded had deposited in Winterbank's pawn brokery are intimately related with the omnibus case, the trial of which was heard in this courtroom two months ago. Yes, and I remember this young lady being brought before me in that trial as well. That's right, my lord. Her testimony helped to establish the innocence of the defendant, Mr. McGilded. Dots. The omnibus case was intriguing, to say the least. And now here we all are again. The same players in that trial face each other once more. I really like that the final case in the game is about a case earlier in that game instead of the thing literally every other Ace Attorney game does where it's about like reopening a case from like 20 years ago. 
Mm. I was about to say, I mean, investigations had that one from 12 years ago. Yeah, no, they never stopped. A twist of fate, perhaps, my Nipponese friend. Allow me to recap the events of two months ago. An old brickmaker was stabbed to death in an omnibus running along London's winter streets. Handsome. Apart from, it was Piff. Apart from the victim, mm -hmm. there was only one other person in the carriage, Mr. McGilded. Naturally, he was the prime suspect for the murder. But as the trial progressed, another possibility emerged that the murder in fact took place above the defendant's head on the roof deck, with the body then being dropped through the skylight into the carriage below. It was Miss Lestrade's, uh, it was Miss Lestrade whose testimony brought that possibility to light. At the time of the incident, Miss Lestrade was concealed under a seat in the carriage, hoping to pick the pockets of unsuspecting pass, pa I don't know how, passengers. Then immediately- Got very little fingers, I do. Ugh, just imagining like paper thin fingers. Paper creeping. thin, yeah. <laughs> just then, like the hands of a rat, but human sized. <laughs> then, immediately after the trial, having been uh, being acquitted of the murder, Mr. McGilded died in this very courtroom in the most extraordinary of circumstances. Looked directly at Zeke's. Yes, my heat vision. A mystery <laughs> that remains unsolved even now. Two months on. Can you just like play him as like cartoonishly obviously the dude who murdered McGill did? Even if that ends up not being right, it'll be really fun. Just like, yeah, it's a mystery that remains yeah. unsolved. <laughs> a mystery that remains unsolved, as indeed does the omnibus murder itself. Be that as it may, I recall neither the disc nor this small beanie being being mentioned in the court proceeding. <laughs> I was fine until you laughed. <laughs> Miss Lima Strahd. <laughs> what the fuck you call me? <laughs> Could you tell... Call me a limey, you did! <laughs> Would you tell the court now, please? What really happened in the omnibus two months ago, I mean. Are you shitting me? Don't know what you mean. <laughs> I already said all what I know. And what about everything you told us yesterday from inside your prison cell? Please, Miss Lestrade, this is extremely important. But, Remember, little girl, if it transpires that you willfully withheld information in the trial two months ago, the Home Office will seek to prosecute you for perjury. Oh no, no, not the Home Office. Fuck off! And naturally, you will lose all credibility as a witness. Although, let's face facts, you have little credibility to lose. Timmy, don't listen to him! He's evil! Please, you have to just ruin it now! <laughs> I'm a on your side! I'm a bean pyre. <laughs> <laughs> Alright then, I'll talk. It's the right choice, Gina. Bina. Well, there you go. it would seem that my learned friend is hell-bent on bringing the entire courtroom down about his ears. So be it. I must confess that I'm struggling to understand what on earth is happening here. Why are you being so mean to each other? Someone in <laughs> chat just said, I want to suck your beans. But like, I think somewhere in the back of my head, the John Lennon energy is there. So I read that as, I want to suck your beans. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. However, it would appear that Mr. McGilded spawned articles at the ex extraordinary case of the Omnibus. <sighs> Our secrets of which we have been hitherto unaware. I like her tiny almond mouth. So, Miss Lestrade, you will now give your testimony before the court about the events of two months ago. You reveal the truth, a commodity sorely lacking in your original statements. This is it, then. Everything's going to come out. Puts on a pride pin, like Van Zeek said. Everyone this... starts clapping. <laughs> yeah, 1800s England, famous for its acceptance of homosexuals. <laughs> This could bring the whole courtroom down about my ears. But as a lawyer, I'm prepared to take that risk. The finale is finally final. 
John Beanen. The Bean Tools. Bean Tool McCartney. Bean Tool McCartney. Truth is that Brickmaker Cove was in the cabin of the Omnibus at the time. When the Irishman dragged me out from under the seat, I saw a disc on the floor. All of a sudden, I had a scream from over me head, and that pair on the roof deck went in to call the slops. Went off to call the slops! That's when McGill did slip the driver some tin to do a run in the pawn shop roundabout. Fucking chat. Bingo star, stringo star. Here, <laughs> we all live in the yellow bean marine. Bean <laughs> marine. <laughs> <laughs> He threatened me not to snitch, not to say nothing to no one about what I'd seen or heard. Good grief, this is outrageous! What you've just told the court bears almost no resemblance to your testimony two months ago! As you say, my lord. I may have educated an error in Mr. McGilded's trial! It's absloshed, man, just gone. It sounds very much to me as if the man deliberately deceived this court in an effort to cover up the most wicked of schemes. Without doubt, your lordship is correct. A great injustice was done in this courtroom two months ago. The actions of the accused in that trial, of this witness and my learned friend, are entirely inexcusable! Actually, if you remember what happened, Lord <clears throat> Van Zeeks, once I caught wind of that, I tried to bring the guilty verdict down and you all stopped me. <laughs> I love this comment in chat. No shit, your honor. <laughs> You're wrong. The lawyer, Mr. Naruto, the, the lawyer there, he didn't know nothing about it. Humbug. I don't think so. I really expected to believe that. He really stitched everyone up, didn't he? What an operation to get the man off scope free. Unforgivable! Un unforgivable! Stop! The lies have to stop! Stop! Yes, the defense made a terrible error of judgment. I intend to take full responsibility and suffer whatever consequences are deemed appropriate. However, it's imperative that the court allows the witness to elaborate on her testimony, because the true significance of McGilded's pond articles must be brought to light. Very well, my learned student friend. Ooh, a new word. Given the depths of calamity you have just plunged yourself into, this may well be worth hearing. Fuck. Words fit. <laughs> I think that was stupid fucking game grumps bit. Words fail me. The situation is utterly deplorable. Mr. Marihodo. Yes, my lord. I will decide upon your fate following the conclusion of this trial. What fate? I just defended someone who was accused of being something. Your fate! I, this is... What fate? It's obviously a duel. It's like approaching with the wine bottle. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Narahardo just chops him in half with the sword. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, actually, you would win. <laughs> Sorry, someone was messaging me about uh, something. Blimey, Mr. Naruto! Now, Council, proceed with the cross examination! I'm getting angry! What, what is Edgar doing? Oh, I'm just admiring myself. Mom, I threw up. <laughs> okay. I don't want to look at this poor person. Okay. Oh. Okay. That pawn shop obviously being Windermanks on Baker Street. Just a moment, counsel. Do, do you mean to tell me that the driver gave false testimony in that trial as well? The Beppo lied to me! Perhaps the excursion to the barn brokery slipped his mind when he was in the stand. Were you looking at me like that, Al? Hi! Indeed, Lord Fancy's! <laughs> McGildy took off his coat and gave it to the driver. So there's a BS thing. Hang on, people are warning me about something. Look at them when you can and examine them even without the ding prompt. What? We just help you, this oh. bit sucks. I, I guess look at Eggy. He folded it up all carefully like before ending it over. Ah! Uh oh! oh. Excuse me. Excuse 
Excuse me. What? What, what, what the fuck? What? Uh, Your Honor? You're, you're, you're... Hello? You... Is there something you'd like to share with the court, Inspector and Mr. Grayson? I guess... I mean, I guess it's... Vis he's making a pose he's never made before, but yeah, no, thank you for telling me. Inspector! Mr. Grayson! Wah! Blimey! You trying to give me an heart attack? You may have been whispering to each uh, you've been whispering to each other for quite some time now. Tell us, what is the discussion about? Discussion? With this fella? Well the other one, Sunshine. It's very visible. Yeah, but never before have you been prompted to investigate someone who has does not have the ding above their head. It's just weird. It's it's like a I I don't like uh, I don't like when a game takes away a UI element or an indicator, and it's like, this is challenging. It's like, no, you taught me to do a certain thing. This isn't clever, it's just that you're yeah. not doing something. I, I think it would be, I mean, one, they do provide pretty good, uh, like, visible evidence like something is happening. Like, I even called that out pretty immediately. Yeah. But, um, unless in the tutorial when it's first explained, it says, by the way, keep an eye out, sometimes you won't get a prompt, then yeah, it's, it's cheatsy doodle. Yeah. Yeah. Obvious, dude. I don't know. You think I've got anything to talk about with this shady general like this? And I have nothing to say to this uncouth detective after he deprived me of that disc that was rightfully mine. <laughs> Someone, a very rude agreement. You don't train Pavlov's dog and then expect it to slobber without the bell. <laughs> 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 But they've clearly been talking the entire time I've been cross-examining Gina. Bina. It's as if they've been negotiating. Uh, are, are we being evil over there? No chitter-chatter, little boys. None. Shush. Oh, okay. They do, they do prompt it at the end of the testimony. All right, that's fair, then. Okay. okay. Yes, um, sorry, my lord. What were those two talking about? Mr. Strahd, continue with your testimony, please. Okay, now I assume I need to go back and press basically all of these, and at some point one of them will react to it, now that they're different. Um, yeah, I feel like if there were less obvious prompts before then it might push people to look around before. Yeah, or maybe if they had like different prompts, like there was an exclamation point for when they thought of something and then um, there were like, I feel like the Layton game did this where there were like sometimes exclamation points and sometimes little speech bubbles like they were thinking with an ellipsis in them. And like they weren't, like literally every single one of them has been prompted with the ding to this point and there never was one that you investigated and it wasn't the way forward. So, I don't know. I, th I think it's I think it's a kind of a cheat. Okay. Um, I'm gonna press through this one real quick. I think the latent ones were only sound prompted. Uh, yeah, but you could look at them and they had like a thing on top of them. Okay, it's gonna be worth a few bob. Yes. The driver looked pretty happy when we gilded flash some brass in his face. He went running off a lick. Then the bog trotter ca called to me and told me to come out from the drug's cabin. Okay. Alright, press. Threatened you how, exactly? Told me I'd only be able to scarp her if I did exactly what he said. Which included giving false testimony in court two months ago. Yeah, that's it. And there was one other thing he said. I love you. Which was? <laughs> he told me I'd have to hang on the ticket from the pawn shop and make sure not to lose it. Okay. The ticket? Oh, well, I'd never said if he didn't show up to get the ticket off me before two months passed, I'd give the pawn shop and pay the money to keep it in lug, stop it being forfeited. He left me with some brass to pay for it. But really, why on earth would Mr. McGilded have done such a thing? 
depositing his overcoat with a pawnbroker before the arrival of the police. It makes no sense at all! There would seem to be only one logical explanation, my lord. What Mr. M uh, what McGill did had the derive the derive or deposit at Winterbanks was something he didn't want the police to see. Something very important that he needed to hide at all costs. Arr! Anyway, after that he let me go, so I legged it before Corporal showed up. Well done, Gina. Couldn't have been easy to tell the truth, really putting your faith in you. Yep. Ginny, do her thingy! Okay, yep. Time just, to really go for it! Just press her on every statement. Uh, oop, can't play that while I'm on stream. Uh, someone just, Marissa just sent me something. <laughs> Hello. Okay. Uh, truth is, the brick make a Yeah, we just gotta press everything. I assume we're waiting for another ding. I'm, I'm literally just gonna keep going, because we already know everything about Gina's statement. She told us everything already. Bah, 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 bah. That's what he told me to say. Bah, 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 bah. Tell us the truth now. Was McGilded there? I deny it. I don't didn't hear him talk a lot. What were they talking about? Couldn't hear him. I couldn't hear too well. I think it was about money or something. This is too Here, let's just go as fast as we possibly can. What? Vocally, just go as fast oh. as you can. Got her and her sort of sound like a purple fight. I was pretty scared by then. I don't know, it was like someone yelled at me on the floor. It was blooming loud, no! That would be a lot of underfunders. Yeah, it's okay, me away. Put on a little bit of makeup. <laughs> Hold it! What was the disc you saw? Was it this disc? Yeah, I reckon it probably was. It was right next to my coat on the floor. Could have slipped up along the floor, perhaps. I don't know, but McGill picked it up pretty smartish. And then he sat with curve of the knife his belly up in the sea. What did he say to you at the time? He told me not to say what about what I'd seen, I heard no one. About the disc and all. It was dead scared. <laughs> the way he was looking at me, I thought. If I didn't go along with it, I'd get stuck with that knife too. <laughs> <laughs> he started asking me a load of questions. Like what man was and where I lived in that, and he asked me about being a diver too. <laughs> in chat, you guys had this coffee thing? <laughs> 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 And this sounds when like you, Heron speak. <laughs> when you have the booth reserved, but only for two hours. <laughs> for some reason, there is some BS with the second half. Oh, do I need to do it again? Do I need to check them again with no ding? Um, but, uh, but after a while, what had happened to the carriage was noticed. Yeah, that's right. First with the carriage, not a rapid noise. <laughs> what? Faster! I I have to time it because like Siv Siv gets things at a latency, so I need to make sure she can read all of it first. There were two gentlemen occupying the seats of the roof deck, I believe. That's right. He must look down through the skyline, notice the cover with the knife in his guts. When they escape, the driver pulled his horses and go let me out of sight. Oh god, this is so hard! Here, Will, take over the judge. <laughs> out of sight, where? Back on the seat where I started off. Once the cage came in a wall, two coves from the roof ran for fetch your source. If they immediately left to fetch the police, it would appear they entirely unrelated incident. Hmm. So that left Mr. McGilder, the driver you'd like to slow the scene. We should probably stop because I think there's new info, maybe. Wait, what? I heard the cabin door open and a voice from outside. Uh, the driver, yes. He also testified at the trial, I believe. I don't know, I forget I'm sleepy, old man, Judge. It was Beppo with his carrot nose. <laughs> a fellow who went by the name of Beppo, if memory serves. I would kill for Beppo to come back and be, like, the secret <laughs> villain. What did Mr. McGill did and the driver say to each other? What the fuck? I don't know what happened and stuff like that, mainly. Please help me, I can't stop. There we go, we just needed to press everything. Thank you, Miss Lestrade. Thank you, Council. I've had enough! I believe we now have a reasonable understanding of what actually transpired on the Omnibus. It would appear on that night two months ago, a negotiation was taking place on the Omnibus. A negotiation concerning this disc. However, matters did not run smoothly. When the parties involved began to quarrel over price, McGilda took what he wanted by force at the expense of the other man's life. Which proves my point. The disc is clearly extremely valuable in some way. 
Although I don't understand as to why yet. And two days ago, precisely two months after the omnibus incident, McGilded's coat and its contents were due to be forfeited. I didn't know what I should do with the tiffic. With the tiffic, I mean the cove died right after his trial. I knew that. So you decided you would try to claim the articles at your own. Well, why not, eh? They were only going to be forfeited. Why shouldn't I have got them? Anyway, you can blame me. You can't blame me for thinking about it. Think it ain't no crime. Mr. Strahd, actually it is guilty. It would appear Mr. McGillard was prepared to kill in order to take possession of this disc. Do you know why that would be? Eh? I ain't got a clue. But I reckon it must be worth a fair bit of brass. He was probably going to sell it. And you can't blame me for thinking that. I didn't catch the end of it. My lord. Oh, my lord. <laughs> The evidence your lordship- no, hang on, now it- Kermit, there it is. <laughs> the evidence your lordship is request has been located and is ready for the court's inspection, sir! <gasps> Why am I still standing here? <laughs> the mysterious bean can deposited by Mr. McGilded- I always say Mr. McGilded when I see the yeah. MC. That's fair. There's no doubt in my mind that it's a key piece in this far-reaching puzzle. Luke, my boy. Luke, you awful child. Why? Oh, God! Why? Where are the Skulkins in our hearts? It's true. Well, they're living up the name. There's, there's Skulkin. They're around. One is my left valve. The other is my right. Bum, 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 bum. You don't have a left and right heart valve. There's four valves in your heart. I thought there was the main valves. Like the big one and the, and the uh, little one. No, there's four. Huh. Okay. So this is the article in question, is it? It's quite fancy. It looks like a little counter. I could have breakfast upon it. A small bean can deposited with the pawnbroker by Mr. McGilded two months ago. So this is definitely the music box to play that disc, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And on the night of Mr. Winterbank's murder, the only item on the shelves that was touched by whoever broke into the shop. Quick, quick, let's open it and see what's inside! Dead body! Ooh, what the fuck? Ooh, oh, yeah, yeah. <gasps> Good gracious! This is no ordinary bean can, it seems! It's yeah. a magical bean can! Although, in truth, I had an inkling that might be the case. It would appear that the bean box houses a miniature music <laughs> bean movement. Then, is it too much to expect? I think it would be reasonable to assume that it is a device for the playback of this disc, my lord. I think we should start calling the disc a bean. <laughs> I guess you're ah, right. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> I don't like how they're making room for another person on the stand there. So, here we have the means to play the beans. <laughs> <laughs> not strictly correct, my lord. It was not McGilded's bean. It was the bean of his victim in the omnibus. But why, for heaven's bean? Are we to understand that the bean maker was trying to sell the music bean? Mr. McGilded? They're dying. <laughs> Hello? I believe the answer will become clear if we listen to the music on the bean, my lord. <laughs> yes, very well. Let the court now listen to this curious bean at last! <laughs> Wait, my lord! Good grief! Oh god, is this some crazy labyrinthia shit? If we hear it, we all die? No. Uh, the, the, the can and the bean are, um, well, they're unrelated to the case. No, no need to spoil the somber atmosphere in the courtroom with some silly bit of music. This disc may very well have motivated the culprit in this case to commit murder. Clearly, there's every chance that it's fundamentally important to understanding what's happened. The prosecution has no objection. But, but no! That piece of evidence is police property and... Clearly, Scotland Yard has some vested interest here. 
But it is Fuck policy. the police, am I right? <laughs> but it is policy of this prosecutor to leave no avenues unexplored. And you, Inspector, have no jurisdiction here to prevent that from happening. Ah! No further delays! Play the bean! It's a writing bean. Huh. Take off the note! Oh, it's Morse code. It's Morse code, it's yeah. Morse code. Yep. Yeah. That's a and weird. Did... That's a weird distribution of holes in that disc for. It probably goes for a while. And they needed the stenographer guy or whatever the fuck to decode it. What on earth? That's certainly not what I would call music. No. It's just the same note playing over and over and again, again in an irregular sequence. Hmm. <laughs> Mr. Graydon? This, this really is priceless. <laughs> After all that, the music box is broken. The what? The music bean is broken. Bean can? It can't be, can it? <laughs> yes, it can be indeed! Well, obviously, in fact, I wouldn't be surprised if the officer sent to fetch it didn't drop it on the way back to the courtroom. Oh, this is some bullshit. You know what it said, just tell us. Well, with much regret. I feel the court must accept that this music bean offers very little in the way of clues. Are you ready to move on, Council? Come on. Yes, all right. It does sound as though it's completely broken, but is it? Could the music... No, it's a clue. It's a clue. It's a clue. <laughs> I believe that it could be relevant, my lord. Good lord, but how can it be? Come on, Iris, <laughs> you're smart. Speak up. I, I was just scared if I every time I talk, some yelly man yells at me. Iris! <laughs> <laughs> It's an abomination, Council! Mid noise! I fear to see how it could have any meaning whatsoever! It might not have any meaning, my lord, but it does have beaning. <laughs> <It's... laughs> it does sound strange, I agree, but there's one thing bothering me. This is so stupid! Why is Grace <laughs> chortling victoriously? Because he got the info he wanted. And the inspector mm -hmm. beside him has a rather telling expression on his face. It's as if Gregson recognizes the sound, as if he's familiar with it somehow, and that's making him appear extremely on edge. If that's the stance of the defense, my Nipponese friend, answer me this! Oh! Just what relevance do you propose this woeful chiming has on this case? It, it's, it's the defense's belief. It's not supposed to be music. Just because this is a music box, it doesn't... Oh, I'm sorry. Just because this is a can of beans doesn't necessarily mean the contents we're beaning are beans. Oh! Look at that. The smile vanished from Grayson's lips as soon as Graydon's lips as soon as I said it. I'm on the right lines here. I must be. <laughs> Making deductions based on how people react to what you say. You're acting just like her, you know. Objection. The sounds we're hearing aren't necessarily music. Well, now that you've told us what you think. I'm sure the court would like to hear what they are. Do enlighten us, my Nipponese friend. Well, um... Surely you have an idea in mind, because if not... It will be the death of your ill-informed argument. Exactly! The music box is clearly broken. The what? Refuse... Oh, beans! The can of beans is clearly broken! Refusing to accept that fact is pure foolishness. They've got me! Guilty! I don't know what the answer is yet. Ooh. Uh. <laughs> I've just examined the music box very thoroughly. I licked the, it and everything. The what? And I'm... <laughs> the music Really? Really? The way it's been made, it can only produce a single 
note anyway. Thank you, Iris. All right. Well, if the can of beans isn't broken, it must mean that the bean it's producing must have some significance that isn't beanical. <laughs> Could it be? Is that what these sounds are? Something's just struck me, you know? I feel like recently, in the past few hours even, I've heard another sound very much like the one this music bean makes. Yes, it's a familiar sound. Actually, Iris, I was just thinking the same thing. I'm going to have to press the defense for an answer if your observation is the sound produced by this music box. The bean, bean box is not music at all. Then what the devil is it, Council? All the evidence we've seen so far, all the testimony we've heard, it's all pointing to one single answer now. The prosecution demands that my learned Nipponese friend present proof now. Tangible proof of this latest wild speculation. All right, then. This could be the best chance I'm going to get to fight back in this trial. And if I'm right, it's going to join all the dots together. Very cute hint. <laughs> I've connected the dots. You've connected nothing. I've connected that. <laughs> okay, the piece of evidence. I was actually thinking we might be able to point out juror number four because she's got a telegraph machine. But, yeah, and you can um, just yeah. pop it on in there. Okay, well, it's not the bullet. It's not this. It's not the music box disc. It's not this. Um, Let's see. Don't you mean tangibine? It's not the gun. It's Jira number five. Yeah, it is. I don't know how to. I don't know how to point at her. Photograph. Can you can you just present the the disc and then you can ask about it? I feel like that has to be wrong, right? Is it in your options? Oh, read, Do you have your profiles? Read the. It's not an evidence. What do you mean it's not an evidence? It made me present evidence. Uh, I can't. I can't look at profiles. Uh, the fucking manila folder or whatever. What? There's a sensational story. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, we we read this, but yeah. What is? I mean, I like I know where this is going, but that would be a real big leap. You didn't flip the newspaper. Yeah, I did. I, I Can read you that... open it up? Is what they're saying. Like oh. the other side of the paper, unflipped. Oh. No. Hmm. No, it just didn't present it. Take that! That's. That's a big leap! Yeah, uh, that's. Huh. That's bad. Alright. Uh, no, my lord. I was hoping you'd look a little further down the page. Further down, Ministry of Mobile Classified Secrets may have been released overseas from Ministry of Justice. Yes, this is a very serious matter being investigated at the highest level, I understand. I have heard that international transmissions along, uh, along supposedly secure lines are somehow being intercepted and leaked to various other countries. And presumably those transitions, transmissions are in the form of wired telegrams. Yeah, this is, this is too far of a leap. Not because, like, I see the connection, but this is like, you would almost always be punished in this series for getting this far ahead of where they're clearly yeah. leading you. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm shocked they didn't have me, like, talk to one of the, it'd be like, oh, this relates to this person. And then you'd hit juror number five. And then she would say, this has to like, oh, what about my job? And then you present the newspaper because when you're prompted with, what sound have we been hearing? The answer is not this newspaper article. Yeah. Of course. The, yeah, no, okay, guys, you're backwards again. Juror number five, your input, please. Stop. Oh, me, sir. Whatever's the matter? You told the court before that you worked at the same communication station as Mr. Graydon, did you not? Y y yes, that's correct. And this particular station where you work deals with government communications and newspaper reports? 
Oh, yes. We're not your run-of-the-mill communication station at all. Our work is extremely important. Then tell me, is this not a very familiar sound? Hmm? You, you don't mean to say, is it? That's right, madam. It bears more than a passing resemblance to the sound made by your telegraph machine as you tap it. I believe it's called Morse code. What? I don't believe it! Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but when it comes to leaking telegrams from government departments, there could be nobody more perfectly placed than a highly skilled communications officer. Yeah, wow, that's are, a... Are you suggesting that the beans and the beans... <laughs> That's, I'm, I'm like baffled why they chose to do it in this order. Like I literally can't imagine this being the best way to do it from any angle you look at it. Contains stolen government secrets in Morse code. I feel like I could have just skipped the newspaper and gone immediately like, hey you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or it, it should have, oh! this should have been like a, what do you think it is? And then like, you know what would have been fitting for a final case is to have that initial like, it's broken, it's music, it's something that isn't music. And then each of them has a subset of two additional choices. And the it's not music would be like, it's something and then it's some kind of code. Because like, yeah. mm. obviously. This is high treason council, deserving of capital punishment. Uh, too much new vocabulary. Uh, what is this treason and what is capital punishment? The sorts of words I'd half expect you to know. <laughs> what? Sovereign government's confidential information, hostile nations would surely pay almost any price. Yes, and on that night two months ago, that was the very negotiation that was taking place inside the omnibus. But in the end, McGilded perished, and the all-important Dean lay unclaimed in the pawnbrokery. My word! In which case, whoever stole that information in the first place must surely have been beside himself with worry. Because if the disc, oh, I'm sorry. Because if the bean were to be discovered before it could make its way out of the country, it would re reveal an act of high treason punishable by death. So the culprit had no choice but to retrieve it, and in order to do that, he would have to gain entry to the pawn brokery illegally in the middle of the night, or, or buy the item. <laughs> because the article left behind by Mr. McGilded would incriminate him too much if it got into the wrong hands. Isn't that right, Mr. Graydon? You... You think I've been stealing government secrets? Preposterous! Absolutely preposterous! So, in response to the defense's accusation, you claim complete innocence, do you? Well, of course I do! I've had to stand here in silence while that pretentious foreign lawyer has been prattling away! Objection! Only I may be racist. Then by all means, counter the charges, sir. You'll, if you want to counter those charges, you might have to become a bean counter. Just make, just understand, Eggert, this won't be over easy. The prosecution <laughs> demands the witness testifies in response to the accusations brought by the defense. Delighted, I'm sure. The witness is reminded that the crime under scrutiny in this trial is the murder of the pawnbroker, Mr. Winderbeck. That being a most fl fl flagitious? Fl flagitious? I don't know. A, a, a big, big no-no for which the law of this land sanctions a capital punishment. But the heinous act of high treason is no less serious a crime. I urge you to bear that in mind as you testify, Mr. Graydon. So then. You may- Like Gregson. Oh, fuck yeah! <laughs> you gotta let us have a rabbit in pork here, governor. No, that's John Lennon. You gotta let us have a rabbit in pork here, governor. We got things to say. I, I, I beg your pardon, who do you think you are? My name's Nurse Skulkin. Occupation is professional buddy. <laughs> John Lennon. The name's Rico Skulkin, <laughs> but we ain't buddies enough to sell out our motherland. That's right, we're what they call... Spies! The Three Skulkin Brothers! Three brothers. <laughs> eh? Bad timing, fellas. Very bad timing. I love these two. <laughs> Alright, 
I think, is this new? I think this is new. Yes. Yeah. Yes. A mere communications officer couldn't possibly seal confidential government information. Besides, the sounds produced by that music box aren't even Morse code. I don't believe you, bro. It was some low-class brickmaker negotiating with McGilded anyway, was it not? I have no relation to that man. Look, all we done is break into the guard the other night like what he told us to do. If we known there was dodgy government secrets involved, we wouldn't have touched it. I oh mi my I misread God. that as that was dodgy government secrets. <laughs> I love that they're just like, yo, under the bus, this guy goes. Wow, they gotcha. Mr. and Mr. Skulkin. One Mr. will do, Governor. What's up? <laughs> Sorry. Do you take it, sir, uh, that you now admit to the crime that on the night in question you did indeed gain entry to the premises illegally, and moreover you did so as a party of three in collaboration with Mr. Graydon there? Hmm. We did, we go. Did. We did. We did. What the fuck are these two doing? I love <laughs> these guys. What say you to that, Mr. Graydon? Chaotic neutral. <laughs> I have no idea what these two ruffians are referring to. You little rotter, getting us mixed up in all this monkey business. You never said nothing about our government secrets. It was supposed to be a straight up job. And what about the geese who shop it was, eh? Poor old bloke didn't have to die, did he? <clears throat> nice to know who your friends are. <laughs> Whatever these men say, I deny their accusations. He's innocent! Wait, no! <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Well, I certainly wasn't expecting this little music bean to become so significant in the proceedings. However, as it has, I will admit to the court record. I will admit it to the court record as evidence. All right, let me. Kind of beans. Jesus fuck! All right, let's let's take a look at that thing. God. Oh, not history. Um. <laughs> fucking. See how the full Magilda disc sits in the music box the man Oh, are we gonna have to take that off? Couldn't mm -hmm. be a more perfect fit. So there's no question then. The disc was designed to be played in this music box. Yet despite that, the sounds it produces are neither musical nor do they appear to have any meaning. It just doesn't make any sense. I wonder if perhaps there's more to this music box than meets the eye. Maybe we haven't discovered all its secrets yet. It's oh, such... is it one of those weird things where like... It's like poke through paper or something. Oh, Nani! Is it a wine key? Oh. What is it, Rino? I've just noticed something about this music box. Looks like the bottom of it opens as well. You're right! Well, come on then. What are you waiting for? Let's open it! All right then, here goes. Ah, oh, you need to play both of them at once. <gasps> Look at that! There's another movement on the other side. So, does that mean... You can set another disc to play on the back side. Uh, yes, I think so. And it looks like the two movements are linked together. They're linked. So, if you had two discs, they would both play back at the same time. Okay. Who would have thought there'd be a second movement on the underside of the box? Then this movement is like the other one. The cone's teeth are all the same length. So, this movement also only produces a single tone, like the other one? Yes, it must do. Except that the length of the teeth of the two cones isn't the same. So the single tone produced by this movement will be different than the single tone we've already heard. What? But basically, each movement can only produce a single note. But the notes they produce are different. The music box that can only play two tones. Oh, it's not Morse code, it's binary. Oh. Oh. <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna have to uh, we're gonna have to press this and then present. They're not. To anyone with a brain, that would be blatantly apparent on listening to that music box, uh, that can of beans for even a few seconds. Of course, of course. 
Surely it can't be that my learned friend is unfamiliar with Morse code. What? Motherfucker, it's not like taught in school casually. Wait, is it Morse code binary? Uh, yeah, I guess so. It's, it, I think it has a different setup though. It's a binary principle. <laughs> Ouch, looks genuinely shocked at my ignorance. I would be more than happy to demonstrate the basics for you, sir. It, uh, it is Morse code. One side plays the long tones, the other plays the short tones. I mean, it sounded... Alright, whatever. Yep. I guess it was just dots and none of the dashes. I thought the... Alright, I thought something different. It doesn't matter. Uh, a lesson here in court. Morse code is a continuous series of two distinct tones. Tones, you say? Yes. A short dot and a long dash. By combining those in different ways, you construct letters. I see. For example, this is A, and this is B. But when you listen to the sound produced by this music box, you only hear one tone, don't you? But, but it sounds so similar. The rhythm of it is the same and everything. But there's a discernible meaning to this apparently random sequence of sounds. But there's oh, no... no. <laughs> I'm I... glad you agree with me. Oh. Ah, so your assertion is fundamentally flawed. This is not Morse code. Yeah, I guess when I listened to it initially, I thought that the, like... Pauses the, were the dashes. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of yeah. what I thought it was doing. Because they've got a slight reverb on them, so they hang a little longer if there's not an immediate bim, bim, bim in a row. Yeah. Uh, so I thought those were dashes. No! <laughs> really? You shouldn't be so surprised. What did I tell you? That beam box is nothing but a worthless piece of scrap. Perhaps you might consider studying your subject matter before casting aspersions in future. Oh, stop. Nothing to say but stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so frustrating, isn't it? Iris? I mean, if the government secrets were somehow being leaked using the music box... The what? The, the beam box! <laughs> so many other things would sort into place so nicely. Suddenly, trap door opens, Iris disappears. <laughs> There's still every possibility that this music box was instrumental in the leaking of government secrets. And that's the belief of the defense, at least. Objection. Does it please you in some way, my Nipponese friend, to repeat the same line of argument ad infinitum? Yes, every time I repeat it, that's a dot. And when I scream, that's a dash. It's already been established that to be Morse code, two tones are required, dots and dashes. Yes, I'm well aware of that. Then what? Oh, hurry it up there, boys. We haven't got all night. Go! Hurry the fuck up! Go! <laughs> I mean... Thank you! Got it! Got it! Oh. Oh, do I have to press it again? Wow. Fuck you! <laughs> fuck off. It's been so good about double, um, pieces of evidence. After opening, you need to play the disc. I don't know how to do that. No, no, they're fucking around. It's a, it's a, they're making a joke in chat. I can't tell. Ah, uh, all right. Let's do it again. No, you didn't open it. God. They did that with the fucking, the stupid wife photo. So goddamn dumb. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's pretty dumb. So what did you guys think about the game last night? Uh, you gonna leave me out to dry? Really? I, I don't, what game? I literally, you know? I didn't realize you were doing a bit and being like, look how much time <laughs> we got to kill. And I was like, was there a stream last night? <laughs> Objection. Objection. Someone in chat responds, love the Mets. <laughs> Thank love you. The Mets. Thank you. Someone got my joke. Ugh. So okay. fucking stupid. Careful, careful. How dare you make me reread this? Yeah, that's that's pretty fucking silly. Nope, you missed. 
Got it. Wow! Yeah, give me my health <laughs> back. What is the little thing? Another movement on the underside of the music box. The what? What? The, the music bean. It appears, my lord, that the two movements are linked together. In other words, you can put two beans in this bean can, and the sounds of both will play back at the same time. Wow! As the court has heard, Morse code comprises of two beans, a short bean and a long bean. <laughs> With a second bean in place, this can of beans could be used to generate Morse beans and convene a bean. <laughs> Where did Gina Bean a go? This is beyond a joke. I'm sorry. This poor excuse for a lawyer has absolutely no evidence Whatever. to support his claims. <laughs> yeah, <just> yeah. The, <laughs> who cares? Okay. That was Mr. Mason, the brick maker. Exactly. I had nothing whatsoever to do with that. Oh, he was your father, though, wasn't he? Uh, Though it has holes, like the disc, I must admit the argument presented by the defense has much promise. I believe the cross-examination should continue. The link between Graydon and the victim of the omnibus case must be there somewhere, but I haven't found it yet. Oh dear, it looks like you need to give your argument more strength, you know? Uh, strengthen it up! Uh, dude, you will reiterate your argument. Uh, if I must. Uh... I assume we're gonna have to use we're gonna okay because in the blood sample packet we've got the blood of this guy which mm -hmm. i guess i don't know how this would you know represent parenthood but um that's that's the easiest uh i have no relation to the man uh, let's press that so, two months ago in that omnibus, McGill did killed the brickmaker who stole the disc. Mr. Mason was a single man with almost nothing to his name. It seems he lived in an artisan quarter. Ah, uh, some years ago. The people there remember little about him. That doesn't make much sense, though, does it? How would a humble brickmaker come to acquire secret government information? How indeed? There must have been somebody else involved behind the scenes of all of this. The secret main antagonist, Beppo. Beppo. Somebody who acquired the, the bean and gave it to Mr. Mason in order to take it to the meeting with Mr. McGilded and negotiate a deal. Dear me. Yes, it was you, me, you. You may have it in for me, sir, but I assure you, I have far more class than that. <laughs> they really are just <laughs> Animal Crossing <laughs> characters. They just look at him as he walks by. Or is that is that a suspicious fishy for them or? I don't no, think so. No, no, they're always looking at him. Yeah, an old bootmaker <clears throat> from an artisan quarter and his well-to-do communications officer. If only I could find some evidence to link them together. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. How can I go about that line of questioning? Well, let's just talk to these two. They're always great. <laughs> like Mr. Graydon told you to, you mean? That's it, yeah. Who else, huh? Silly me, though. Thought we was just popping over for a matter after all them years. But the... Oh. Uh, thought he was just popping over for a matter after all them years. But the rotter had a jolly job, a jolly job, a jolly job, Never went down to Georgia. Had himself a time. <laughs> Going down to South Park, gonna have myself a time. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Let me stop you right there, Mr. Sulkin. After all them years, you say. Do you mean to tell me that Mr. Graydon is an acquaintance of yours? We're the sociable kind of buddies, you know. Uh, sure, <laughs> let's say Graydon's an... Uh, sure, let's say Graydon's an old chine. <laughs> <laughs> These two are like some of my favorite witnesses ever. I really like them. Excuse me. I I'll also say our the voices really make them way more. Really fun. help. But they're pretty fun on their own. Something wrong, Mr. Skulkin. Oi! Oh. No, the other Mr. Skulkin. What? Who oh, me? When your brother was testifying just now, he said something that seemed to cause you to react. 
Oh, I was just remembering the old days, that's all. We used to have right or left together way back when. Together with Mr. Graydon, you mean? Yeah, with us. I mean, you look at him now and that's fancy whiskey. And food if you wouldn't have an eBay. <laughs> what the fuck am I saying? <laughs> but when we was you, where did we get these? <laughs> he was from the poor pot of town just like us. Did you know his father? Is that so? But he was always a leery one. And he had the brains, and he had the savvy. Always coming up with smart ideas like what would never have gone through our heads. God blimey, ain't that the truth? Remember the Milverton and Skulkin's milk run? That was a corker, eh? Uh. Save it until after the court or the trial. Your reminiscing has no place in this courtroom. And neither does your fruit. Oi, oh, the geezer asked us a question, didn't he? And we was answering. Oh, yep. Yeah, we ain't done nothing. Nevertheless, the court is not prepared to accompany you on your trip down memory lane. And if you have fruit, you must share it. Please, we all have scurvy. It's the 1800s. <laughs> Council, can we turn our attention back to the testimony, please? I don't know. Uh, I want yeah, to yeah, add to the testimony. My lord. Oh, yes, Count. The brother's last sentimental statement could hold vital information relating to this case. Very well, Council. I will permit the brothers to supplement their testimony with that detail. Briefly, I hasten to add... Say no more! Say no more! A skulking's skulking never, never skulking! skulking. Milverton and Skullsuit. Call oh, them. Them were the days. Let's press on that. Oh, uh, uh, maybe this is correct. Accor according to Brevin, uh, these names are apple and pear. Ringo in yeah. Japanese is for, oh, yeah, that's fun. And yeah. Nachi is pear. Yeah. That's cute. Yeah. Mm. I'm sure I'm going to regret asking, but what exactly was that? Some kind of business? Just a little scheme we are going back when we was youngsters. A bit of fun, really. Delivering fresh milk to the locals, that's what it was all about. That sounds alarmingly legitimate. There must be a catch. <laughs> I suppose since we're here, I should ask them to elaborate, but on what? Uh, the business name. Yeah, because, yeah, it was another name in there. So, Milverton, who the fuck? So this business was just a bit of fun, you say? And it was just yourselves and Mr. Graydon involved? Yeah, that's it. Milverton and Skulkin's Milk Run, was it? Yeah, that's it. And where did the Milverton part come from? Oh, right. I thought a clever dog like you would have worked it out. Oh. Enough of this. Objection. How much longer are we... Objection. Ah. Shut up. Nice try. <laughs> Let me guess. You don't accept anything these two witnesses are saying. <clears throat> Tell me. Why is it that it was only at the mention of the name Milverton that you decided to interject? Because I... Well... It weren't the happiest of homes that one came from. Yeah, his old man was struggling for money so much, his wife walked out on him. She took the name Graydon then, see? But I shall always be I Milverton always to be us. Milverton to us. Sorry, my bad. Milverton. That's all right. So that used to be your surname, did it? Of course not. This is all bunkum. I've been a Graydon since I was born. Bunkum is an aggressively Will character name. It is. Yeah. Do you really think you can rely on the testimony of these two thieves, hmm? You're a communications officer attached to the civil service. As such, your personal details will have been thoroughly checked at the time of your appointment. It would be a very simple matter indeed to subpoena those records, Mr. Graydon. <laughs> well... He got you there, bitch! It would appear that Mr. and Mr. Skulkin's testimony has been reliable. For once, you were born Ashley Milverton, then. Is that correct? Very well, yes. So Ashley Graydon was once Ashley Milverton. That information could change things, and it could be important. Oh, my good gravy! Twice, twice fired Milverton! All of a sudden, we seem to be up to our necks in a serious mayor. Oh, this is, we don't need to read this. 
Ừ. Ừ. Okay. Now how do I Can I No, I can't present people. Uh Okay. So Maybe do we have the, the photograph of No, that's from the other uh I mean it would be the case. it would be the blood sample, right? Right, found hey. now Mason because his name is Milverton, but I can't. How do we press? I mean, yeah, maybe I do just press. Hold it. Hold it. Let me just check beans. Oh, indeed. Okay. Suzato's notes. Okay. No, that makes, that makes dun, sense. Dun, 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 dun. Some games you can present people, so it's... Okay. Yep. There we go, Mason Milverton. Yep, Mason, Mason Milverton. Milverton yep. Wow, I totally forgot about that. I actually did remember that was his name. I just didn't know how to do it. Mr. Ashley Milverton. Tell me, why did you try to hide your former name from the court? Because I haven't gone by that name for years. It means nothing to me. Don't no. dead name me in court. No, I don't think that's the real reason at all. The truth is, you had a reason to hide that name. Oh! Oh, oh my shoulder. That's your tummy, sir. Explain oh. yourself, please, counsel. Milverton is another home's name. Oh, is it? I have here the notes from the omnibus case, my lord. And as we all know, the victim, the man who we now understand to have been negotiating with McGilded. Yes, Mr. Mason, the brickmaker. That's right. Only Mason wasn't his surname at all. It was his given name. His full name was Mason Milverton. M Milverton? Do you, do you mean to say she's alive? Mr. No, he's dead. Ash <laughs> Milverton. <laughs> Is it not the case that the brickmaker, Mr. Mason Milverton, was your father? Uh, I I don't. As I believe I mentioned earlier, your family history will have been thoroughly checked when you join the civil service, and it really would take no time at all for the court to subpoena those records. The truth uh, is, you have been illegally acquiring highly confidential government information and selling it to McGilded in collaboration with your father. Oh! Uh, Gene is related to them too, though. I don't think so. The new facts and evidence unveiled by the cross-examination of this witness all come together to reveal the truth. The, the truth, you say? No, I said the truth. My apologies. The, 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 collaborated with your father, Mr. Mason, in illegal bean dealings with Magnus McGilded. By dint of this music bean, you mean, counsel? Yes. Stealing information being sent in secret government communications and selling it on to McGilded, Mr. Graydon concocted this elaborate scheme of using two music bean discs, oh, sorry, two music can beans to encode the information, as presumably a safety measure against the information falling into the wrong hands. And a very effective one. I shouldn't have given the scheme any credence whatsoever. But the deal with McGilded went sour, and the brickmaker met his end. Yes, but before he was arrested, McGilded managed to temporarily dispose of the stolen bean at the pawnbroker. Then, having learned of the situation, you appeared at Winterbanks two days ago. How did you learn about this, by the way? In an attempt to recover the two articles McGilded had placed in pawn there. But that attempt failed. One of the beans was seized by the police, and the other you never found. So that same night, you enlisted the help of the Skulkin brothers and broke into the pawnbrokery. This time, determined to recover the second bean. Oh, hi, I'm young. <laughs> It's so exciting, sorry. <laughs> are, are you suggesting that the second disc was inside the music bean? The second what? The second bean? Oi. Oh. We, we never knew nothing about that. On the night that Mr. Winterbank was killed, the intruder to the pawnbrokery touched one item and one item alone. The can of beans. 
has rather ingeniously demonstrated using the two prints from the security camera indeed. So, the question that naturally begs answering is this. Why was only that one article disturbed? The answer is obvious, because it contained the second disc, which the intruder was desperate to- Oh, sorry, the second bean, which the intruder was desperate to re retrieve, since if it were to fall in the hands of the police, it would be proof of high treason. Well, Mr. Graydon, do you deny that all- Whoop! Do you deny that all of this actually began on that fateful night two months ago? I... I... I refuse to accept any of this nonsense! Sir, there appears to be blood sleeping through the sleeve of your jacket. What?! Ah. Two nights ago, we know that three shots were fired at the scene of the crime in Winderbank's pawnbrokery. One <coughs> took the life of the pawnbroker himself, one struck the pouch around Mr. Sholmes's waist. And the final bullet. I ate. <laughs> struck the calendar on the wall of the shop, having first pierced the arms of one of the intruders. Mr. Graydon, that wound on your arm that you seem to be trying to hide. It's a bullet wound, isn't it? <clears throat> He's got you now, me old China. Time to call it quits and croak, I reckon. <laughs> Don't acknowledge my presence there under any circumstances whatsoever. Those were my terms, remember? And I paid you handsomely to comply. Clearly I was a fool to think I could trust some common backslum thieves. <laughs> Fine, I admit it. I was there at Winderbanks that night. I paid this pair ten guineas to accompany me. And as you've noticed, I sustained an injury in the course of my adventures. But that is all! I admit to nothing more! Stealing government secrets? Negotiating with Mr. McGilded? <laughs> as God is my witness, I'm sure I recall nothing of the sort! He's not going down without a fight. Not until I can show hard evidence, I suppose. I don't know, man. I think you could pretty easily call the jury and get a guilty verdict on him right now. <laughs> Nevertheless, the defense has now established a crucial fact. Which is? Well, we know that one bullet was fired from each of the two firearms that we have in evidence. The bullet from the Skulkin Brothers gun hit the pouch around Mr. Sholmes' waist. And the bullet from Mr. Winderbank's gun clearly must have been the one that caught Mr. Graydon on the arm. Indeed it must. We can rule out the possibility that the man shot himself. And that leads us to only one conclusion. Mr. Winterbank was shot by a third gun, which can only have been fired by the third oh. intruder. Oh, goodbye. Hold on, we'll drop the No? Nope? Uh-oh. Whoops. Uh-oh. <sighs> That's right, Mr. Graydon. Grr! The only person who could have possibly shot Mr. Winterbank that night is you! Verizon Wireless Bars. Hello? Hi, sorry about that. <laughs> you little up! Oh, sorry. Smart. You made a grave mistake when you summoned me here! What? What's that supposed to mean? Yes, as you rightly say, I was there at the pawnbroker. I did my best to hide the fact, naturally. I had no intention of ruining the distinguished career I'd built for myself at the communication station. But did the thought never cross your mind? Did you never consider the possibility? What, what do you mean? What thought? What possibility? The possibility that if I was there at the scene, I may have witnessed it's the crucial moment. You see, this makes me a key witness in this case, and I have my hands firmly around the neck of your client. B uh, doubt. <laughs> what? Uh, are you suggesting? I saw it all. 
I saw the very moment that pickpocket girl pointed the gun at the at poor defenseless pawnbroker and shot him. I would love it if Naruto no. just like looked at the jury and was like, He's lying, obviously. Guilty? 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 Right, guilty, guilty. Well, I mean, we want, we want not guilty on this case and then guilty for his trial. You what? Order! 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 Well, it would seem we are finally entering the last act of this theatrical <laughs> trial! It seems the final act is finally final! It's upon us! Mr. Graydon. Yes? I trust you are fully aware of the implications here. If it is shown that your claim is false, you will have incriminated yourself as the killer. Oh, I'm taking the ship down with me, bitch. Yeah, I mean, in <laughs> fairness, we, we all agree he's the killer, right? Oh, I understand fully. Oh, sorry. Oh, no one cares what old Judgy has to say. <laughs> now I must ask you give your formal testimony once more. You will explain to the court precisely what you saw at the moment the defendant allegedly shot the victim. <laughs> Nothing would give me greater pleasure. He's got a stiff ears. Full on, <laughs> full on visible bell end. <laughs> he, he was always quite weird about that, even when he was a young and. He's right sunny side up, if you hear. <laughs> While these ruffians were jostling with the broker, I was still near the entrance to the shop. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> when Winterbank threw Natch over the counter, I felt a sharp pain in my arm. I pursued the man, but he shot himself in the storeroom. I could see him through the peephole in the door, though. There we go. The accused, in a black coat, shot the man in the back as he was trying to flee to safety. I saw the blood splatter all over the wretched girl. That's just wrong. Then she tossed the gun out of the peephole, so I picked it up and made my escape. Yeah, there's- That is all entirely wrong! Uh, are you, uh, yeah, guilty? You claim, sir, under oath, to have clearly seen the defendant pulling the trigger. I actually don't think it's the blood thing, I think it's the, the peephole. Order! 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 It wasn't my intention to testify in this way. Because I didn't think I'd have to lie. <laughs> but neither is it my intention to be found guilty of a murder I didn't commit. Oh, <laughs> so you see, my hand has been forced. I tell the truth now is an act of self-preservation. What? The truth? Until now, the prosecution was completely unaware of these details. It's because he's making it up, man. Yes, well, um, sorry about that. Having shot me in the arm, the pawnbroker was then shot in the back by the accused. Why would she do that? And as I said, she was showered in his blood. You say the blood splattered over the accused's coat. Are you sure on that I point? love how everyone's just clowning on him now. Oh yes, quite sure. <laughs> like, all... Here's your reward for dealing with this fucking numpty. <laughs> yeah, all over the black overcoat that pickpocket girl was wearing at the time. Really? She's... If a coat could somehow be shown to harbor vestiges of blood, that would be conclusive evidence here. Oops. I mean, it does Jesus have blood Christ. on it, if you guys remember. Yeah, it does. Any more bean juice? Such an investigation is entirely possible, my lord. You see, Sherlock Holmes invented a fascinating machine that now that it could help me is perfectly credible. What? <laughs> <laughs> Only very recently, a German scientist had developed a technique to identify human blood. So here's to true science. Not some amateurish detective's dubious foray into the world of chemistry. There's nothing dubious about Hurley's work. His ideas are all sound. Ideas are no use to us here. In science as in law, theories must be proven before they stand. Anyway, allow me to do some bloodletting. I <laughs> do. In Germany, the technique has already been employed in the courtroom as the basis of evidence. 
Scotland Yard has a small quantity of the chemical reagent used, with your lordship's permission. What? He's... We could shatter all vestiges of doubt within minutes. I'm sorry, is he seriously going full vampire right now? <laughs> this doesn't look good, we know. Why not? Well, we know, don't we? There's blood all over the front of Ginny's coat. If they test it with their machine or whatever. Oh, help, you're right. I was forgetting what happened yesterday. Got blood on me, Nips, I do! <laughs> <laughs> but that's Purple Man's blood. But that's yeah. not Mr. Winderbank's blood. That stain is from two months ago. That's Mr. Mason's blood from when he was stabbed by McGilded, who was wearing the coat at the time. I need my dad's dead dead man coat. My my lord, the defense objects to the test proposed by the prosecution. Overruled! I want to see some scary vampire science. Show me. With pleasure, my lord. Okay, wait. I'll bring it back a bit. All right, calm down. No, 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 no. Calm down. There is okay. a um. Okay. A scientifically proven test in Germany, my lord. If a member of the von Zeke's family does a little licky licky on a surface, he can tell if there is blood. Sounds good to me! <laughs> van Zeke's don't, van Zeke's don't suck. They scratch, then lick. <laughs> they scrape and lick. <laughs> Once they find blood on the overcoat, Gina, Bina will be... Bina will be... <laughs> My lord! Yeah, cross-examination! Fuck! If this cross-examination doesn't go well, if I don't manage to uncover <laughs> This some... comment in shirt, he had the scratchy cat tongue! <laughs> Alright, so I think we gotta, we gotta go for the, the keyhole. Or the, you know... Okay. They may This is insane. She tossed the gun out of the people. What are you talking about? Yeah, no. Did did I hear you correctly? She threw the gun out of the room? It was literally found in her hand. What are you talking yeah. about? That's right. After the broker fell to the floor, she started walking over. Uh, oh, over where exactly? in the direction of the storeroom door to where I was watching. Of course, I quickly retreated, and then the girl dropped the gun through the peephole onto the floor on my side of the door. But why? <laughs> yeah, I couldn't tell you. Perhaps she was hoping to distance herself from the murder weapon. Without thinking, I went and picked it up. I suppose I was worried about just leaving it there in case any more tragedies took place. Oh, you dumb bitch. Not a fucking brain cell in that head of yours, huh? Oh, all right. He's saying that she had a third gun, even though she was found with a different gun. This is the worst. This is like three different contradictions, and I don't even know which way to go. <laughs> <laughs> That's so the gameplay. So it was you, in fact, who took the third gun from the scene of the crime? No, I'm lying. Yes, it was yours truly. <laughs> ha! I left the clear up to my lackeys and left. Clear up? We made a bit of a mess around the counter, so Mr. Whistling Fleet here told us to tidy up. He thinks he's our blooming mum sometimes. <coughs> well, I was paying you enough, my god. Mm -hmm. uh. Tell me, Mr. Graydon, when you left the pawnbrokery with that, <coughs> that night, was it by any chance with the second bean in your jacket pocket? You're like a bull at a fight, aren't you? What is going on? Excuse me. What are you doing? G -g -g Gentlemen! <laughs> he took one of my chips! <laughs> <sighs> Something wrong, sunshine. That should be my line! You you realize <laughs> Fuck stop. <laughs> You realize you were just violently shaking Mr. Skullkin? Blimey, this day's a bit of a hooligan, ain't he? What was going on just now? You saw me, got me whistle! <coughs> <coughs> oh, 
<laughs> um, uh, well, the blazes, he said. Didn't you mention the third gun when we got you down at the station? <laughs> and why didn't you? John Lennon. Because we didn't know nothing about it. Well, that flaming peephole in the door. Oh, my God. He's just um, destroying him. I'm sorry about that. I could be prone to lose it in my rag sometimes. Not hurt, are you? Caught blowing me, see the way he's looking at me. I'm telling you, this D gives me the willies. <laughs> <laughs> that was strange. Inspector doesn't normally get quite as worked up as that. He wouldn't normally grab someone. No, that wasn't like Gregsy at all. He's been possessed. We need to exercise him. He's normally all sweetness and light, no matter what I say to him. Yes, well, I think you might be a special case, Iris. Well, anyway, that was definitely out of character, Gregsy! Huh? What's your feeling, Runa? As much as I hate to admit it, I don't see any obvious holes in his... <laughs> I, I think that's the localizers trying to do the hint about the peephole, but still. Do you have to find a way to break this? I had one eye closed, I couldn't read it properly. It's strange. It's strange, it's so shoot. It didn't shoot the leg. Alright. Oh, 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 oh. <coughs> Have a good bath, man. Get that get that squirrel out of your lungs. Yeah. I God. Okay. Seriously, oh, the people? You mean you chased after him? I don't recall the reason why, but I ran after him to the back of the shop. And what about this peephole in the door you mentioned? Well, unsurprisingly, the storeroom door is a solid job made of stout wood. We didn't ask you, Gregsy! But there's a small opening in about a head height that lets you. Why is the cursor moving so much? Because I'm. Jello I'm fucking like, around. <laughs> Sorry, it's very distracting. That lets you see what's what in there from the outside. You stop that. It! <laughs> Grab, snatch it, while you now. <laughs> John Lennon! Actually, I should know that, shouldn't I? I looked through it myself that night. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> And what about you burgling brothers? Did you see what went on through this peephole as well? Not likely, Gov! You didn't see nothing in the saw, Gov! I doubt these two buffoons were even aware of the peephole's existence. Since I made it. So the Skulkin brothers were there, but they didn't see the killing of Mr. Winterbank take place. Inside the storeroom, I could see the broker and that young girl standing there. The defendant! Oh, sorry. Yes. Uh, the girl raised her gun and pointed it straight at the man. A and then, what did you see next? Yeah, I don't, I don't know where to attack this because it's like so, it's so dumb. Many. This is, this is like the problem I had in the investigations games, where like every piece of testimony was like literally all bullshit. <laughs> Dude. Yeah, there, there. Someone brings it up. The peephole. There's a. There's the two photos. So where there's one with the people. Yeah, I. I'm like hesitant to present that because one photo does have the people. So like there. It, uh, I. I don't know what else I could do though. So all right. Peephole. Yeah, because because you could present the one where it doesn't have the peephole, right? I guess. This is a press everything, by the way. Okay, thank you. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, just let me know, because... Yeah, let's just keep pressing them. Okay. Hold it! <laughs> just press everything, and uh, in this case, it's just like, are you really saying all of this? All of this? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Winterbank emerged from the storeroom, I believe. Ringo and Nash were scouring the counter when he suddenly appeared and flew at them. He already had the revolver in his hand. Fortunately, I wasn't too close. I've never been so scared in all my life. Yeah, we were you regular mild-mannered burglars, that's all. We don't like violence. Says the pair who carry a gun. What do you mean when you say you were near the entrance to the shop? I was in the doorway, running my eyes over the shelves of forfeited items. Looking for the can of beans, of course. 
the broker went for Nash in the first place. I don't understand why you did this, man. You could have just bought the fucking thing the next day. Then Ringo joined in, making it two against one. So I assumed they could handle the situation. But I was wrong. I was trying to help me little bro, but the old geezer chucked me over the blooming counter. So I pulled me gun on the old fella, and that soon made him scarper. The pair of you sitting upon the poor defenseless pawnbroker together, shame on you! Sorry, Gov. Sorry. Oh, my arm! Oh, hi, Caleb. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, we didn't do this one yet. Caleb, you can pop in here if you want to hang out. We're just Is in Caleb gel in things. This chat? Caleb's in here, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Let me check. Mm. Oh, maybe he's not. No, he's in he's here. Not. He's in here. Caleb and Vio. All right. OMG, OMG. <laughs> you mean that's the moment you were shot? Yes, though I didn't immediately realize what had happened, of course. Things crashed to the floor from the counter as the three men were brawling. It was at exactly that moment that it happened, so I didn't hear the gunshot. <laughs> oh my god, oh my god. I'm Caleb. You are, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> and the bullet went on uh, to strike the calendar wall behind you. So it would appear. When I looked at my arm, I saw it was bleeding badly, so I wrapped my handkerchief around it. Seeing as I couldn't explain what had happened to a doctor, I had no choice but to wait for it to heal. <laughs> Can you prove that you're Caleb? <laughs> I didn't imagine it would still be bleeding two days later. Yeah, it's a bullet wound. Did Mr. Windebank intend to shoot you, do you think? Well, now, I don't imagine he even noticed I was there, to be honest. Perhaps the gun went off accidentally. Anyway, it didn't quite strike home. When I pulled my gun on him, he tried to shove me out the way. John Lennon, and then he scarped through that door out back. <laughs> At which point, what did you do? Caleb Yenin. <laughs> okay, we got that one. Didn't do this. Yes, when the crime was discovered, the defendant was found with a gun in her hand. But that was with, uh, but that was Mr. Windebank's gun, from which only a single bullet had been fired. As we've already established, Mr. Graydon, that bullet was fired at you. Ah, but no. It wasn't the broker's gun that the pickpocket girl had when I saw her. Yes, the bullet from Windebank's gun grazed my arm, and yes, the Skulkin's gun grounded the detective. But this was another gun entirely. A third gun. So wait, I had a question. Yeah? Why is he like that? I don't know. <laughs> like, normally there's a bit of a theme going on with characters, but he's just fucking weird. Yeah. The broker's gun was not the murder weapon, so clearly there had to be a third firearm involved. In other words, the accused must have had her own gun with her at the time. Objection. No. But no other gun was found at the scene. <laughs> Calm yourself, Council. Sorry. You must consider the events in order. Yeah, you too, bitch. At first, I saw the broker and the girl glaring at each other, and then, all of a sudden, the broker turned to run. And it was at that moment that the little gutter rat shot him in the back. A chilling image, I must say. Fucking lies, though. Okay, and I think this is the last one I need to press. All, all over her. Yes, through the peephole, I saw it clearly. Of course. I, this, mm. I guess that does make sense in chat. People were pointing out that the Skulkins are like that too. So he, yeah, they probably did that kind of shit when they were kids and all grew up into different versions of it. Yeah. Of course, the stains are invisible now. What with the coat being such a dark color. But I assure you, that garment is sullied with the victim's blood. Well, it is sullied with blood, that's for sure. To the science! Go get it! No, that's right. It's, it's Mr. Mason Milverton's blood from when Mr. Mc... God damn it. From when McGilded stabbed him two months ago. It's so annoying. If they'd only accept Hurley's chemical analysis, we could prove that. But they won't. So unfortunately, we can't use it as evidence to support our case. Mother. 
big bother. My lord! Requesting your lordship's permission to interrupt the cross-examination? Explain yourself, officer! This better be Strongheart coming in! I've finished the fun fiction and it's pretty good. <laughs> I have the results of the test that was ordered earlier, my lord. Ah, the blood <laughs> on the accused's co overcoat. His just big, long butterfly tongue extends from his mouth. Oh. They got him on a fucking chain and like, back, boy, back! And they pull it. <laughs> Thank you, officer, very well. The cross-examination is hereby temporarily ex uh, suspended. I presume we have no objection, counsel. Um, no, my lord. Well, there you have it. The report, please, Inspector. Yes, sir. Traces of human blood were found on the overcoat of the defendant, Miss Gina Lestrade. From the extent of the stains, it would appear that they were the result of spattering following a gunshot wound. End of report. Goodness me. Oh, well, that is inconsistent then, so. See? What did I do? Oh. Objection. No, the blood on that coat is not Mr. Winterbanks. What on earth makes you say that, Council? The coat originally belonged to Magnus McGilded. Just before his coat was deposited at Winterbanks, McGilded had fatally stabbed Mr. Mavis Milverton. So the blood on that overcoat is the blood of the brickmaker from the omnibus case. Objection. Well, the dead cannot speak. Isn't that right, my Nipponese friend? Sorry. Ab to Two months ago in this very courtroom. Oh, sorry, God damn it. Did you not argue fervently for McGilded's innocence? And yet now that the man is dead by mysterious means, you brand him as a murderer. Oh. Your conduct shatters any shred of respect you may have earned yourself in this country. Uh, but, but that was... I call it a valid disgrace. Treachery, that's what it is. Oh, oh no, I don't want to skip this guy. <laughs> How to determine whether the blood on that coat is two months old or not? Even a stereoscope couldn't help answer the, uh, the answer to that question to answer to it can't be done. <laughs> but, <laughs> but... What? Mr. Sholmes is a detective, not a chemist. Would you put such faith in a chemical formula devised by me, for example, when I'm a communications officer? Little mouse. Uh, I held out Piroski to starving boy, and he ran away crying. <laughs> <laughs> Me giving Urlach kids candy on Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Urlach Sholmes is barely more than a figment of the public's imagination. What? He's what? a man. What? Are you trying to adapt? He's lame. He care his name carries no weight in this courtroom. No weight at all. Sherlock Holmes was never even in this game. <laughs> He's just someone Iris has been imagining. How could you say that? Victory is sweet indeed. This proves that my testimony is the whole truth from start to finish. How do you arrive at such a conclusion, sir? As the witness said, the accused's coat was spattered with the blood of the victim. The only way Mr. Graydon could possibly have known that fact is if he saw it happen. In other words, his testimony is solid and the conclusion is singular. It was the accused who shot the victim in this case. That is the whole truth. Ah! Oh! This sucks! My lord! Been long battled this one, but this old war horse has something to say now, if you please. Mr. Foreman? As of this moment, sir, the squadron has reached its final decision. Ready, men? All for one now? Guilty. Sir. Guilty. 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 I love oh, that shit. mouse. It's a good mouse. Oh, the little mouse jumps when he hits the button. Oh! Shit. Well, time to kill a 17-year-old girl. It would appear the ladies and gentlemen of the jury have reached a unanimous verdict. Ah, beans. 
The defense has consistently failed to unpick this witness's testimony. Here's to any attempt you may make at unpicking the juror's decision being equally successful. Oh, I don't believe it. After I've come so far, I was still unraveling on me so fast. Unraveling? Brian David Gilbert, help me! <laughs> help me! Who is this? Sherlock Holmes, I'm pretty sure. How very distra- oh. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Naruhodo? It's him, it's him. <laughs> Officer, you've delivered the report now. That will be all, thank you. It occurs to me with some regularity, Mr. Naruhodo, that scientific truths are determined not by science, but by none other than the human mind. I, I know that voice. Am I going mad? Oh. Nope. <laughs> Mr. Sholmes! What is the meaning of this? Oh my god, it's Leggy! <laughs> oh my god, oh, get this freak out of here! Van Zeeks just like slams his leg on the table. Only one of us can do that. You're encroaching my territory. I, I'm what business so do you sorry, have? I'm sorry, but I misread what business in the sentence says, What bussy is this? <laughs> What busty do you have here, detective? The last I heard. You were recuperating in hospital. As well I would be, had I not been set upon an errand. What errand? Hey! It's only you! You're awake at last! Yes, good day, Iris. I appear to be rather late. My apologies. Now, my Are lord. Is me? Or is this the first time Sholmes and Venzix have even talked to each other? Mm -hmm. Yeah. In what? I have something of great importance I wish to give to the young lawyer over there. I need more, no more than five minutes. Would you be so kind as to spare us the time? This trial has taken many hours of the court's time, having spent so long already. Exactly! Having spent so long already, we don't want to go wasting any more precious time! As I was saying, having spent so long already, it would seem churlish to deny the defense a mere five minutes. Ah! Oh, he's just fucking around, I see. Very well then, counsel, you have five minutes! Ding! Time stop! Hello, Yay. I'm here now. My dear fellow, I apologize for my tardy arrival. Mr. Sholmes, are you all right now? Ha 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 All right, I'm all wrong! Sorry, I've only just managed to summon the strength to stand, man. I asked the judge for five minutes, but I fear even that may prove too much for me. Pray forgive me should I pass out. Forgive the discourtesy. Uh, let's make this discussion as short as possible. Hey, this place is full of idiots! No, no, can see no I clicked off of it to screen cap it and it just advanced anyway. No. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. None of them can see how I didn't get to finish that! Ah, well, that concoction of mine really was just a bit of sport to assist me in my investigations. Never took the trouble to refine it for appraisal by the scientific community. An oversight on my part. Right. Modesty? Surely not. But enough of that. I'm here to give you this, my dear fellow. Aw. Ooh, lunch! What's that? A lavender fur shiki wrapping. A leaving present from Miss Suzato. From Miss Suzato. If possible, matters to it to be settled without me giving you this. Those were her instructions when she asked me to do her this favor. I, I don't understand. Miss Suzato foresaw today's events, I believe. She knew that the culprit would attempt to escape justice by means both devious and underhand. And that you, Mr. Narahodo, fighting fairly as you are, won't want to do- oh. Fighting fairly as you are wont to do would find yourself in considerable peril. At that very moment of crisis, you were to be given this small parcel. Those were the dear lady's instructions. A leaving present from Suzato's son. Whatever could it be? There it is. Okay. Uh, what is this? I was wondering where this oh. went. Yeah. It's, it's the machine I made. Uh, you know, Suzato, you could have just left this with us. <laughs> Look, I use this. It's my latest invention. 
What is that? Well, I remember. It's the, it's the... Kitty cat box! What's Susie up to? Miss Suzato muttered the following words before she left. I'm a failure. I don't deserve to be a judicial assistant. What? Didn't she say something like that? Oh, uh, okay. I really, someone requests something. Do I have it yet? No, of course I don't. You really are the best judicial assistant in the world. Well, that's extremely flattering. But I'm sorry to say that I've been a complete failure. Whatever did she mean by that, Mr. Sholmes? That night, when you left Winderbanks in pursuit of the thieves, Miss Cesaro made use of this contraption for a certain purpose. Oh, that is your oh. answer, dear fellow. Not, not at all cryptic, then. Wait, Susato san used this cat flap to mat that night. But why? There we go. Okay. Your five minutes is over. What are you doing? <laughs> this thing when they is... say the top of it, they probably mean like top down. I have no idea what they... Fire! <laughs> oh, Jesus. this thing is a nightmare. Whew. Those vicious teeth look like they could rip through almost anything. They're good, aren't they? They're made of special alloy I've developed just for this job. But it rotates ten times per second so it can get through any kind of door in no time Jesus at all. Jesus Christ! And what are the two parts at the top there? Ah, those are for attaching hinges to the section of door that gets cut out. Right. Of course. Nothing can match this machine for power. It can make mince meat of even the toughest of doors. It sounds so charming and friendly when you say that's what it's for, but... Feels like the reality of the cat flapper mat is that it's a grim weapon of door destruction. Oh, the high's so adorable. There's nothing I wouldn't do for him, even developing deadly weapons. Very no, like the top of it. Like if you're holding it and looking down at it. Yeah, like that almost. Um, I don't think there's anything there. Uh, yeah. I don't know what they meant in chat. No, that was it. You got it. Okay. Huh. Yeah, ten times per second is insane. Christ. Jesus. We're out of time already? <laughs> Fuck! That's all the time we need. Look at all these gents. I'm grateful to you for affording us that brief recess, Mr. Reaper. I need no thanks, Detective. After all, the die is cast. Is it really? The jurors are unanimous in their leanings. No doubt my learned friend will consider a summation examination. But any attempt to alter the verdict now would be an utter fut would be utterly futile. I wonder. Mr. Narahodo. Yes. The rest is down to you, dear fellow. What is your plan? The rest is down to me. I need to be careful here. If I make a wrong move, the trial will end badly. My lord, the defense requests... I mean, we have to do a summation examination, right? Or... Time to think. Mm. I, I don't know. Uh, chat, just tell me. I don't know why. I have not picked up on the rhythm of this game's whenever it asks me shit like this. It's further cross. It's further cross. Okay, great. Why would he let me do this? Further cross examination. Objection. The jurors have spoken. Protocol dictate that you may not cross-examine a new witness now. Objection! I want to, though. The defense is not asking for the cross-examination of a new witness. Rather to... Oh... Eh, to continue with one of an existing witness. What? It will appear that a rather important detail has escaped your attention, Mr. Reaper. I guess this has happened a couple times.
It's weird that this would override a jury decision, though, right? So nobody can say anything, then? If Uno has to resume his cross-examination of Mr. Graydon... The court is obliged to allow it. That's... This is absurd! I'm with you, Van Zeeks. That's pretty dumb. You could easily just filibuster the jury. <laughs> I would remind those present that this is my courtroom! And I'll let it happen. I concur that the defense is entirely within its rights to request the continuation of the cross-examination. However, I will not permit the unremitting protraction of these proceedings. Therefore, I have decided to afford the defense one final testimony. Counsel, you must choose but one statement from the witness's testimony, and but one piece of evidence to present in support of your argument against it. A single chance to present evidence. If following that, the situation remains unchanged, I shall move to adjudication. Everyone in, everyone in chat. <laughs> <laughs> this really will be the final, final, final. <laughs> Is that clear, counsels? You will not present the witness any further. My lord. Yes, my lord. Hmm, a single statement and a single piece of evidence. Most generous. I could get that done in half of it. Well then, Mr. Narahodo, it's high time I fell in a dead faint. I leave this in your capable hands. Oh no! Harley! Mi Mr. Sholmes! I ain't gonna help him. Iris is just looking away. He'll be fine. He does that. Oh, that's just the opium. To stand so in insouciantly before the court in a state of such high fever, either the man is extraordinarily strength of mind or an extraordinary lack of feeling. I imagine he's feeling very little now. The detective is sleeping soundly in one of the antechambers. Strike a man while he's down, why don't you? Well then, Counsel, are you fully prepared? No. Yes. One statement, one piece of evidence. I won't let Mr. Sholmes down. Or Iris. Ow! And I won't Ooh. waste this final chance that Suzato-san has given me. Though really, again, I think it would have been much smarter to have not taken this piece of evidence, since I'm pretty sure this is one of the first things I pointed out in this case. <laughs> Yep. This is going to decide the entire outcome of this trial. Oop. Very well then. Under the terms I have outlined, you may resume the cross-examination. Okay. Interesting music. Uh... Let me see. All right, I mean, I feel, I could see him through a peephole in the door because Suzato made the peephole, which means that the peephole wasn't there yet. Yes, yeah. but is it that or is it this peephole that he's mentioning? If it's, if it's one or the other, then I'm gonna be mad because it shouldn't be, because it shouldn't matter. Either one would have the same contradiction. It's both, yeah. says Chad, yeah. Okay. okay. Good. Yeah, I wondered about that myself. It's weird because, like, it, it has been pretty consistently decent about that. But yeah, there's that's been a couple, the thing like, it's been really good about. All right. Uh, I will press this one. Mr. Graydon. I thought I was allowed to press one. No, my learned friend. Okay. Am I? Okay. Oh, yeah, you, you can only present no pressing. All right. You can't press. What do you what do you mean, man? They said one statement. Like obviously, I mean, these... obviously you present on one statement. That's how everything in the game works. Well, that, those are all statements. Stupid, stupid, bad. Objection. 
objection. What on earth is that eccentric contraption, Council? Oh, it's my cat flapper map, my lord. It makes a way for cats to get in and out of a room. It can cut through any door you can think of and make a new little door in the middle of it. Mm. That's right, my lord. It's a device for creating so-called cat flaps. Small do- okay. I'm sure we can all work that out for ourselves. A, a device we've literally never seen. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm sticking by my guns for this one, chat. But that cat lover's contrivance has no possible relevance to this case. Oh, really? Of course it doesn't. To start with, there was no cat flap in the pawnbroker's door. Got him. <laughs> wow, you dumb motherfucker. Hmm. Not being a keeper of cats myself, I'm afraid I failed to see what this has to do with the matter at hand. God, I'm stupid. Perhaps it would help if I described its function another way, then. This contraption is to be able to create a peephole in any door you can imagine in practically no time at all. I beg your pardon? A peephole, you say? Two nights ago, we arrived at the scene only minutes after the murder of Mr. Winterbank had taken place. That's right. According to the paperwork at the yard, it was you, your Japanese assistant, and Sholmes. Yes, the three of us were together, and it's recently come to my attention that my assistant made use of this device at the time. Your assistant did what?! There was a peephole in the storeroom door. I can attest to that. Because I looked through the peephole myself in order to see the inside of the locked room. This is ludicrous! What are you trying to say?! Of course there was a peephole in the door. I said as much in my testimony. How else could I have witnessed the crime for pity's sake? Yes. How could you? What? Thou so kindly say what you mean. All right, it's time. Time to strike one final bro. So I should press, right? What I mean is, my lord, my assistant made the peephole in the storeroom door. And until such time as she did, the door had no hole to look in on. What? No! Objection! Objection! This is a farce! Are you really suggesting that the people in the door was- Yes, it was created only after the incident had taken place, by my judicial assistant using this device. Your assistant tampered with the crime scene whilst being fully aware of the gravity of her actions? More like she was trying to break open a door to see what happened since it was locked. That is a most serious act of vandalism! No, it isn't. For which I humbly apologize, my lord. It was in the few minutes that I left the scene in order to pursue the Skulkin brothers and alert the police. Nevertheless, in the light of this new information, it becomes apparent that Mr. Grayson's testimony is riddled with holes, much like his arm. Ugh, just the one. Riddled with... Explain yourself, counsel. Wow, I can't do one and one makes two, huh? God, the majority of Mr. Graydon's testimony that appears to incriminate the defendant is based upon what he witnessed through the people in the storeroom door. Yes, that filthy girl shooting the man in the back. However, if at the time of the incident that people did not yet exist in the door, there is no possible way that you could have seen what you claim to have seen. In short, your entire testimony is a pack of lies. Ugh. Order! 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 Is there any credence to this revelation? Objection. None whatsoever, as my learned friend must surely realize. Looks at the watch on my wrist. <laughs> exactly! This is just some cheap trick designed to discredit me! You have done that yourself. I'm afraid not, sir. <laughs> Of course it is! Do you seriously expect people to believe that plaything can cut through a solid wood door? Oh yes, I designed it to be very powerful. I can cut through your face, even the toughest of doors. That's absurd! I don't even believe it for a second! <laughs> I had a feeling you'd say that. Die! What? Wacky! Hi! Come for dinner! What? <laughs> Hey, buddy. Well? Uh, you 
young lady. This is the old Bailey. Oh, what is that? You can't cat flap my doors. You should read this. It's a good line. <laughs> young lady, this is the old Bailey. One does not make cat flaps in the oak paddling of the old Bailey. I'm, I'm not done yet. Don't worry. This doesn't mean that the peephole in the storeroom door at Winded Banks was made by your machine. And there's no way you can prove that it was. No, but it's easy. What? The cat flaps in my cat flapper mat crates are all fixed size. And the dimensions of the people at Winterbank are the exact match. <laughs> Old Silky's lost for words. Excellent work, Iris. Thank you. And now it's my learned student friend's turn to be lost for words, I feel. Why? I believe your judicial assistant has already left the country for your Eastern Island home. Well, yes, that's true. Then you may have some difficulty in establishing all of the facts. For the sake of argument, let us assume the people has dimensions that are a perfect fit for this contraption. In that case, when was the peephole cut? The prosecution demands proof of your answer. We have a photo. What is the purpose of your line we of have inquiry? Photos. We have photos. Very simple. We have photos. We have photos. We have photos. People. We have photos. People. We have photos. As yeah. one people might say, easy. <laughs> easy. We have photos. We have photos. You have photos. We have photos. <laughs> we have photos. You have photos. He has photos. All right. After the event and not before. Is this the before photo? Yes, there it is. It, it, What are you? A print from the detective's infernal contraption. Sorry. All right. My judicial assistant, Miss Suzato Mikotoba, is an extremely intelligent and capable woman. Which is why I never had any cause to doubt that she would ha have considered this scenario and made sure I had the ne uh, necessary proof. And the necessary proof is this photographic print, Council? This print shows a scene of the tr uh, in the shop moments after the defendant entered the premises. Agreed. This one, am I liking this case? To be honest, I liked the first half a lot more. Uh, there aren't really any twists in the second half. And it also shows the accused mercilessly wielding a gun in the direction of the defenseless broker. B but more to the point. It pictures the storeroom door in the background. Let me see that print again. For a lot of us, the twist was that cat flap. Literally how, guys? They showed it off, like, nice. the minute yeah. before the crime happened. And then gave us this evidence, like, very early in the trial. And we walk over and it's got the exact same door. And Iris's seal on it. I don't know. It's also weird that it crops up here. Because we spoiled mm -hmm. it to you. You did not. <laughs> no, no, you did not. We no. called that shit. No, I'm, I'll pop in and say no. That was discussed no. very early. <laughs> this really is quite remarkable. The door to the storeroom. He's right. completely devoid of a people of any description. All right. Mr. Graydon. You couldn't possibly have witnessed the crime as you claim to have done. Because at the time it happened, there was no peephole in the door. Ugh. In other words, your test... Also, like, even if you didn't notice it at first, this whole case is about uh, seeing the differences between photographs. And the difference between the peephole being there and not being there is actually a lot easier to see without using the stereoscope than the, uh, the moved boxes. Or a catalog of lies. <laughs> Oh, ah! Ow, my arm. <laughs> Ow. Why are you pointing at me? Order! 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 I am satisfied that the defense has substantiated its claim beyond all reasonable doubt. He's dead. Oh, get up, man! The witness's testimony was entirely fallacious! Fuck. That's not the only thing we now know beyond all reasonable doubt. My learned friend's assistant's guilt can no longer 
Denied. The woman tampered with the crime scene. Oh, get off your high horse. Fuck off. But more importantly... Good lord, shut the fuck up! The defense may have established a reprehensible instance of perjury, but that is no proof that this man is the victim's killer. Why are you doing this, man? Yes, that's right. What? I was there at the scene, it's true. <laughs> and I was shot in the arm, it's true. But that's all. Yes, in fact, if you look at the circumstances, I am the victim here. Someone, um, someone shut up, boy. You said it was. Yeah, no, he did earlier. He was like, you know, if you fail to do the to give good testimony, you're the murderer. <laughs> what are you doing, Van Zeeks? Oh, please, no. I don't believe this. But they're right. As it stands now, I don't have any definitive uh, bro. I think. Is this like a consistent problem in all attorney games where like uh, the last case they just drag it? No, the actually, out? the last case in each game is usually the best one. Still, he can't blame his way out of it now. You know what they say. Something nobody's ever said before. There's no point in locking the cat's door. I didn't catch the end of it. Isn't that right, Rudo? As Hurley always says, another thing that nobody says. Oh, wait, he did say this. One lie begets another. No, wait, that, that might have been a line I wrote for him in one of my stories. <clears throat> well, no matter who said it first, you're right. Mr. Graydon, not only did you give false testimony to the court, but the lies you told make no sense. Make no sense? Can you, you prove that it doesn't make sense? <laughs> yeah, what the fuck is this horseshit? <laughs> What you said in your testimony reveals that you know something you shouldn't have known. In other words, there's a fundamental inconsistency in your statements. What? This is provocative talk, Council. I have a stiffy. <laughs> mm. Won't you enlighten the court? Explain this alleged inconsistency. Iris was right. One lie begets another. The inconsistency is revealed by the lies. Uh, yeah, is revealed by the lies in the witnesses' statements. They show that Mr. Grayson had the blood, because how the fuck would he have known that her coat was bloody without seeing her? The blood stains that were present on Miss Lestrade's coat. That's right. The victim's blood spla uh, spattered all over her when she shot him. But how could you have possibly known that? Obviously, because I saw her do it through the people in the. Hmm. The point is not that you lied in your testimony, Mr. Graydon. It's the nature of the lie you concocted that is so revealing. You're not making any sense. Then let me ask you a simple question. How is it, Mr. Graydon, that you knew of the existence of the peephole in the storeroom door? What? Well, obviously I... Ah! Oh! Ah! Oh! Hmm. Has the... Cat, got your tongue, witness? <laughs> we have fun here. Guilty. Anyway, guilty. This the man is going to die. The peephole in the door was made after the incident occurred, and once I returned to the shop having failed to catch the two burglars, Scotland Yard's investigators arrived immediately. Since that time, the police have been in Winderbanks constantly carrying out their investigation. Isn't that right, Inspector Gregson? Um, well... Yes, of course. Uh, the place is chock full of pawned articles, and my lads have a thorough examination them all. So I gave the order to have officers working around the clock in shifts, so we get through it all. And consequently, there's no way that you, Mr. Graydon, could have gained access to the shop. Therefore, you should have known nothing about the people in the storeroom door. So the fact that its existence forms the basis of your testimony is completely inexplicable. Objection. And yet, the fact remains that Mr. Graydon did maintain that he witnessed the crime take place with the people in the door. Ha, ha, okay, shut the fuck up, Benzix. Come on! Yeah. How on earth is that possible? 
Every time they say the word peephole, my brain auto plays this voice clip of Jacuzzi Splot from Bacchano go, uh, why are they shooting guns? They're not hunting. They're shooting at people. People. <laughs> <laughs> um, could I have a word, please, Lord Van Seeks? Speak, Inspector. It's just that I really ought to be getting back to the station now and put in my report. Uh, there's really nothing more I can add to this testimony, so if it's all the same to you, permission denied. Oh. It's not all the same to me, Inspector, not at all. You will remain exactly where you are until this trial concludes. Uh, of course, sir. Mr. Graydon. You shouldn't have known about the existence of that people! <laughs> Which can only mean that you must have been informed about it by somebody oh, else. Gregsy! Oh. It was me, John Lennon. Stop there, my learned friend. You realize I trust that the words you just uttered have extremely serious implications. Yes, but the defense believes that the details about this case that Mr. Gregson claims to have seen. I always say Grayson, <laughs> or something wrong. Graydon is odd to me. Must mm -hmm. have been revealed to him by a certain person before his testimony. And in fact, considering a particular clue we have, there's really only one person that could be. Yep. Who is the person in question, Council? It oh, Gregsy, way to let the us final down! Boss, Ringo Skulkin. It was probably Gregs, yeah. Male oh, yeah, it was Gregson. Yeah. I was just looking at, uh, what's his nuts? The truth is. It can only have been you, Inspector Gregson. I? Me? You had better have some proof to substantiate such a rash claim, my learned friend. I actually don't know what it is. Considering the fact that we have only been aware of Mr. Ashley Graydon's identity for the last few hours, we learnt of it only during the course of the trial today. Indeed. Preparations for his testimony were made with great urgency during our long, our hour-long recess. While the police executed this be ex execute ex execute Exe it's executed. What is that? Okay. Well, I thought it was exec. I, my brain was not working there. While the police executed the subpoena and brought the man here for the com from the communications station. Until that time, Mr. Graydon would have had no idea, no inkling that he would suddenly be required to appear in court. Are you suggesting that until such a time as he was summoned? Yes, my lord. Until then, it's reasonable to assume he knew nothing of the people! It was only once Mr. Graydon was in, in the stand that he realized his position, that he would have to defend himself against the accusation that he was the third intruder. You're suggesting to the court that it was while this trial was in progress that he received the information, so that he could commit perjury in order to save his skin? Exactly. And the only person with knowledge of the investigation that he had any contact with is you, Inspector Gregson. This, this is a blooming outrage. Why would I be giving away details of our investigation to this fellow, eh? Mm. I was summoned to his Lordship's chambers during the recess in any case. Had you forgotten that? Quite true. I had a number of questions regarding the events that transpired at the prone burglary. Which means... The first time these two laid eyes on one another was after proceedings resumed following the recess. Well, they were fucking whispering to each other yeah. on the stand, bro. Since then, they've been in full view in the stand, where such illicit discussions Are you just couldn't possibly have occurred. Bro, shut ah. the fuck up! We saw it! Oh, I just remembered something, Runo! What is it, Iris? There was one time before, wasn't there? I think it was when Jenny was testifying. Do you know how to whistle, Iris? I wish I could whistle. You simply put your lips together and blow. <laughs> Maybe like this. <laughs> when the bailiff was dispatched to receive retrieve McGilded's can of beans <laughs> from the scene of the crime. <laughs> That's it. It was during that testimony. I remember a game. <laughs> Are you lot watching out over that? 
it would have been possible for you to give Mr. Graydon the information he needed then. You little toe rag! You're making all this up! I'm, I'm a respectable Scotland Yard inspector for crying out loud! Why would I do something like that? Why would I be giving away confidential details to the likes of this bloke? <laughs> Admittedly, you wouldn't have had any reason to do something like that for no gain. But perhaps it was part of a deal of some kind. And then it starts to make more sense. <clears throat> what deal, Council? I wonder if perhaps, in exchange for details about the peephole at the crime scene, Mr. Graydon agrees with someone. You're right, Ace Attorney would be better if you're dumb. <laughs> uh, agreed you, to give you a certain something. So uh, you did it. <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> I am sure I need not remind the inspector that. If found out to be true, striking a deal of any kind with a witness Sorry, means that I get to smack you in the pee-pee. <laughs> <laughs> really hard with my gavel, like boom, would be considered a gr- <laughs> I didn't even catch that. Doesn't well, matter. Well, I- It's becoming clear. The jumping in with accusations is this Nibbanese student's specialty. But I'm like right every time. You're right. I I don't though. But with the stakes so high, the prosecution is not prepared to listen to baseless charges. Well, do 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 do. It is incumbent on the defense now to present evidence in support of this diabolical claim. Evidence. <laughs> Just what are you proposing that the inspector demanded of the witness in return? The court must see proof of this alleged dealsman. I put my chips in the microwave. <laughs> okay, this is the last thing then. If Inspector Gregson really did strike a deal with Mr. Graydon, then logically, there's only one thing he could have asked for. That must be it. Hey, no. Do you think it could be? Yes. It's the missing link that would join all the dots together in this puzzle. I must press you for an answer now, Council. Give us the juice! It's this, right? It's the music box disc. Uh, I don't know if you would pre uh, pre present that or the upside down music box. It's, I mean, he doesn't have access to the music box, <laughs> but they do have the disc. Okay, yeah. all right. Yep, that sounds like it's correct. Inspector Gregson, besides this murder, is it not true that you've been working on another very important case? What are you getting at now, sunshine? It's possible that this other top secret case is what allu uh, what's alluded to in this newspaper article here. The classified, yeah, the one thing I think, oh, okay, didn't click. But uh, the one thing I really like that this game does is allows you to present multiple pieces of evidence. That's, that's good. Yeah. How, how the bleed, Nora, could you? We discovered during the course of this trial the music box deposited at Win oh I'm so sorry the can of beans deposited at Winderbanks by Magnus mm -hmm. McGilded a special mm -hmm. can of bean decided to contain two beans at once <laughs> it would seem very likely now that encoded on the pair of beans that were in Mr McGilded's possession are leaked classified flavors <gasps> So, I put it to you, Inspector, that in order to recover the, sec uh, the second of the beans containing those flavors, you covertly made a deal with Mr. Graydon, in which you exchanged the bean for details of the case. You... you little... Ah! Order! 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 On the day of the incident, when we met you at Winderbanks, you said this. I'm guilty. I'll be taking that whatever it is of Mr. McGilded's down to the yard, thank you very much. So I hand it over. No, don't, don't give it to him. It's mine, that is mine. I'm sorry, miss. But anything belonging to McGilded has to be taken in for evidence now. Oh, Scotland Yard already knew that at that time, isn't that right? That Magnus McGilded was involved in the stealing of government secrets? My orders were, recover the medium used to convey the secrets leaked from the Ministry, and do it on the key Q QT, strictly hush-hush. So why did you, you already knew what it was. <laughs> you didn't. And that explains, yeah, and that explains why, when I presented this disc as evidence to the court. Presented this what? 
this bean to the court. You objected so heavily, I presume, because you knew that it contained highly confidential information. Well, I mean, not likely. I mean, I wasn't sh that sure of it myself. I, I realized there was a possibility, that's all. Inspector, surely, surely you're not saying that in order to acquire the second of these music box discs. Beans? In these bean discs? Oh, you did indeed <laughs> reveal confidential details of the crime scene to the witness. To aid and abet this man in giving false testimony? There's no other way that Mr. Graydon could have known of the existence of the people. It's the only explanation. A deal was struck between these two men. No, God! Why'd you do that, Inspector? If, and I stress if, this sobering assertion turns out to be founded in truth, it would mean that the second bean is, as we speak, here in this very courtroom. Wait, what? In this room? How could you possibly make a claim like that? Because Inspector Gregson is a Scotland Yard detective. What? What's that supposed to mean, eh? As a seasoned policeman, the inspector will have approached this alleged deal with caution. Certainly, he would not have accepted a gentleman's agreement in this matter. No, he would have insisted on having the article agreed upon in the palm of his hand. Good gracious. You mean to say... You're, you're no, this judge. is me. Inspector Gregson already has the item in question in his hand. He has a second disc actually on his person. He doesn't have a disc on his person. He has a second bean actually on his person. <laughs> the defense demands that the inspector is searched at once. Definitely. They can only have struck a deal with each other when Jimmy was testifying before. And Gregsy hasn't moved from the witness stand since. My lord, please. Order an examination of his personal effects immediately. Um, well, Inspector? This young lad wants to tone down his imagination. He's insulted me in my profession quite enough. <laughs> However, if it'll put this matter to bed and dispel any doubts about my involvement, then I'll happily submit to a body search. What? He agreed to it I'm, because he doesn't. He, it's in the hat yeah. that we were handing. <laughs> uh, I presume you're aware of the precipice on which you now teeter, my learned student friend. You've made that most serious allegation against Scotland Yard here. If, following the search of the inspector's personal effects, no bean is found, you will be deemed unfit for the court service. This trial will end. And my country's government will formally demand of yours that you are severely reprimanded. That sounds serious. <laughs> Indeed, to have visited Stu and make such a defamatory remarks about our country's most senior police force. <laughs> it's not something our Majesty's government will be able to overlook. You're just threatening Luna because you're scared. Yes. The accusations are beyond serious. You must be prepared for grave consequences. It's true. I, hang on. <laughs> yeah, probably a good idea. We haven't gotten a heal. I can't imagine Gregson would have accepted a gentleman's agreement for something so critical. The disc must have physically changed hands, which means the inspector should have it. But somehow, something doesn't feel quite right here. You know, I, I, as much as I want to say it's the hat because that's funny, I'm trying to think back on the timeline. I don't think that he had the hat on when they were talking. No, he didn't. Okay. Very yeah. well, Council. You know the implications, so let me ask you one final time! Yes, my lord! Do you still persist in formally requesting a search of the inspector's personal effects? I mean, no, I feel like... Yeah, you know, somebody else, bro. We should probably search someone else. Okay. So... Um... Who could it be on? Um, well, uh, who are our options? We haven't actually. Well, she's on. Uh, blah, blah, blah. She's on our side, but we haven't actually seen anything from Gina in a while. 
Uh, obviously, Nash was next to Gregson. Uh, when he was shaking him, he might have tried to hide it in his clothes. Yeah. Oh. Good call. That was it. Nice call, Siv. The defense formally demands the search to be conducted. Ah! Don't say you weren't warned, but your typical Nipponese stubbornness may well land you in hot water. Perhaps the lesson will do you some good. Fair enough. I've got nothing to hide. Very well then. Bailiff! Actually, actually, don't. Don't do that. The defense <laughs> demands a search, but not of Inspector Gregson. What? Now what's all this? I'm the one you're accusing, aren't I? I thought you wanted to search me. No, no, Inspector. Not you. Somebody else. What's the meaning of all this, eh? Lost it out. Lost it at last, have you, sunshine? The court shouldn't have to put up with this nonsense. You're being completely irrational. Be quiet, all of you. <gasps> oh. Be quiet, oh. all of you! Renner's doing what you all told him to do but having the courage of his convictions. So you should respect that and listen to what he has to say in good faith! Because that's the British way, apparently. And if you don't believe us, then we'll go over to your bench and colonize it. <laughs> well said, young lady! Indeed, this court is in awe of the Defense Council's conviction and eagerly awaits his next words. You what? Now don't be hasty, my lord. If I'm not mistaken about the things I've seen in court today, I'm fairly sure that I know who has that disc at the moment. There's only one person it can be. Yeah, I like this. This one. This was set up just well enough. No problems with this one. Also, any excuse to talk to the Skulkins, a delight. <laughs> yeah. Of my lord, Mr. Nash Skulkin. Well, I never. I, I me. me. <laughs> <laughs> Very well then, Bailiff. Restrain the witness and conduct a thorough search of his personal effects. Please, my lord. Inspector. Scotland Yard uh, has to object to this search. Objection. Unfortunately for you, Inspector, your objections carry no weight here. Eh? In this courtroom, only the prosecution and the defense have the authority to object. But, Lord Van Ziggs! I have no idea what forces are in play that might influence your actions. But personally, I have no intention of obstructing the course of this trial. Ah! Bailiff! Carry out the search! Ooh. Ooh. No, hold on a mo! Oh, I don't know nothing! Nothing about no disc! Cut oh, it out! I don't know nothing about no bean! Looks like this trial's gone pear-shaped! <laughs> <laughs> In the witness's pocket! I found this! Good lord! That's... Another music bean. I don't know nothing about it. Nothing. I was holding it for a friend. I was. We're friends. <laughs> that is the second music box disc left behind by Magnus Hold McGilded. On. I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna call it right now. Strongheart's gonna walk in just before you play it. I bet you're right. Is it not, Inspector Gregson? <laughs> Order! 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 Miss Skulkin, what do you have to say for yourself? Golden Bennett. I mean, just Golden Flame and Bennett. I swear I didn't know nothing about that disc, honest to God. Counsel, would you please explain what exactly is going on here? Oops, sorry. The alleged d deal that was struck between the witness and this detective, no? Without question, my lord. Then for pity's sake, why on earth was this man in possession of the bean that the inspector <laughs> traded for information? Inspector Gregson is a shrewd, calculating man who rarely loses his composure. But at one particular point in the trial, he exhibited some unusual behavior for a brief moment. I don't recall what unusual behavior. Ah! It was 
Yes, during my cross-examination of Mr. Graydon. Blah, 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 blah. I'll kill you! I'll kill you, you son of a bitch! Oh, I'm actually dying. Die! Die! The inspector appeared to have grabbed Nash Skulkin by the coat and was shaking him violently. <coughs> yeah, he did it all. Thought me noggin was gonna fall clean off, I did. Was wishing I'd been born as me brother I was. And what exactly happened to make the detective attack you like that? I ain't got a clue. He just suddenly turned and grabbed me whistle, uh, grabbed me whistle like that, and started shaking me. Why oh, the blazes didn't you mention the third gun when you when we got you down at the station? That's what he said. He held it right down my ear hole. He did. My head's still throbbing now. The way the detective behaved then was extremely out of character. But looking back on it now. Must have been then that he did it. That was the opportunity Inspector Gregson created for himself in order to hide the disc. The beam. Uh, bless my wig! He hit it! Wig, sister! You. Wig, sis! But I'm afraid I fail to comprehend even the most basic of proceedings in this goddamn courtroom. <laughs> <laughs> if the detective had acquired the disc he was after. Why on earth would he then proceed to hide it in another man's pocket? Dog, come on. It is a court of law. You could have submitted the item as evidence. Well, hear me, kitty cat. Meow, meow. It would appear, my lord, that the inspector was not at liberty to do that. Why have them not? As the man himself revealed earlier, his current assignment has some special conditions. This really will be the final testimony. <laughs> oh, right, yeah, yeah, mm, yeah, mm -hmm, yeah, yes, indeed. Hush, hush. A top secret assignment, is it? As far as we're aware, the information stolen comes from confidential government communications. It would seem that if that information were to be revealed in court as evidence, it would be problematic. Like me. That's some... <laughs> I'm a problematic fave. Does that sum up the situation, Inspector? I'm operating under direct orders from the Ministry. Oh, what? Oh, shit, one of them just... I'm afraid I'm not at liberty to answer that question. So, realizing there was a chance that you may be searched here in court, you took steps to hide the disc, the bean, you had acquired from earlier. Uh, does this mean? He only pretended to attack Mr. Skulkin in order to get close enough to him to slip the second bean into his pocket. So it was all a pretense? <laughs> That's just mashed potatoes in his hand right now. Well now, Inspector Gregson. And you, Mr. Graydon. Are you prepared to admit to the accusation made against you of this alleged deal? No. I didn't want it. No. Admit to it. Yours truly, please. Mr. Graydon. Clearly our Eastern visitor has an uncommonly active imagination. However, there's no proof that I passed that disc to the inspector. Luckily, I did pass a bean to him. The bean? That's right. Oh, no! But, but how do you explain the reason why you knew about the people? I'm under no obligation to explain. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Yes, I lied in my testimony, that I admit, yes. so send yes. me accordingly, but that is all I admit. Ooh. I would love it if Naruhoto, so one of the reasons that, like, I don't really like Justice for All as a game, the for, or, or no, no, um, well, that's also true. I don't really like uh, Apollo Justice, the fourth Ace Attorney game, that much, but I do appreciate that at the end of that case, the bad guy goes, I'm afraid there's no evidence. And then they're like, by the way, we're trying out a jury system. What? Jurors, what do you think about this suspicious ass man? Guilty. Guilty. <laughs> and it's very satisfying. God. Murder, leaking government secrets, striking a deal with the detective. All of it is this young Eastern man's fantasy. I have no idea what any of that is about. Jesus Christ. You what? Iris How? just gets up and shoots him in the face point blank. What, what about you then, Inspector Gregson? Do you admit to making a deal with Mr. Graydon in order to acquire the bean? Yep. Ladies and gents of the jury, 
As a Scotland Yard inspector, I will declare this and nothing more. Hmm. I am acting in the best interest of the country. Whatever I've done, it's been in the name of justice. Gregson doing this deal, like it doesn't matter what Gregson's up to at all because this guy is still the murderer. Like him taking the deal or not changes literally nothing. But the fact that the disc is there proves this guy is the murderer and I can't believe yeah. this trial is still happening. So as members of the public of this fine country, I'd like to think that justice will be your guiding light when you're making your decisions. Don't worry, there's only Can one piece of evidence to present. I do want to point out, you guys have now said that to me four times. Yeah. Oh, this is quite a quandary indeed. It's not. <laughs> Rarely have I encountered such extraordinary dumbasslessness in the concluding of a trial. Nevertheless, in the absence of any further evidence to be presented, oh, fuck off, all of you, get out. I don't care anymore. I believe it is time that we put the matter of the jury for their... I'm not even going to say the F word. Just do it. Well, <laughs> now, as a fellow servant of queen and country, must say I sympathize with the old inspector, old white man. Gregson, no. Don't use propaganda, you bitch. Yes, he's a dependable man, I'm quite sure. He's a police officer and we're all white. In service, <laughs> one becomes a good judge of character. Even crossing your eyes doesn't help when it comes to looking at this case. It's all blurred to me. A woman's life is in my hands. <laughs> well, as a fellow professional, I'd like to put my face in the... the I'm a doctor. I get away with whatever the fuck I want. Great in this highly skilled operator. Stop currently in presence of idol. Stop. Oh, my God. Detective oh, yeah. is very much Torsten eyes. More than this, I cannot say. Oh man, sorry. Just looking at something. I don't believe it. These six churros are they're going to believe Gregson. If they declare their decision now. Is Jimmy going to be found guilty? If I don't manage to produce some definitive evidence right now, then we're going to lose. Either some proof that, Mr. that Graydon killed Mr. Winterbank or stole those government secrets, or some evidence to force Gregson into admitting that he struck a deal with the witness. Well then, counsel. I think it's time I impose on the jurors to declare their... Bonk, kids. Go ahead, bonk. Bonk. Uh, Just... <laughs> that is... Yeah, yeah. Okay, if I let the judge call on the jurors to announce their leaning, she'll be found guilty. Let's throw some evidence at them. Okay. I, so I'm sure this is wrong. My gut says, this is like the dumbest reasoning and this is not right. My gut says to present Gregson the, the uh, unpublished book unpublished from Iris and be like, yep. check this shit out, dude. I'll yep. let you read this if you. Yep. No, uh, chat, don't hush. Tell me what to do. I don't give a fuck. I want the case to be over. Yeah. It's such a shame. I I was really digging this, and then this just drags its fucking feet at the end. Like, really bad. Yeah. Second disc. Oh, yeah, we did get that second disc. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you gotta play it, I guess. Okay. Uh, who do I present that against? Box uh, discs Gregson. to Gre or, yeah, box to Greg. Yeah, okay. So, Gregson. so either way, Gregson. I okay. figured Gregson because he's the only one that like he's got duty to the country, so he will most likely fold compared to the fucking dipshit. Yeah, there is one final piece of evidence I would like you to see. Aye, what's that then? If you refuse to acknowledge that you did in fact strike a deal with the witness here today, then you leave us no choice but to examine this piece of evidence thoroughly. Well, go on. This is my last chance. Looks like I'm going to have to force his hand here. One final piece of evidence to... Okay, yeah, we're going to threaten him to... Um, it's weird we didn't get the second disc, but yeah, I'll use the box. Yeah. <clears throat> Do you need to open the second side first? Not on this screen. I shouldn't have to. Okay. Is that Mr. McGilded's peculiar music being counsel? Yes with a bean already in place, ready to play. 
I think perhaps now would be a good time to listen to the sound produced by the can of beans again. Only this time... With the second bean we've just discovered set in place as well. Goodness, the bean council! Oh, no! No! Wait! I, I can't let you do that! Why not? B because, um, well... Because it's not- it's got nothing to do with this case, that's why! Objection! Not true, Inspector. Ah! The defense has already proposed that the sounds heard by the court earlier from this mu uh, from this can of beans were part of a bean code message. Mm. We know that bean code comprises of two distinct beans. The defense believes that the second bean contains the second flavor needed to complete the message. And now we have a chance to confirm that theory. We're crying out loud, sunshine! We're talking about state secrets here! If you go letting the whole courtroom hear confidential information like that, it's... it's treason! Well, it's not treason for me. Not my country. Then do you admit the charge? That in order to protect those state secrets, you engaged in unlawful dealings with the witness. You're... you're mad. If you let that secret information out into the public domain, you... you'll be making an enemy of the entire British government, you idiot! Objection! Let's not forget, Inspector, that you, a Scotland Yard officer, leaked confidential case details to a witness. That you continue to lie to the court. And all because, by fair means or foul, you're determined to do your duty. Well, by fair means or foul, I'm prepared to do mine. Don't you dare. I will stop at nothing to protect my client. I don't care who I make an enemy of. Wow. Hot. Go off, I guess. <laughs> My lord, if you please, the court must hear the sounds made by that music box. Come on, Van Zeeks, for peace sake, stop him! Ooh. Inspector, you should know my methods by now. I'm a prosecutor. I'm no Scotland Yard puppet. Ahab! In this courtroom, my duty is to the law, so let me propose a toast. To uncovering the truth by fair means or foul. No! Very well, the defense stands here, and that of the prosecution has been made very clear, I feel. Therefore, in accordance with the defense's request, the court will now listen to this music box to set in operation once more. This time, with the second bean in place, and both beans playing simultaneously! All right, all right, I admit it. Whatever you want, for the love of God, but shut that blooming box up! Let me ask you again then, Inspector Gregson. Did you, or did you not, strike a deal with the witness next to you in the stand, Mr. Ashley Graydon? Specifically, did you furnish the witness with confidential case details in exchange for this music bean disc? Did you reveal the existence of the peephole in the pawnbroker's storeroom door, Inspector? I did. Oh! Stop! What are you doing, man? It's all exactly like the young Eastern lawyer said. When the trial resumed after the recess and we were stood here in the stand together, that's when he approached me with a deal. Shut up, you imbecile! Shut up! Psst, you there. You're the detective who turned up at the pawnbrokery the other day, aren't you? I may have something you're looking for, Inspector, with me at this very moment. Someone, now there's just one final piece of evidence you have to present after this. I'm gonna kill you guys. <laughs> so how about a trade? I suggest you accept. Or... Information that may make certain individuals uncomfortable will soon become very public indeed. I couldn't let the information become public knowledge, not under any circumstances. 
So, I accept the man's proposal and told him details about the case that should have put him in the clear. The peephole in the storeroom door and the bloodstains on the overcoat. By giving false testimony, this witness intended to have the defendant wrongly accused of murder. Why did you agree? He was going to jail and he was going to be hung for treason. Hanged. Very different verb. He's going to be hanged for treason. He had absolutely no way to get information out in that time. Inspector, you knew that. Yet you still revealed those details to facilitate the witness's perjury. I did. But then it turned out the peephole had only been made that night after the incident took place. Scotland Yard wasn't aware of that, if I'm perfectly honest. Well, Mr. Graydon, what do you have to say for yourself? Uh, <clears throat> There's nothing and no one left for you to hide behind. You struck a deal with the inspector in order to escape conviction of a very serious crime. Namely, this. You are the third intruder who broke into the pawnbrokery on the night in question. And you perpetrated the murder of the proprietor, Mr. Pop Winterbank. You. You. Oh, Jesus. Traitor! Oh, my oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Um. Bailiff! Bailiff! We're straight this man! At once! Wow. That's it then. It's all over. This is Gina, I believe. Oh no, it's, it's it might be Will's it, guy. Yeah, it's Graydon. I despised my life growing up. Those slums are vile places. I was cursed from birth, born into poverty, the same son of a penniless artisan. My parents did nothing but quarrel all day long, but little money they had was never spent on me. So I set about studying, to better myself, to one day escape from that hellhole. And you eventually became a communications officer. I admire your determination. But then you decided to try to sell government secrets. Why? <sighs> Isn't it obvious? Because I wanted money. Even now, years later, the nightmares of my life in the slums wake me up in the small hours. I wanted to drown them out with more money than anyone who lived in the squalor could ever imagine. Then one day, I met him. Mr. Magnus McGildit. You're a fiend with a core talent, so you are. I've money to throw your way if you're interested. All you need to do is go along with me little plan now. Delighted to see Magnus. No, come back! Come back! to play him! <laughs> Come back, my love! <laughs> I was to steal the Ministry's telegraphic message logs and the Gilded would buy them for a handsome sum. As I was responsible for inspections of the Ministry's communications office, it was a simple enough task. The lure of the Devil's offerings. How easy it is to succumb. But you must surely have realized the seriousness of the crime you were committing. And for that reason... I took great lengths to ensure that my actions were untraceable by using the music box. My father was a brickmaker, though my mother divorced him when I was still a child. Yes, Mr. Mason Milverton. That's right. He was very skilled with his hands. He'd once been a music box maker's apprentice. I imagined his skills would be sufficient to create a machine that could generate Morse code. So I sought out my father again to employ his services. It was the first time I'd seen him since I left the slums ten years earlier. Look, look at you, Ashley. What a fine gent you've become, eh? 
He was a different man to the one in my memory. A thin, <laughs> a thin, frail old piff. But poverty had never broken him, never corrupted him like it had me. I was sure that he wouldn't help me if I told him the reason. So I made up a story. I've got some work for you, Father. I need some can of beans made. Can of beans, eh? A bean maker friend of mine has written some beans. Oh, this is you. Oh, wait, that's you. A musician friend of mine has written... A bean maker friend of mine has written some beans he wants to sell to the public. I brought the score with me. There are two, actually. I'd be delighted, I... son. It's been 20 years since I did any work like this, though. Fetch my tools, would you? They're in the loft. That's how I had him make the two discs, two beans. Thereby splitting the information in two, you were taking considerable pre precautions indeed. It was to protect myself as much as anything. It meant that I could deal with McGilded in two separate transactions. The first involved the first of the two beans and the can of beans for playing them. I exchanged them with McGilded for ten guineas. Then, on receipt of the second bean, he would pay a thousand guineas. Jesus! So, what happened on the omnibus two months ago was the second part of the deal. The exchange of the second bean. Yes. I'd sold the man information that way a number of times already. But it seems he became reluctant to part with his money. But that doesn't quite make sense, Mr. Graydon. For why was it that on that omnibus? Why? Why? Your father, Mr. Milverton, was the one dealing with Mr. McGilded and not yourself. When I received the thousand guineas after my first completed dealings with McGilded, I decided to give two hundred to my father for his troubles. But my father realized something was amiss. In time, he worked out that I must be involved in something dubious. And when he did, he said to me, Next time there's an exchange, you let your old piff do it, understand? Otherwise, I won't take your money anymore. Why? That was my father's way of dealing with it, I suppose. Climb into the omnibus, hand over the second disc, and take the money from McGilded. That's it. He had no idea what was actually on the discs I had asked him to make. Especially because they were beans. They were beans. I do. Just like I'll never know why everything went so horribly wrong that night. All I know is that the bean was taken from him, and he never returned home. It was only then that I found out what sort of a monster McGilded really was. So after ten years of not once uttering it, I swore on my father's name. To exact revenge! Oh, did you kill McGilded? <laughs> revenge! Ooh. As anyone with even the remotest knowledge of the man will no doubt be able to imagine, McGilded brought all his wealth and influence to bear in the most despicable of ways. Ow. To crush any semblance of justice in his trial. <laughs> the crime scene was tampered with, evidence was fixed, and witnesses were bribed. That trial two months ago was a farce from start to finish. My feet had barely touched British soil back then and I walked into that hornet's, ne hornet's nest completely unaware of the sinister background to it all. I'd made plenty of money out of my dealings with McGilded by then. So I spared nothing in my arrangements two months ago. I knew exactly who to hire. If you're willing to pay the price, there are people in the city willing to do anything you ask. So you successfully hired people competent enough to pull a hit in the old Bailey not 10 minutes after a trial. And then... And then... You <laughs> hired the Skull Kids! McGilded, oh. McGilded himself had shown me that. Are you saying that... 
I think you have the picture now. After he twisted everything to his favor in this courtroom to ensure that he walked free, I took matters into my own hands and delivered the justice that monster deserved. I mean, good. Yeah. That tragic accident following the trial here two months ago was planned and executed by yours truly. The Gilded's death that day was caused by this man. Am I upset? I don't know. Everything is ready, sir. If you'd like to follow me into the courtroom. What's this, officer? Tis sooner than I was led to believe. I hope it's not inconvenient, sir. There were some changes to the schedule. Oh, well, and that's him. I'm... <laughs> I must be making tracks now. Tis time for the inspection. They're going to examine the omnibus again, so I'm told. I asked if I could be present for it myself. So that policeman who came to tell Mr. McGill did he could examine the omnibus again. That's right. An imposter hired by me. Oh, I was hoping it was just him. McGill did use his wealth to manipulate the trial. Now, I mean, if you're going to hire at least like three people, why the fuck would you be there yourself? Yeah, but yeah. I mean, McGill did recognize him anyway. So even if he was wearing a Bobby uniform, he'd probably recognize him. Yeah. He paid people to adulterate the omnibus with all manner of false evidence. Keen Arner is now Keen. playing Halo Infinite. Ooh. He threatened witnesses to lie in their testimony. So I gave the man a taste of his own medicine. Once the omnibus was doused in paraffin, one of my sham policemen ushered McGilded inside and sent him on a one-way journey to hell. And I... For an eye. That's how I avenged my father's death. I dig it, but like, die. A spine drilling account indeed. It's a shame because like, I this looping back into the third case makes this case better. It's just, you could have shaved like a whole, they just didn't come Four up with a, a good middle game for this case. Yeah, then, like, no, you, there you wasn't could've... enough meat. <clears throat> no. Yeah, it's such a shame. Cause like this, this is a good wrap up, but that wasn't the end of it for me. There was a loose end, you see. A loose end? Yes. I should think it's obvious. The second bean, which my father had taken to exchange with McGilded. Ah, yes. There was indeed no mention of it in the man's trial two months ago. <clears throat> Clearly because it had been removed from the scene of the crime. Someone, there wasn't enough meat. There was just beans. <laughs> When I realized it was missing, I remembered something. Something from the first time I dealt with McGilded. This is the first of the two beans, and the, and the can you need to play them. Well, look at that now. What an ingenious little invention. So then, as promised, ten guineas for you, young man. What? What's this? Winterbank's pawnbrokery? Ah, it is a pawnbroker's ticket, so it is. You can use it to redeem an article I've deposited there for you. There's no need to give a name. Just hand over the ticket and tell the fiend the watchword. I put a jewel in pawn for you. It'll fetch a good ten guineas if you sell it, so it will. I've never heard of a pawnbrokery being used in quite that way before. Have you not, Mr. Graydon? London's pawnbrokeries are very useful places, you know. Each one is like an extremely secure vault. Ellipsis, ellipsis, ellipsis. And then he kissed me. So I knew that if he'd taken steps to hide the disc, it would be in the pawnbrokery somewhere. And that, on the night he killed my father, he must have entrusted the ticket to someone. Yes, to Gina. I remember now. That was when we first met you at Winderbanks that afternoon two days ago. You had a description of Miss Lestrade written down. How did you know who you were looking for? From the trial. That pickpocket's testimony was clearly peculiar. Anyone could see that. I realized immediately that she was another of McGilded's pawns, that he must have threatened her somehow. I was fairly convinced it would be her who had the ticket. So I started to make some inquiries. I had a strong suspicion the girl would come out of the woodwork on the redemption deadline. And he was absolutely right. 
And yes, sure enough, she did. All I needed to do was to wait until the girl went to Winterbanks to redeem the articles. But unfortunately, she redeemed only Magilda's overcoat and not the bean. And not the one bean that was in the pocket. The all-important can with the second bean inside was missing. Because it had already been forfeited two days earlier. But I was unaware of that fact. Had I not been... I could have avoided my nighttime excursion. Meanwhile, as our investigation into these stolen government secrets was progressing... So I... real quick, am I... am I an idiot? So, um... They had these two photographs, one with the can of beans and one without. Which would mm -hmm. imply the can of beans was taken. But it wasn't taken, right? Yeah, it was still there. What? Yeah, Why he was left it there. Then wouldn't it have been in both photographs? What am I missing there? It was in both photographs. No, the idea it... was that it... Yeah, it was. It was just nudged in the second one. Oh, it was moved. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It was okay. like two inches off to yep, the yep, side. Yep, yep, yep. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. Nope. God, We're... fuck. We picked up the fact that McGilded was involved. Inspector, you've recovered fast. My orders were to recover the stolen information as quickly as possible. So we started gathering the fellas' possessions and examining whatever we could lay our hands on. We had a full-scale investigation going on at the yard, but we had to keep it as quiet as we could. Yeah, it's just, it's and, just, I guess I just think it's weird because like, wouldn't he have taken the box if he found it? Yeah. yeah. I think, I, cause he, I think he just, took the disc out because he was like, I don't want anything to be noticeably gone because there's no way people would know the disc was in the box. I guess. So. I guess. Yeah. Okay. Because because that was the big case that part of the case was like, was anything taken? The answer was no. Yeah. Okay. Then when the inspector here took the disc from me in the pawn brokery that day, I become nervous. I was sure the can and the second bean were still there in the shop somewhere. So I knew that it was a race against time. I had to find those articles before the police did. I just, I just don't understand why you did this crime. You could have just waited 24 hours, but by making it yeah. a crime scene, you really fucked yourself. Yeah, it is. I think it's a, 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 it's not a good defense, but I think it is literally just the panic. Okay. So that's what prompted you to break into that place that same night. With the help of your old friends, the Skulkin brothers. He thought it was in the vault, the vault, but why would he have? It would have been forfeited upon two months, and there's no way McGilded could have put something in there later than the coat, which he knows, it, he knew, reached the end of its tenure. Uh, also, I just realized something. If the box was already on the floor, which which it was, couldn't he have just bought it that day? Yeah. That's, yeah. that's what I was saying. Oh yeah, okay, I see now, sorry. What happened that night in the pawn brokery? I can only describe as a nightmare. This is not me. I don't know why I was reading my book. <laughs> no, you're good. While Nash and Ringo were searching the counter, I'd located Apparently the pen. he didn't know it would be forfeit at that time. But what, like, he would have known though, because mathematically, <laughs> the last thing that possibly, uh, cause he knew that Gina had the coat ticket, right? And he knew he, uh, she got it on the, like, the last day McGilded was alive and free. There's no way something could have been pawned after that point. Meaning it yeah. would have for sure been either in the back for one more night or out front the next day. And, and he literally said, he's like, I waited there to find out when she would arrive because that would be the pickup date. Like he literally just said that like two scenes ago. <laughs> He literally so said, he was aware that this he literally would be the, just said the he didn't thing. know, but he should have known, is what I'm saying. Because yeah, no, it's obvious math. He, it, it, it couldn't like, have been pawned later than the thing he said he knew was pawned. So that's that's my problem with it. Anyway, yeah, I'd located the can I'd sold to McGilded on the shelves of forfeited articles, and the second bean was inside. Yes, I slipped it into my coat with a very deep sigh of relief, but then. Something entirely unexpected happened. He was afraid the yard would confiscate it, but why would they? They didn't know it was a crime scene until he committed the crime there. And they didn't know about the box, probably? No, they didn't. 
A gunshot rang out into the shop, and I felt a sharp pain in my left arm. The broker fired his gun, and the bullet pierced your limb. Yes, exactly. But unfortunately... I decided to bring my own gun with me that night, just in case. Before I knew what was happening, I'd fired back. The man had already turned to flee. I hadn't intended to fire in his direction, much less to kill him. But unfortunately for both of us, the bullet hit home. It struck him in the middle of his back as he fled through the storeroom, storeroom door for refuge. A sorry, sorry tale. It all took place in the blink of an eye. I don't imagine Nash and Ringo even realized what had happened at first. I was terrified, so I fled. And that's the whole story. That's everything that happened at Windebanks on that wretched night. Okay. Gina's guilty. Earlier, you called McGilded a monster, a man who used his wealth and influence to distort the facts and escape justice for the crime of murder. What a tragic irony. For what you have done is exactly the same. You've become the very monster you saw and despised so deeply in McGilded. Yes, I think I have. Well, kill him! <laughs> this has been a long and exhausting trial. Screen cap. <laughs> <laughs> However, it would seem that at last we have arrived at the truth. Inspector Gregson, what of Mr. Ashley Graydon? He left. No one stopped him. He's been restrained, my lord, and he's been escorted to the yard. He'll be charged with murder of Mr. Winterbank and the stealing of government secrets. Very good. And you, Inspector, regrettably, you will have to face the charges yourself. Yes, my lord, of course. It transpires that you were complicit in helping a criminal escape justice. That fact remains, whether or not you were doing so in the line of duty. The crime is a serious one, Inspector, and inexcusable. Now the defendant, Miss Gina Lestrade. Uh, yeah, yeah? It's time for the final education. Adjudication, God damn it! why is that word so hard? Is the jury ready, Mr. Foreman? Yes, sir. Get rid of squadron standing by, sir. This really will be the last push, the final call, the finishing whistle! <laughs> Thank you, uh. Mr. Foreman. Bonk. Very well, ladies and gents of the jury. Give us, uh, give us your two cents. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. I like that even guilty. in some of the other trials where we got a not guilty, some of them still voted guilty. Mm-hmm. Why does it explode? <laughs> That's the stuff, I'm all book! Finally, Venno, you finally managed to do it! Finally Sorry. is the word! <laughs> <laughs> I really wasn't sure if we'd come out on top for a while there. Susie was right. You're the best lawyer in the world! Ms. Lestrade, I am not finished with you yet! Oh, Jesus Christ. Hey, what, what are you talking? What are you looking at me like that for? Before you start enjoying your freedom, go to jail. There's certain crimes to consider, hmm? Eh? Two months ago, in my courtroom, no less, you gave false testimony, did you not? Yeah, but it was, like, coerced under threat, so you're gonna, also, get, a, you're gonna like, get a pretty... Also, like, she's a kid. She's gonna get a pretty light sentence. And in relation to the trial today, not only did you unlawfully enter 
When the bank's pawnbrokery, you also attempted to abscond with Mr. McGillard's property, it seems. I mean, she had the legal right to that. She was yeah, given she the did. ticket. <laughs> I never done nothing of the sort. Of course not. It's like you were gleefully wearing Mr. McGillard's coat in your... S it, it wasn't yet... Fuck. Oh, and just as I was getting excited about throwing a party for Jenny this evening, we have to stay here. And turning our attention to the defense... Determining that when played together, the music box, the music bean can discontain message, Morse code, let's go. <laughs> well, it certainly has <laughs> mess. I can't. God damn it. <laughs> Quite so, my lord. The prosecution was caught entirely <laughs> off guard. In fact, I think we should applaud my learned friend's courage here today. I propose a toast. To demanding that government secrets be dis disseminated before the entire courtroom. Uh, very sorry about that. It's the only way that I could get Inspector Gregson to admit what he'd done, so... Isn't that... Ah. It's, um, about the sounds produced by the music box before. I do wonder if that was really more cold at all. It just says, I love you, son. I love you so much, son. Oh, no. <laughs> what? What are you saying, madam? Oh, well, it's just that I'm ra really rather fanatical when it comes to Morse code, you see. Uh, so much so that the whole world seems to be covered in dots and dashes to me, in fact. Goodness, madam, an unhealthy level of obsession one feels. But I must say that, in my opinion, the sounds produced by those two beans were nothing more than that. A meaningless, serious... Wait, a meaningless, <laughs> That's just serious. a typo, I think. Oh, mm -hmm. a series of two different flavors. What? What? C can that really be? It wasn't Morse code after all? Then it's pretty funny that What's-His-Nuts didn't bother using that in his defense. Oh my god, did fucking Mason just dupe him the entire time? God, that's funny. My lord, the defense would like to listen to the music box again. Are you off your nut? How many times do I have to tell you? Those beans contain ministerial secrets! Sunshine! This courtroom is not an appropriate forum to discuss the nature of the government communications. We know McGilded conspired to trade national secrets with our enemies, secrets acquired by Mr. Graydon. Now that the man has admitted to his crimes, we have no need to pursue the matter further. Ugh, but it's really gonna bother me. <laughs> She's gonna bother me too. Miss Lestrade, eh, me lord. That which you have seen today here in this courtroom is utter fucking nonsense. Don't do it again. Falsified evidence, intimidation, perjury, a grim catalog of depravity. An appalling experience to befall any child. Come on, I ain't nothing I didn't see most days back in the slums. We got tons of trials back there. <laughs> you know, you see the rats on trial <laughs> squabbling over cheese. <laughs> if you're weak, you pay for it. That's just how life goes. Gina. But look, I reckon I've worked something out today. The world ain't fair, but if you want it to change, you gotta start it. You gotta start at home. You gotta change how you are yourself. Okay, I guess you went through a character arc. Well, it's a very laudable lesson, I would say. I eagerly look forward to the born again Miss Lestrade, never gracing my courtroom with her presence again. Fuck off. Now, with regard to the murder of Mr. Pop Winderbank, proprietor of a pawn brokering business on Baker Street, I hereby declare the defendant Miss Gina Lestrade. Not, Not guilty. guilty. Yay. 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 Uh, is that Yay. fun? Get it away from me. Uh, ah, uh. Ah. Aw. Shouldn't do that in this building. <coughs> that is all. Court is adjourned. Pop, pop, out. Oh, you're still here, are you? So are you single or what? You're racist. Red. Mm. But yes. <laughs> On a personal note, I must say you've surprised me, my Far Eastern friend. Uh, oh. 
Despite being a Nipponese, you saw through the pretense to the malice that festered within that Englishman. It wasn't and hard. <laughs> and at the same time, saw the grime to the surprising heart of your English client. You have a curious talent for judging character, especially considering our very different cultures. I don't think there's anything curious about it. Hmm? Whether we're from the Empire of Great Britain or the Empire of Japan, we're all human beings. We're not so very different on the inside. You know, I took this case for one very simple reason. To lock swords with you once again here in the courtroom. That's kind of cute. <laughs> you did. <laughs> when I encountered you for the first time two months ago, it reminded me of toasting friendship and trust with another Nipponese, only to find my trust betrayed. Uh -huh. Through you, I hope to look into the eyes of the man I once knew and try to understand. Uh -huh. Oh no. You mentioned something earlier today about a total betrayal at the hands of the Japanese. What happened exactly? I'm afraid your boyfriend was cheating on you. <laughs> um, well, you may ask. And one day, when the time comes, you will learn the answer, whether you like it or not. Bye. All right, then I'll wait for that day if I must. <laughs> He's like actually not invested at all. <laughs> He's taking a sip. Fuck, 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 fuck. Please ask me. Come on, y'all. Come on. Come when, to be known as when you really want another player to ask about your backstory, but your character in universe <laughs> would never talk about it. Yeah, yeah. Coming to be known as the Reaper of the Bailey and my retirement from the service five years ago, it gives me cause to wonder if our meeting has some deeper purpose. Stop doing that. So, farewell, my learned Nipponese fellow. Until we meet again. I would love for him to actually legit turn into a cloud of bats and fly out the window. Just, <laughs> and oh, then it explain. never gets mentioned. It doesn't even tell- no, nothing. It's done. It's over at last. But... Where's Iris disappeared to? I escaped through the cat door! <laughs> Congratulations, Gina. I knew it all along. I knew that you were innocent. Well, you did what you said, Mr. Naraodo. You believed in me right up to the end. Here's odd as your name. What's odd about it? I told you I had faith in you, didn't I? Hmm. No one ever has before, see? Kept a promise, I mean, properly. That's awful. I figured something out today. All my life growing up in the slums, I never trusted no one. But that's just because I've been scared of being stabbed in the back. I mean, the more you trust someone, the more it hurts when they let you down. Yes, I think I can understand that. After all, I had a taste of it in that trial two months ago. I chose to trust someone and paid for it. That betrayal left a big scar. You know though, Gina, I worked something out quite recently too. Trusting someone else is... Really an exercise in learning to trust yourself. And when your gut tells you it's the right thing to do, and your trust is rewarded, and there's no better feeling in the world. I think I have... I think I have you to thank for reminding me of that valuable lesson. Ah, oh, well, if you say so. Don't make a fat lot of sense to me, though. I'm just trying to say that putting my faith in you, Gina, it's been a real pleasure. For crying out loud, pack it in! Oh, my fly is down. I suppose. <laughs> I sort of feel the same way. I mean, sometimes trusting someone else is, you know, it's alright. Thanks. This is the way I see it, Yanosuke. A defense lawyer is only as good as his faith in his client. And that comes down to how much faith he has in himself. After this experience, I'm starting to feel like I understand what you mean. Kazuma, am I living up to your expectations? Am I turning out to be the lawyer I believed you could believe that I were, would be one day? <laughs> 
Pardon the interruption. Pardon the interruption? <laughs> but what the deuce does a man have to do to be noticed around here, my dear fellow? That Me voice. when I'm lonely. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's too late for the, that voice now, Mr. Narahodo. I've been standing here patiently in the corner of the room for an eternity. Ha ha ha. Yes, it was me all along, I would have said when you finally noticed me. But you people, with your incessant babbling. <laughs> Mr. Shelms. Ah ha ha, yes, it was me all along. You see? <laughs> Shelms is really good. Shelms is far. great. <laughs> I'd assumed you'd been taken back to the hospital, to be honest. Indeed, I was. Shom's be like, Somebody talk to me! Some <laughs> <laughs> Yay! The trial is over. Somebody talk to me! <laughs> I happen to be aware of one or two foibles of the doctor who was tending to me. I merely made my knowledge of them known to the man, and he happily issued me with a leave of absence very above board. <laughs> but enough of my adventures. That was a fine victory, Mr. Narahodo. Your tireless efforts justly rewarded, I feel. Congratulations are in order. As a close friend, I tip my hat to you. Oh, um, thank you. Oh. Who the fuck is this? <laughs> Some great detective you are. Great at being cold as ice, maybe. Shut the fuck up. Have I irked <laughs> you in some way, Miss Lestrade? Well, you better have an excuse in your nice soft bed. Some of us have been fighting for our lives. I yes, was me. Shot. I was shot. <laughs> Not ah. just that. I was shot and chemicals I had exploded on me. Ah, well, that bullet did cause me to lose a substantial amount of blood. It's true. So I have indeed been feeling somewhat cold. Not perhaps as cold as ice, but, well, have a feel. <laughs> Could you take your hands off my neck, please, Mr. Shopes? Strangling him? <laughs> I loved him! And in some way, I suppose, congratulations are in order for you too, Miss Lestrade. What's that supposed to mean? Why so half-hearted? Well, naturally, it isn't my intention to alarm you, but... An acquittal in a trial with that particular prosecutor is perhaps a little... precarious? Well done, Mr. Shows. Not alarming in the slightest. Oh, the... Oh, fuck. Oh shit! Oh fuck! Because <laughs> anyone who's found not guilty in a trial he was working on winds up dead anyway. Is that it? Yeah, that only happened once. The very I mean, point I was one. trying to make, as exemplified by the fate of Mr. McGilded, in fact. Ah, but of course, I paid no such attention to such irrational, such dribble, such myself. Such? Ugh, yeah, well, it don't bother me. Oh, really? Course not. The way I see it, the Reaper's a bit like uh him upstairs. Fucking Shomes just Shomes went. Shomes went, oh really? Turned and just left the conversation. <laughs> him upstairs? You mean like God? Yeah, him upstairs knows what's what, right? He knows what people are like on the inside. He won't have got the wrong end of the stick. There's some codes like that bog trotter what are rotten in the core. At the end of the day, I'm upstairs make sure they get what they deserve. I suppose that's one way of looking at it. Divine justice is one thing, though. The Reaper taking matters into his own hands and claiming lives is another. Who the fuck keeps murdering people? I keep getting blamed for that shit! <laughs> yeah, I got blamed well, for that shit. I ain't like the McGildeds of this world, so I ain't scared. I got principles, see? A trait in you which is to be admired, Miss Lestrade. All right, just get a rest, all right? As I was saying, congratulations are in order. The news of your acquittal was very welcome news to me indeed. Shut Let up. me express my heartfelt congratulations. Gina! What are you doing? The fuck is that? Well, um... Eh. There you are, Haley! How long have you been here? Oh no. Honestly, I went to the main entrance, especially to meet you there! I was standing there with my little umbrella! Ah, Iris, my dear. I do apologize, but wait until I tell you what happened! This pair made utter fools of themselves. What? What happened? As you know, I have a penchant for disguise. I was hiding in this room dressed as a bailiff, but these dolts didn't notice my presence at all! <laughs> they had no idea! Can you imagine, Iris? Would you credit it? Sure, really. I beg your pardon. 
<laughs> I'm sorry, Holy, but you just don't have the weighty presence you seem to think you have. In fact, you really ought to be careful about that. It's going to land you in trouble one day. You're going to die for real and nobody's going to notice. I'll be careful. Ouch. Anyway, it's such a shame. I was hoping to throw a party for Jenny tonight. But you won't be able to come, will you? Don't look at me like I'm going to be going nowhere for a while. You were the judge patter. I got stuff to make amends for, apparently. All them offences. What was it again? Breaking and entering, taking the ball truck of stuff, what was in the log, blah, 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 blah. Yes, I think you'll find that basically being a pickpocket is the main offence. But diving ain't an offence, it's a job, isn't it? I don't think so. <laughs> Still, it's got me thinking all this. Please don't be a cop. Maybe I should start looking for another line of work. Pretty sure she becomes a cop. That's why her name is Lestrade. No. I mean, you don't. You didn't start off as a lawyer, did you, Odo? <laughs> Gina Lestrade becoming a cop. The two different Mollies of epithet and anime campaign. <laughs> <sighs> well, no, but I was never a pickpocket. Well, anyway, I reckon I can make a change. I'm gonna do something for all of them lot like me from the slums. Something that makes a difference for them. That's a wonderful idea, Jimmy. And I'm sure you can do it. Yeah, I think I'd sell government secrets what I get on record players. <laughs> what is it? Nothing. Miss Gina Rislod, the prison carriage has arrived, ma'am. Come to me with the radiator. Oh, Gina. We've just finished filling it with paraffin. No reason. <laughs> right, well, looks like I've got to go bake. <laughs> looks like I'm off then, off this mortal coil. <laughs> yes, goodbye, Gina. And good luck. Um, um, oh no. Did you forget my full name? Yes. Oh no, she's doing something. If only I had time you. to leave. Just take a minute. Ah, oh, fuck. What was that for? I, um, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know what to say, so. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> Perhaps the situation calls for a phrase hitherto missing from your vocabulary, Miss Lestrade. On occasions, ah. on occasions such as this, I would recommend a simple thank you. Oh. oh yeah. <laughs> Someone, she's ready to be a cop already! <laughs> wow! Oh. You're well, a I minority, ain't you? <laughs> right, I see. Well. Th thanks. Oh. Thank you for everything what you've done. For believing in me. You shot me. Not at all. <laughs> in fact, that should be my line. Thank you, Gina. Hurley, where was that doctor? <laughs> oh, oh, Andrew, you don't want the same one I had! <laughs> he goes into the hospital and the doctor removes it. Ha ha! It's me again, Norahudo! Oh, funny. <laughs> Leaves the fucking katana in him. Well, there she goes. Wonder if I'll ever get to see her again. Well, well, quite the indomitable. I've read that as quite the indomitable pickle. <laughs> <laughs> I nearly forgot. I brought a paper outside. Indomitable pickle. It's a special edition, and this trial's all over the front page. Pickpockets in innocence proven. Isn't it wonderful? It's they known as the pip. They already <laughs> wrote it. <laughs> You should have shown it to Gina. I guess maybe they had two articles written, but I don't yeah. know. Um, she would have been thrilled. Oh no! How silly of me! But anyway, would you like the good news or the bad news? Oh, uh, not again. Well, what do you say, you now, Helly? As usual, I think I'd rather get the bad news out of the way first. Absolutely not! I have no intention of listening to anything but good news. It. How people answer that question always says a lot about them, doesn't it? Let's not go there. 
<laughs> All right then, maybe let's start with the good news this time. The rain has finally stopped. It was a rapid level of rainfall, apparently. Well, that is good news indeed. We can journey back in greater comfort. All right then, what's the bad news? The heat storm has left the seas very choppy. Susie has died. <laughs> the channel in particular is awful, so sailings out of Dover have been delayed by a day or more. Wait, Dover? That's right. If we head to the station immediately, we may still make it in time to weigh Susie off. But, but, there won't be a train, surely. We couldn't be that lucky. Who do you think I am, Mr. Norohodo? Uh, Mr. Sholmes? I rushed to Victoria Station earlier and made arrangements for a special express. If we hurry now, we shall be there in time for dinner. And I know of a fine restaurant that serves the most delicious baked soleil. I don't... The great detective does it again. Indeed he does. I happen to be aware of a number of the rail transport director's foibles. What? I merely made my knowledge of them known to the man, and he happily laid on the <laughs> locomotive. <laughs> Elementary! <laughs> Casual blackmail. Crazy man. Just an idea, but it might be wise to stop manipulating people that way. Hmm? What are we waiting for then? To London, Victoria! Ooh, very pretty. I like the little flag. Just yeah. wiggling. Dover? How did we get to Delaware? America joke. Susie's <laughs> boat must be about to leave now. Sorry. Miss Suzato, where are you? I'm a mermaid. I'm swimming. Over there. Look. Looks like she's reading something. <laughs> Girl, hey, Chen in Paradise read. Over there! Hey. Over there! Mrs. Otto! Wait, what are you doing? Huh? Throws the book at him. <laughs> Jumps in the ocean. M Mr. Narodo? What are you doing here? We came as soon as we could after the trial. I mean, we heard that sailings were being delayed due to the bad weather, you see. It's fucking clear as a whistle out here today, what the fuck? Then, then tell me, how did Gina's trial go? It, it went well. She was acquitted. That's wonderful. Really wonderful news. That book you were about to throw into the sea. It was your encyclopedia of British law, wasn't it? Oh dear, I was hoping you hadn't seen that. I'm not worthy of practicing law in any way now. So, I was saying my final farewell. You were saying goodbye to law. You say goodbye to law. <laughs> <laughs> Little carpenter's joke for everyone. <laughs> I fought you. the law, but the law won. <laughs> you, Susato-san? <coughs> Would I be correct in assuming it's because of the people, Miss Susato? I deliberately altered the scene of a crime, and then I tried to hide the fact. What I did is utterly unforgivable. That reminds me. How did you even come to have this, Susie? On the evening of the incident, Mr. Schoen said invited Gina to dinner, if you remember. Oh yes, we had a wonderful time. Well, Gina gave us a little introductory lesson, didn't she? To the art of pickpocketing, <laughs> I mean. Oh, that was so much fun! I stole Runa's armband! Yes, please don't do that again, Iris. This band's very important to me. Well, if it's so important, you should pay more attention to it. You didn't notice for ages. On a whim, I thought it would be fun to see if I could take the cat flapper mat, so I put it up my sleeve. Her sleeves would be big enough. Yep. Really? And then I rather forgot about it until I found myself in Mr. Windbank's shop with it later that night. You know when you put something like that a twelve-pound metal machine in your sleeve. You know when you fall off a building and get a scratch on your cheek. Uh, <laughs> I see. And then. Bang, John Lennon. <laughs> Mr. Jones, Mr. Jones. Leave me, Mr. Naruto. Right. After Mr. Norohodo had left the shop, I started to think. That door started to play on my mind. 
Yes. Oh, if Gina was anywhere in the shop, I realized it could only be behind that door. And at that moment, the little device that I had up my sleeve sprang to mind. I was so worried about Gina, I simply had to know. So, you used the cat flapper mat to make the peephole in the door. Am, am I crazy in thinking that, like, if you... If you came to a scene of a crime and thought people might be wounded on the other side of a door and broke down the door, you would not be arrested for that, right? Like, no, I don't. I don't think so. I, I mean, logically, I'd say no, especially considering like that isn't directly impacting the crime scene itself. Like, nothing else was damaged or yeah. harmed. Yeah. Yeah. Captured in a photographic print of the shop. I'm guessing this is because it's a permanent alteration. So is knocking a door down. <laughs> I, I guess more what it is, is that no one expressed that they had done it. I guess. You know. Whatever. I, I think it's dumb. All right. By one of Hurley's red-handed recorders. Indeed. It was of the first importance, that point. Precisely when the people was made, that information would prove to me Mr. Narahota's greatest weapon. Though, naturally, without proof, it would have amounted to nothing. But when I looked through the hole in the door, the sight that met my eyes made my blood run cold. Thoughts started to run in my mind. I remembered the trial two months earlier. The trial of Magnus McGilded. I thought about how he had manipulated the evidence and arranged false testimony to secure his freedom. It made the British justice system feel very dark and sinister to me. And then a terrible thought occurred to me. What if... what if some wicked criminal was planning to do the same thing now? Because from the appearance of the crime scene, it looked exactly as though Gina had shot Mr. Winterbank. Even though I was sure she would never have done such a thing. You were worried that the true culprit would try and frame her for the crime. That's right. But then I realized... It would be very difficult for anyone to give false testimony in this case. What do you mean? Well, the crime appeared to have happened behind the door of a locked room. For someone to claim falsely to have witnessed it, there would have to be a way to see beyond the door. Uh, for which a people would be the very thing. Only the peephole I had made wasn't actually there until after the crime had been committed, of course. And the criminal would know that, so it wouldn't make any difference. But the possibility of a rather ingenious trap was there, was it not? A, a trap? Is that why she did it? So, is that why you kept it a secret, Susie? You never mentioned that you made the peephole to anyone, not even to the police? This has the same energy of having decisive evidence out of the gate as, like, Edgeworth and just deciding to keep it secret, like, just because it would be funny if you could ding the witness, uh, the uh, defense on it, instead of just leading with it and going, here's my case, we win. I know, and I knew at the time what I was doing was wrong, a criminal offense even. That's why I decided to confide in Mr. Sholmes. If Mr. Narahodo was completely backed into a corner, with no other possible means of escape, the truth about the people could save him. That was my plan. She really does think of everything. But, but then, why didn't you just tell me everything before the trial began? My dear fellow, you're not thinking straight. We wanted a twist. If she had done that, it would have rendered you complicit in the whole escapade. So... This is this is an example of uh, my my one thing I hate with Shu Takumi writing, and I think it stems from the fact that the Japanese penal system is really unaccommodating for different levels of crime, and like if you are yeah. a criminal, you're fucked. Period. Uh, a lot of his games do something similar to this, where it's like a child's actions will like indirectly commit manslaughter. Like they'll knock a vase that Rube Goldberg's a gun off of a shelf and that'll shoot someone and kill them. And it's mm -hmm. like, that's like, they, they won't be convicted for that if you're six and that happens and like the family has a loaded gun on a desk. But like, that's an element in Ghost Trick. 
Uh, it's an element in the fourth Ace Attorney game. And he keeps doing it. And every time I'm like, this is just insane. And it, like, you know, you can kind of get away with it when it's like, this is a critique of the Japanese legal system, but this one's not the Japanese legal system. Very explicitly, it's England. I think, I think it's dumb. Oh, I'm Chomes. Right? Chomes? Chomes. You chuchavchin this part. If you oh had been seen to have knowingly tampered with a crime scene, so Miss Suzato decided to shoulder the burden of the responsibility alone. It's not... There was no crime until you saw the crime on the other side of the door! I, uh, it's driving me crazy. For your sake, and Miss Lestrade's. Still quite a good case, though. I'm not sure I agree. Uh, Miss Suzato. The truth is, when it happened, I did it because... I'd lost a little of my faith in the law. I was worried that the right person wouldn't be convinced of the crime. But the moment I allowed myself to think that is the moment I lost my right to call myself a judicial assistant. What you did isn't comparable to what he did. Graydon is the one who lied on the witness stand, using that people as a way to implicate Gina. And besides... If the people inconsistency hadn't existed, I'm not sure at all that she would have been acquitted in the end. Miss Suzato, what you did saved Gina's life. Well, with your kind words, Mr. Narahodo, you saved me too from my regrets. I'm here! Well, we Hello. must all be thankful that Miss Lestrade's freedom has been assured. Yes, exactly. Although some of the loose ends in that trial will continue to play on my mind, I'm sure. But the revelation that the music box disc contains secret messages, Mr. Narahodo! What a triumph to work that out! I'm full of admiration! Admiration? English is hard. <laughs> well, actually, that argument wasn't quite as compelling as I thought it was. Oh, it wasn't? There was a communications officer among the jury members, you see. A telegraph officer. And she said that the majority of the sounds on the disc were just meaningless tones. Tones and I, with their hit single, uh, Dance Monkey. <laughs> is, that that, is that what that's called? <clears throat> eh, joke there anyway. As one would expect. After all, we are talking about a secret government communication. No doubt they were written in cipher to avoid, uh, to avoid being readily understood should they have been intercepted. In cipher? I, I see. So then we never could have hoped to understand the message anyway. Nonsense, my dear fellow. It's quite a zero-pipe problem, I assure you. Hey. Uh. Blossomy. Uh -huh. What? Blossomy. Well, that would be a real word, kind of. How funny. Wait, I, I just, what did you just say? Oh, um, I just said, Asoki? Does that word mean something to you? Mean something? Asagi was the name of my best friend. What? But how? How do you know that name, Iris? I don't know. How do you know about the Hound of the Baskervilles, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> I wrote it down during the trial before, when the message was playing on the music box. She transcribed it on the fly. She really is a genius. I thought the message probably wouldn't be written out in plain Morse code, so I tried various ways to interpret it. But whatever I tried, the words just didn't seem to make any sense. That is, in English at least. Oh! Oh. And, 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 but I didn't, whatever that said. There's more than one Morse code, not just the English variety. Various countries around the world evolved it and added to Morse code to use it in their own languages. I don't believe it. Are you saying... That's right! I've only actually seen a chart of Japanese Morse code once before, but what? I think it's based on the Edel Hub pangram, isn't it? You mean to say that in Japanese, in the Japanese Morse code, the message says Asagi? Yes, I think so. Sorry, but I don't remember all of the Japanese Morse code. Iris, would you let me see that? Miss Suzato, do you know it? Do you know Japanese Morse code? Yes, I spent some time studying it. Well, thank God for that. <laughs> Because I'm quite sure most code will become ever more important for international communications. All right, that's more fair. I'm here too. <laughs> then I might then might I recommend, my dear madam, that you focus your efforts on the English version. No, shut the fuck up. Be that as it may, 
Are you show me the message, please? Of course! But... But what could this possibly mean? Whatever is in that long sequence of supposedly meaningless dots and dashes, it's made the color drain from Susato-san's face. I hope Siv called this one thing Siv called. <laughs> There's no doubt that this message is written in Japanese Morse code. So the British Empire has been using Japanese for its secret communications? I don't understand the reason why, but... The message appears to be a list of four people's names. Four names? The first is K. Asagi. Kazuma Asagi? Why? Why was his name on that disc? The second is A. Shin. Shin? I don't recognize that name. The third is T. Gurin... G Gur Gregson. Tobias Gure Gregson? Gregson? Ah, it would seem Tobias Gregson is the third man on the list. And what is his name doing on a secret government communication as well? And the last name... What's the matter, Miss Suzato? It's... It's just so strange. So unexpected. Oh, what is it, Susie? Don't keep us in surprise! The last name is Jay Wilson. What? Wilson? John H. Wilson? You mean Daddy? It says only Jay Wilson, so I'm afraid I can't be sure. Then, after the four names, it reads if I translate them from Japanese. That is all four. And that's the end of the message. Or rather, the end of what you noted down, Iris. I just can't believe it. Who would have ever thought that those discs contain Japanese Morse code? Not to mention a strange list of some disturbingly familiar names. It would appear that this particular message is a communication of some kind between Great Britain and the Empire of Japan. So, Daddy could be in Japan then? Where Susie and Reno come from? Oh, well... Hmm. No, it's not very likely, is it? I mean, there are thousands of people with the surname Wilson, and there must be lots of J's among them. Professor John H. Wilson, visiting professor of medicine at the Imperial Yumei University. But we can't tell Iris about that now, we just can't. This is so strange. Somehow, in solving the case of Mr. Winderbank's murder today, I feel like I've rolled the back of boulder at the mouth of a very dark cave. I do wonder if perhaps it's a dark cave that we shouldn't go wandering inside. Pong! Pong. Oh dear, this ship is going to set sail soon. Yes, it seems so. I'll sail on that steamship first to the port of Dunkirk in France. Then I'll change onto a larger passenger vessel bound for Japan. You're really going then, Susie? We wish you a safe passage, Miss Suzato. Thank you so much. I wish all of you the very best. Miss Suzato, I, I had hoped to have you always at my side, to guide me and support me. Mr. Naruhodo! Please, come back soon. As far as I'm concerned, you really are the very best judicial assistant in the world. Don't forget, Iris. I made you a promise I've yet to fulfill. A promise? About your manuscript. Oh, oh. yes. The Hound of the Baskervilles. Well, I'll be waiting for you then, Susie. A promise is a promise. <coughs> Definitely, Iris. Mr. Naruhodo. Yes? Do you remember the first time we met? Yes, of course. On the SS Burya, when I was dragged out from that wardrobe, still- That was not the first time you met. No, it wasn't. Still half asleep. If I remember rightly, you threw me halfway across the cabin with a Susato takedown. You know very well what I'm talking about after that. That wasn't the first time we met either. Yeah. It's strange, but being thrown together as we were in that case, I somehow felt straight away that you were the perfect person to continue Kazuma-sama's great legacy. 
Miss Susato. And my instincts were right. I really want to believe. No, I'm sure that... I'll be back soon. Farewell until then. She just, like, lifts herself up and floats away over the ocean. With her foodie soda sleeves? Cool, cool! Oh, Professor, I wonder where this steamship's Somehow going to take us! Somehow we have come to the end of the adventures of I'm Leonis sorry, Kinado Professor, Odo. but I'm not a gentleman On yet! Volume, at least. <laughs> Waggy! Looking back now, it feels as though fate has led me on this journey. Just run straight off the edge. Yeah, run into the ocean. Fate led me to what becoming a lawyer, to traveling halfway around the world, to meeting the great detective. I'm sure there'll be trials and tribulations ahead. Of course there will. Yeah, in a couple hundred years, that's the third game. <laughs> whatever happens, I know I'll be able to turn my fortunes around. Huh. <laughs> With audio. <laughs> I have the greatest friends in the world. On my side. Walk a high. I really will be a great Ace Attorney Chronicle. <laughs> anyway, about that drug trade. I'm Sherlock Holmes. Ah, yes, Mr. Narahodo. Yes, Mr. Holmes. I have some rather awkward news. About that rash on my posterior. <laughs> the railway company has decided to sue over the Special Express train, apparently. <laughs> huh? It caused such a commotion on the line. All the other trains had to wait at stations. But really, we never would have made it to Dover in time otherwise. Anyway, I've explained everything and how it was all your fault. Ha! ha. I believe a formal complaint should be delivered to your office tomorrow. But not to worry, my dear fellow. According to Miss Suzotto... You love defending yourself in court! Ha! 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 It's all right. I'm perfectly happy to testify. He really didn't look like the sort of man who'd do something so outrageous. See? Um, Mr. Sholmes. Yes? A word, if you don't mind. Why, certainly. Any word you like. Bellow it out, my dear fellow. Oh, yes. I love Reno's words. <laughs> and I just didn't know the one you use here. Then I really must say. Objection. Objection. <laughs> Objection. High five. Fucking wimpy as shit. Please be nice to me. You did an okay job, Shu Takumi. You, you really you did, did a that mostly landing. good job. The um. The, the bullet points are... Oh, this is probably an auto-scroll. In the following weeks, hundreds of music boxes arrived at Baker Street something. Something was afoot. Though it transpired, I had ordered all of them myself. So I advertised them for sale with used by Mr. Sholmes to solve an important case. And the money I've earned. Consulting detective work pays a pittance <laughs> by comparison. <laughs> such an, he's such a great job, Kazi Yanuri. <laughs> Excellent. I haven't slept a wink. This manuscript is due tomorrow now. When I'm this busy, Hurley usually cooks me breakfast. Well, cooks is an overstatement. So it's some dry toast and insipid coffee. I do miss Susie and her lovely Japanese breakfasts. Oh no. Also a great Excellent job from job. you. Excellent job. Yep. Witness your testimony. Is riddled with contradictions. I don't remember who is. I think this was Sev. Yeah, exactly. Really, do rare coupon codes? Oh, blah, blah, blah. well, I don't know. Son knows his father is an innocent man. Or are you calling my son a liar? What this is like petty arguments. Blah. I love how intense the Japanese judges. He looks fucking crazy, man. He looks cool Final as boss. Shit. 
Yeah. Having, oh, to, having delivered the Russian it. dancer to shore in Shanghai, I laid low on the steamship for a while. But last night, I apprehended an extremely suspicious Japanese national on board. I've done nothing wrong! All I did was give Wagahai's all free spring refuge in my pocket! A man brings some kittens on board and suddenly he's a hardened criminal! It's not fair! Oh, God bless. Be nice to me! <coughs> evil, evil. Scientific investigation will be the gold standard for policing in the future. I dream of a world governed by the tenets of order and discipline. Like a great clock, in fact, whose hundreds of parts mesh together in perfect unison. Great evil, Mr. evil, evil. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have but two minutes and 37 seconds until my next appointment. Love, love the misdirect on uh, Eggert's character design looking so similar to his. Their eyes are fucking identical. They're not, but okay. The latest Rants magazine is out, and I'm in it again. Whenever I say that one line she wrote now, I get a standing ovation. Want to hear it? Hmm. Not bad, I suppose, for an amateur. Sip. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> her ladyship puts me to shame. <laughs> Suck it. <clears throat> Been visiting the old girl on a daily basis, of course. Joni, my old jailbird. Must say, battling with those ballet stairs every day has done wonders for the dicky pig. <laughs> Managing rather well with the housework, too. Got this maid business taped up, I'd say. Hope the gossiping neighbors don't realize the man of the house is his own maid. <laughs> I, his house is based on Good Night Moon. It just is. It is the same. Oh my god. My belly's back on the beat again, all thanks to the Reaper. There's nothing I enjoy more these days than hunting out small change in the gutter. I'm a better Bobby now, looking out for Londoners. They dropped hay pennies in my lovely wife. Oh, Pat. Hello, I love those two. <laughs> so good for them. That was a way better case than I thought it would be. Yeah. Oh, no. Looks like I'm gonna be doing time for a bit now. But Iris comes every day for a natter, so it ain't too boring. She's always going on about all them cases what Shones is looking into. Criminal investigations are kind of interesting when you get into them. I want to be a cop. <laughs> Why? Weird we get an epilogue yes. for you. I renounced my upbringing and chose a life of sophisticated crime. But regrets? Please. John Lennon, give over, bruv. That ain't the ash we used to know. John Lennon, we got time in here paying comeback of the tin and skulking's milk run. The three the most three 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 At milk in the neighborhood for all it's worth. Can we change our icons to these three on Discord? <laughs> I get to be handsome. I love that he rejoined that. It's so funny, man. Those, man, ah, that case was close to being good. It just chopped two yeah. hours out of it. I, I jumped off the boat. <laughs> this past six months has been a time I shall remember for all my life. Painful goodbyes and wonderful encounters. I've come to realize that's what life's all about. Naruhodo san, I promise. Your assistant will return to you one day. But for now, I leave you with many memories. And a heartfelt wish that life will treat you well. They actually lip-synced her for that. Wow. And that you get into Smash. <laughs> Ain't happening, sir. What a weird pick that would be. 
Get oh. off me, Mr. Shomes. God, I would love to have Shomes lay on me like that. Yeah, Jello. Oh, like you wouldn't. F well, I guess you wouldn't fuck him, but like you wouldn't appreciate Shomes. <laughs> Time for a Fruit Ninja style minigame where we cut the credits in half with samurai swords. I, mean, I just imagine this as a fucking, the, the Picto chat level on Smash. <laughs> hey, let's go. Hey, let's go. I'm happy as can be. Let's go walking you and me. Ready, set, come on, let's go. Hello. This is the anime Osanaga. ED. Hosanaga, I so I hope you live. I so hope you live. Oh, I really hope he comes back in the next game. Hosanaga was great. Yeah, what was your deal, bitch? I I can't believe well, you didn't come back. We'll find out, I'm sure. She's probably next game. Maybe. Yeah. Spit on her as you go past, please. I'm here as well. Hello, father. I hope you didn't do anything illegal, mm. Father. Mm. <laughs> Tosa. The. The. Da. Wait, <coughs> you were already in credits. Two Hosonagas. There's two of them. They both have tuberculosis. When I com I'm afraid that when I did my mitosis, each of me only got one of my lungs. Oh, Jesus, man, that's no way to live. Oh, shit, he's dead. Oh. Hey, you, pushes her, your fault, and <laughs> keeps going. <laughs> I, I still have mixed to negative feelings about the second case in that game. Maybe they'll I'm back. Hello. Maybe they'll oh, bring it back sad. with when we learn what Kazuma's secret deal was, but I kind of doubt it. I believe I believe I'll really like the sequel to this, and I'm sure they'll like wrap things up. Um, before the like literally going into the session, I was like, this might be my favorite Ace Attorney game, but uh, no, it is still six. Six has a much better final case than this. Shame, really. I mean, this is still oh good. Oh my god, I think he's it's, huge! That's about right. Can't believe ah. you weren't evil yet. Keyword yes. yet. What's that, um, what's that quote from the Vesperia game that Aram gave us? What ah, a reasonable what a, authority What a figure. reasonable man. Surely he only has more time to be even more reasonable. <gasps> Beppo! Beppo! Hi, this is Beppo. He's so cold. I, I really like that the main antagonist in this game was killed in the third case. That's really fascinating. I liked that. Mm. It's weird. I actually would have been really okay with a really short fifth case that just put a bow on everything. Yeah. That would have been fine. Mm -hmm. I, I think that would have served it really, really well. Cause I, I, think, I think the fifth case is actually really good, but then it just hits this fucking brick wall of and, just nonsense non-stop it's like i don't dang. think we're unfair or impatient like you can hear for the entire third and fourth case how into it we are and like i think those cases are longer than the fifth one um at least the the fourth case was definitely longer than the fifth one uh, and... Oh my god, I never noticed he's wearing Geta. <laughs> Buddy, your toes must be frozen off. Oh, honey. Oh my gosh, she's so short, too. Well, yeah, she's like 10 years old. She's no, baby. I meant fucking Soseki. You mean Susato? No, Soseki. You, Not said, Soseki. you said she's short. No, I meant... I, I must have slurred my words. Hello, All right, everybody beat him up. Everybody just dogpile him. Kick the shit out of him. Imagine if he started walking after them too. John Lennon. They all just stop and turn around like, what? I, you know what I have to say? I did not like Gina as much as I hoped to. Yeah. She yeah. was a little too the same. No like you knew what her arc would be like 10 minutes into her character. And you're like, I get it, girl. I understand. 
Her character design is phenomenal, but um, everyone's is. Can only go so far. What are my thoughts on Van Zeeks? I like him well enough. The problem with Case 5 is that they hide that main cat door twist in plain sight. No, the problem with Case 5 is, 5 is everyone drinks stupid juice for two hours at the two-thirds mark for no reason. Yeah. And you have to sit through it, even though it's all obvious. Them, them having that clue immediately is actually cool. Because it's Aww. like in the back of your mind, like, when does this come, get brought up? Like, this is a super important bit of information. Um, the problem is that, like, the build-up to it is, like, just fucking nonsense. Yeah, it's, it's very, it's very teapotty, where it's like, I know, man, I, I figured it out. And it's one of the, it's very, uh, it's weird. It got very investigations-y at the end, because it was like, yeah, I know the whole of this case. Like, there were, the only twist was the Gregson thing, and that didn't get payoff within this case, you know? Or within this game. Like, it, it became a, a hook, but, like... Nothing super interesting. Uh, yeah, no, I liked that game a lot. Um, the first case wasn't terrible, though I think it did have some pretty significant problems. The second case, uh, the second case, I liked that there was no trial at all. I thought it was uh, mechanically it was great. I really don't like it in regards to killing off Kazuma and the motivations. I thought those were pretty bad. The third case was awesome. I loved the third and fourth cases in this game. Yeah. Uh, and half of the fifth case is good, and the other half is, like, very similar to the first, the, the Red Mole case, where it's like, oh, Knightley's the bad guy. I'm ready for this. And then it's like, oh, we're going to act this way about it, huh? And yeah. it's going to waste it's, my it's time. It's a shame, too, because I really like, like, the, the motivator that Graydon yeah. had. Like, I really like that twist of him being the one to say like, you know, fuck McGill and I'm gonna kill that fucker. And like, I love how it kind of wraps back around to that. But the literal like fucking two, basically two hours of just faffing about to get to that. We're kind of like, all right though, I don't really care. Cause you know, you're a dumbass. Like by then you'd yeah. lost any affection for the character. So. Yeah. Saying yeah, half it, it, the case is bad is a little unfair. No, it ain't. This was three sessions and it was uh, investigation, trial one, trial two. The first half of the trial was great. I did not like most of the yeah. second half. Yep. We love John that, Lennon, that's though. True. That's true. We they do love great. John Lennon, though. That is true. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, really, I think the fifth case, all it needed was to have that, like, grade and testimony be trimmed. A fair amount. Like, literally, all that would need to be done is once he spouts his fucking nonsense, literally just be like, hey, mention the people, all of this gets washed away instantly. Yeah. Because it doesn't need to happen. Like, literally, you bring up that detail, and everything he's just spewing out has no value. It would not be taken seriously, because it, 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 that's what happens. When it yeah. finally does get revealed, it just stops. Yeah, and, um... I, I know people, some people in chat disagreed with me. I don't like Suzato's involvement in the fifth case. I, I think it's dumb. Uh, I don't think it was, a, I don't think it was super clever in its execution uh, because it felt less like a, oh, the final puzzle piece, this changes everything. It was just, oh yeah, I wish Suzato handed me this piece of evidence at the start. Because uh, usually in an Ace Attorney game, when you get that piece of evidence that someone has sacrificed themselves for, it's usually like, oh, Gumshoe got shot while investigating a crime scene, or Francisco went out and barely got this in time, or Sebastian had to search through the garbage dump for this. And there's no question of what evidence it is. You got it. It's just supposed to be like a hell yeah moment. But it's not hell yeah when I've been sitting there going, when do I get to do this fucking cat door? And even if I didn't see the cat door, I wouldn't have been like, Oh my God, the cat door, incredible. Because I would have been thinking, why didn't Susanna just give this to me? Yep. Um, yeah, no. So some, some criticisms still like overall, almost the best Ace Attorney game, if not the best one, mostly a really great experience. Kind of sad it ended on a bit of a whimper. Um, yeah. I think Gregson's involvement is the twist. I guess, but it, I don't think it escalates to, like... It's not like Gregson collaborated 
within the crime itself for the guy. He collaborated in part of the hook for the next game, so we don't get a payoff for that, so it doesn't feel interesting or worth my time. Um, and even if it did, we really do spend like, there are two entire sessions, uh, testimonies, where you have to press everything to continue. It's Gina gets one, and then um, what's, uh, Gradeson or whatever gets one. And both of those are just like, especially Gradeson, it's like, everything's wrong with this. There's like nine points I could refute, but I can't refute any of them. And I'm like, this is Ace Attorney 2, or this is Investigations 2 where someone would go, I'm making something up. Prove, prove that I'm wrong. And it's like, I don't know where to start. In real life, I could decimate your dumb ass, but here, who can say? Yep. Yeah. Still good though. Um, Probably the best cast of an Ace Attorney game. I liked that a lot, yeah. I like everyone. I I also, I liked all of the killers in the cases that mattered. W once we got to England, I think I liked literally every character. Mm -hmm. You know who I'm excited for is the fucking Shakespearean prince guy who yeah. showed up once and was like, oh, yeah. and then left. Yeah. All right. Sounds like we're about wrapped up. Uh, we are not continuing this next week. I'm probably going to take two weeks off. Because I want to do some other Makes stuff. Sense. We were also debating take a maybe continuing with uh, the XD game in the middle of this, but we'll see. I might I might want to come back to this and just wrap it. Because once I've played this, I have played every single Ace Attorney game. That's mm. a pretty feather in your cap. Yep, I've played, I'll have played all, um, six, ten, fuck. Hang on, let me count. Six mainline games, this duology, the Edgeworth duology, that's 10, and then Layton, so that's 11. Play Fire Emblem again? No, I don't like any other Fire Emblem games. Hmm. No, uh. don't like them. We played the one I, I already got Will to go, you know what, sometimes Fire Emblem's okay, and that's clearly the best I'm gonna get. Yeah, no, like, of the other Fire Emblems I've experienced, I was, I was just like, this is embarrassing. Now that I've seen what the Tellius games were like, I'm like, Jesus Christ, <laughs> get your shit together. Oh, someone said we can look at the things now that we're, we've seen all the spoilers. Got our boy. I wish he wore his hat more, it's cute. His hat's very cute. Yeah, it's nice. I really like these drawings. He looks like a Mega Man character. Oh yeah, yeah I can see. I that. love his little backwards doing things. Oh, you oh, didn't give him glasses, oh, you glasses. bastards! Oh, oh, missed opportunity. I I start cutie. sweating. Yeah. <laughs> oh, tiny. <laughs> Layton character. Yeah. Got a sword. Got really thick. Aw. Oh, also yeah, She's Suzato. So even though I don't really like her involvement in the fifth case, Suzato easily the best assistant in this franchise. Literally no yeah. competition. <gasps> oh, she's so sweet. Someone in chat pointed out that every other assistant steals in some capacity except K. What? Get fucked, K. Like whether it be evidence or something of the sort. Stop, apparently. stop I don't... spoilers. Where, why would there be spoilers? What, where? Where, where spoilers? I don't know. I the wouldn't look at chat. Games warn you when you reach spoilers. There are two games. I know, but why would I have been able? Why would I have unlocked these? They're the game. Okay, here we go. Ah, I see. I see. They're in. Yeah, we're fine. Calm down. It's just these guys. Just all of his gear. Really, really went off with the Sherlock Holmes design here. Ooh, good call not doing this. Yeah. <laughs> Team Punk! That was a steam, but it looks like very oh. poorly. Yeah. I'm... Oh. She's so cute. She's just a little good flower. Good Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> I want Oh those. my goodness! Oh! Oh! 
That's good, Drew. <laughs> Hello. Oh, the buns! Oh, the buns. I would have died. Oh, they have the family crest there. I never noticed that. I'm boring. Oof. I'm Hosonaga. <laughs> yeah, it looks like they, they had a good choice. Mm. Mm. They had the vibe down there. Oh, ooh. ooh, good miss. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, would not have minded this one with some refinement, actually. Yeah. <laughs> kind of oh like this God. one too. That's like a fucking ice gym leader, bro. If you click yeah. on them, you get. Oh, there's director's comment. Okay, hang on. This is important. Hello, you did a good job. I'll just skim these, see if there's any good ones. Uh, do I? How do I advance? I think it's just you click on. Oh. It it doesn't. I'm clicking. Mm. Oh, te oh, T for text window. What? Down. Oh, oh, yeah, it but it, it. I think I oh, just e. got what? E Why for is next. it a different control? That's so weird. Okay. Didn't want to be too generic. Okay. <laughs> I wanted to see what it would look like, man. This is a sword. his silly hair yeah just just distract myself okay. hello Oh. <gasps> wonderful, wonderful Beautiful. work. Incredible. I like it. <laughs> I know you do. I like it. <laughs> Dark London. Ooh. Oh, these are so <laughs> cute. I love them. I really like all of the iris designs. Mm hmm. Magical girl. girl. <laughs> Hi, I'm here. Hmm. Ouchie doesn't <laughs> count. This is really funny. Mm -hmm. Aw. Fucking Raido Kuzunoha looking on the side there. Rip cage detail. <laughs> I'm a sad and tortured <laughs> soul. Tortured soul. Uh, <laughs> no, like, I like the 
concepts that are around in this one. We this one's not 100% bad. 100% there, but like... Oop. All right, let's uh, back out there. Moving pictures. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Do we unlock any outfits? Oh yeah, we get to we get to have these in the next game. Ooh, he's goggles. Oh, I definitely prefer this one. She looks like a Borderlands character. <laughs> Cute, but you can't do much better than this. You super can. I, Iris's homemade suit. <laughs> he is just a little <laughs> man. He's out on the town. <laughs> I don't know what these are, but we've been going for a long time, so. Yeah. All right, thank you for watching. We are we are done with this for a little while. We will return in a few weeks. Keep an eye on my Twitter, I guess. Uh, let's raid Scott Falco. Shadow Legends. Ra oh, no. it's, it's Piff going? I don't see a Piff. No, Piff is not going. Did I? No, nope, Piff. that's wrong. Hang on. Raid Scott Falco with an underscore. Da, 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 da. Good night, everybody. Duh. Toodles. Duh. Okay. All right.